ladies love the skin. Ow. Bring it a little bit closer. The good skin that is. <laughs> That's why having a proper skincare routine is very important and you need to fill it to each. The process is so easy, just four steps. You got your daily face wash. That's gonna clean your face up nice and right. You got your exfoliator scrub. That's gonna open up your pores. You got your AM moisturizer with the SPM 20, which is gonna protect you from the sun. You also got your PM moisturizer, which is gonna make sure your skin is protected throughout the night. Tej has tons of reviews from dedicated customers across the world. I know I said a lot, but it's okay, because guess what? It comes with an instruction card to explain to you in detail what to do morning and night. And because Tej is sponsoring this video, they're offering you an amazing deal. Just click the first link in the description to get 30% off your first skincare system and a free gift. Plus, as a member, you'll also get 20% off for life. By the way, both gifts you're choosing from are a $20 value and a complete game changer a silicone body scrubber, or a nail and face grooming kit. Personally, I prefer the silicone body scrubber. I don't like using towels when I travel, so the body scrubber is an excellent way to open up the pores and get the body clean. So don't wait any longer. Click the first link in the description to start your skincare journey today. What's going on, family? I'm Lapeef, and I'm here to show you my daily routine using the Sure Man King on top. Assure Man presents to you a men's four-piece beard, hair, and body grooming kit that stimulates your hair follicles, strengthens the follicle wall, softens, hydrates, and controls your hair. The system double as a hair, face, and body care application. The first thing you want to do is you want to make sure your beard is clean using the beard, face, and body cleanser. It also has hemp oil, omega-3, omega-6, and omega-9. Steaming is great for guys with a coarser beard texture as the extra moisture softens and smooths the hair shaft making it easier for combing and brushing and styling. Now we want to use the beard and hair oil. The beard and hair oil is for hydrating your beard to help soften and tame the thick hairs. It acts as a way of conditioning the hair without drying it out, giving it a sleek, groomed look. It's also aimed at taming flyaways to keep your style in line. Now we want to use the beard growth balm. Our beard balm ingredients nourish your beard so that it stays conditioned and we use only natural fix oils that will nourish the beard hair. Keeping your beard moisturized will help do away with dryness by conditioning the beard hairs and the skin. Our beard balm helps reduce breakage and tangles. Now we want to grab our pick. Pick out the beard to give it that full look. After you get all the hair even, you want to take your brush and brush down all the loose hairs. Before I go to bed, I use the beard, face, and body moisturizer lotion. Using this lotion helps moisturize and conditions the beard hairs, leaving the hair soft and tangle free. It also helps with grooming and with maintenance, and also an easy comb for the morning. What are you waiting for? It's time for you to get assured today. The family court is a cash cow for states. So, Kevin, do they ask for like a marriage license? Like, how do they know? Like when you have a baby, uh -huh. do they say, hey, you know, uh, let me get your marriage license so I can see who. Like, how do they verify who they the don't husband is see when Last a woman time. in some states, a woman can just claim a man as the father, and his name goes on there. In terms of what and you said though, about the uh, the husband, after I think you said eleven months. The husband. Like See, so when you're divorced, if it's less than eleven months, they assume that the child was born. They assume that she got pregnant as a result of the marriage. Right, but like, like, they're trying to do protect. They were they're trying to protect the husband's rights. They don't assume that the woman was having an extramarital affair or seeing anybody else. So they didn't want so they wanted the child to be able to find their parent. That assumes the best case. So uh that's why when as soon as she said divorce, my name went on there. I, how did they determine though? Like what if she just said whoever? Like, how do you determine? Well, she as soon as she said, as soon as she said divorce, they said when was the divorce final? And, and once she said it was her? it's been final, it's been final for five months, automatically it was me because all you gotta do is go back to the state filing. I'm I'm there. That's what I'm saying. Do they do they ver they just verify like 
marriage licenses and whatnot? Yep, because once you say single, married, or divorced, divorce sets into motion an automatic slew. They start looking for divorce records, divorce filings, boom. Because what they're trying to prevent is us um, getting divorced and I had a kid out there and I have no ties to the kid. They all want, they always want to have somebody to pay. So they had to have me. I actually had to go find, I, I know the guy's name and I had to go get all this stuff to make sure he was responsible. But that's an easier case because that was, um, I don't forget the law, but it's, it's in every 50 states. And it's like 11 months or, or less, the husband's the ex-husband's name has to go in there and he has to deny, which is crazy because you're talking about two people who just got a divorce and they have to try to work this out. What's even, what's worse is a woman can just put somebody's name on there. She can just say, oh, it was a wealth engineering's child. And uh, okay, well, so what does he get his name? Is that just phone number? Don't have it. So you know what they do? What state is he in? What city is he in? Oh, he's in Dallas? Okay, we're going to put a listing in the Dallas classifieds or personal ads. Hey, Wealth Engineering, you got a baby. And they assume that is service. Instead of serving you papers, saying you got a, a, you've been served in a local paper. So you look up and two years later, your name's on a birth certificate. And, yeah. But here's the thing. As long as... It doesn't really become a problem until a woman is collecting state benefits or anything like that. That's when it really gets to be out of control. So the family court system is the issue that most men want to stay out of. It's the one thing that it's such a cash cow for for states. They're incented to get people into it. I mean, it's it it. Have you have you guys ever heard of anything? Uh, what is it called? Uh, civil forfeitures where you can just be driving down the street and the cops pull you over and you got too much cash in the car and they say, well, you got, we, you can even have bank receipts. And they're like, well, hmm, you mind if we look in your car? And okay, we're going to, we're going to bring the, and they bring the DEA out and the drug sniffing dog, 67 to hundred percent of all us bills have traces of drugs on it. 30, $334 million was seized from American citizens last year in civil forfeitures. And 90% of it is still tied up. The police department gets, the police department reporting gets anywhere from 70 to 80% of the money. And it skips your fourth amendment and goes directly into the federal system. And you have to fight to get back. What I'm saying is ultimately there are systems in place to take money from citizens that average people can't fight. And family court is one of the most insidious ones. That's why men would do well. That's why your thing won't work, Kay, because they want people to get tied up in this system. Because it should be easy to avoid. So that, yeah. that's why they won't do the just protocol. Right, well, yeah. because because if wealth engineering is the father, if she's if you say wealth engineering is the father and he's making uh two or three times what the other guy's making, he's responsible, you know, he he's not getting any benefits. But if you say this guy's the father and you get the state benefits. They'd rather have him on the line because they ain't got to pay uh, Wick and all the other kind of stuff. You got to look at the money. And, uh, and here's another thing. you Family court judges uh, tend to get a percentage of what they collect. That's what TLA was saying once. I didn't know yeah. that. This is why I'm saying a man. This is why, that's why I, I want women to understand. It's not. Why, why a lot of women feel offended if women here's one thing I hope to that we start having more for I start I hope we start having more empathy for what men go through women have more empathy for men but before that happens is men have to be humanized because we're supposed to feel empathy for women automatically this is what this conversation you're supposed to feel empathy for a woman being offended I'm like well can you understand that if you wanted that two to thirty percent of men who is that parental discrepancy, where's the empathy for what he ends up in? Because the because the least problematic thing is he would have is he just found out the child wasn't his. If he's if if it's in family court or some shit like that, you got much bigger problems. So I hope that helped, folks. I'm gonna fall back. Uh, I know there's some other people that want to get on here. I think uh, just Jay uh, had a question for you. Oh, you do? I'm sorry, go ahead. Just Jay. Do you have a question? Um, Mr. Samuels, 
Hey. I have to say first that um, what Maintaining your beer isn't just style, it's self-respect. A well-grown beer boosts confidence and leaves a lasting impression. Elevate your look. Embrace the importance of beer care today. Let's just have a conversation. People that's talking, we're going to introduce the crew. We got Mr. Sweeney, we got Miss Honey, M. White, Boyce, Darwin, Trey, Casey. Somebody fell off. Me, myself, my PJ, I welcome to my people that's talking. What's going on, family? What's going on? How y'all doing? Chilling, Joe. Sip, sip, sip. All What's good, all good. Oh, okay. All right. Go ahead, Roof. Yeah. Yeah. Rough mic tonight. Yeah, somebody uh, mic is hot. I don't know what that is. That's you. My check, my check. Yeah, I'm hearing another sound coming from me. I think it might be you, Roof. Yeah. My check, my check. Okay, it's better. Anyhow, welcome to the people. Let's talk. How are everybody doing today on this wonderful Wednesday? As good as can be expected. Okay, don't start starting to tell me now. Oh, like <laughs> really good, really good. It's really Nobody good. Nobody had a good day at work. I was, was off today, so today was an off day for me. What'd you say, Sweeney? Wait, today ain't hump day. Today Thursday, ain't it? It's yes, Thursday. Thursday. That's some shit. <laughs> I don't know what you on, brother. Hey, when you're a barber, your days start mixing up. Weeks go by fast as hell. <laughs> Right. Time flies when you're having fun. Yeah, it does. It does. It does. All right. Let's go get this housekeeping out the way, man. Shout out to the sponsor, T. Shanley, Uncomplicated Skin Care for Men. 30% off a load of free gift. That link is in the description. So make sure you guys go ahead and fill the teach. Also, if you become a member, you get 20% off for life. 20% off for life. The link is in the description. I don't know if we got anybody in the chat. Dale, if you can drop that link for them for that teach. Also, we have a sure man king on top. It's time for to get our beard together, fellas. And I seen a lady with a beard. Did y'all see that video? Yeah. I, she had a much better beard than me, too. Okay. Trimmed up and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah she had a beard. I actually she interviewed a lady with a whole beard. <laughs> okay. okay. Well, that's yeah. almost husky, too, yo. <laughs> the women got the beard gang, too. But that particular woman said she was looking for a masculine man. So she had a full beard. Uh, probably I'm about the same lift as mine. It was a little bit light, so it was laying down. But she said she's looking for a masculine man. So a sure man king on top is good for women and men. Uh, we don't discriminate. So just feel free to soften that beard. Hey, some people mess with it. And some people don't. Hit the like button. Also, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Um, we got Angela Swift is in the chat. Miss Parker, good to see you, ma'am. It's always good to see the ladies. Rocky B, Green Gang. What's up, brother? Mr. BX87, Dale Matthew. I see we got True the Fat with Smooth podcast is in the chat as well. Uh, maybe we can get him on the show one day. Um, Baba Samari. He said, drop the link for KS. Yeah, rest in peace, KS. Uh, that was a classic. We used to be able to drop the link for him. Rest in peace, big dog. I think we got the housekeeping out the way. 
Y'all ready, Darwin? I see you. You ain't got the uh, fitted hat on. Hold oh, on, so you dressed down today. Kind of dressed down. I'm not used to seeing them like that, man. And I actually, I, I actually just put took my my dress shirt and all that stuff off, and I had to put this on because of I don't know, man. I probably was hot as hell, man. So I'm saying this. I just came back with the kids, so I had you know kid drool all over my shoulders and all that stuff. Yeah, sometimes you sit in the house, it'd be hot as hell, man. If you ain't got the temperature right, man. <laughs> so it's starting to heat up now, man. The cribs are starting to heat up now. I'm right, going to go to get this show started, man. Again, hit the like button. It's good to see you guys. The NOLA experience is in there as well. Shout out to NOLA. I bet I know why she here. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, hit that like button. Here we go, man. First topic of this evening. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, Emmanuel Ocho. Are y'all familiar with that? Acho. Yeah. Acho. Acho. All right. So, Emmanuel Acho gives a gender neutral and racial indifferent take on LSU's Angel Reese emotional post game interview. I'm going to go ahead and bring up this clip. I'm going to play it just to give context. I know some people don't know who he is. I didn't particularly know who he was, but I know what he said. And a lot of folks got triggered with it. So, I'm interested to get you, hear you guys' take on this. I think it is relevant. Uh, to the conversation seem to be a hot topic, so we're gonna go ahead and dive right into it. Uh, here we go. And strong, and it sucks, and but I still wouldn't change. I wouldn't change anything, and I would still sit here and say like. I'm unapologetically me. I'm going to always leave that mark and be who I am and stand on that. And hopefully the little girls that look up to me and hopefully I give them some type of inspiration that, you know, hopefully it's not this hard and all the things that come at you, but keep being who you are. Keep waking up every day. Keep mo being motivated. Staying who you are. Staying ten toes. Uh, we got some comments. Um, according to Emmanuel Ocho, Angel Reese, who was crying about receiving death threats, Having a porn mo, uh, having an AI porn made of her, and being the target of some of the ugliest racism I've ever seen deserve everything she got because she talks sh at the free throw line. This man is disgusting. Emmanuel is being dragged across the internet while Angel Reese just dropped an absolute iconic Vogue magazine draft announcement. We also have uh, that was some more comments. Give me one second. Okay, here we go. Another failed take. Gender neutral, racially indifferent. When do black women ever get to be human? And then use, then the use of cowardly dog before Emmanuel Acho. Be for real, Emmanuel Acho. Has Emmanuel Acho ever had a great take? And then I think it's another one. Let me see. That was a short video. Did a terrible job at this. I can't even see that, man. But y'all get the point, man. Let's go ahead and get into it. Emmanuel gives a gender-neutral and racially indifferent take on LSU's Angel Reese emotional post-game interview. Let's start with the ladies, man. Let me get a couple ladies, and then I'll, I'll go ahead and go with the gentleman. I'm going to go to you first, Casey. When you seen that, what were your thoughts? I'll kick it off. I have on my Baton Rouge LSU shirt tonight. Um, still LSU all day. Um, so I'm I'm familiar with his face. I'm not really familiar with his commentary and whatever shows he's on. Um, I think a lot of his bravado was clickbait. I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, I feel like a lot of these commentators, a lot of people on television, you know, television and um, Twitter and, and whatnot, people are trying to be provocative in their speech with how they say things, how hard they come across. And I think he took this as a chance to be provocative in his speech towards Angel Reese. So I do feel, I feel like before I say what I have to say, I feel like it was inflated. Um, I'm so pro black woman and, pl and black man being together on the same side. This really disgusted me 
because I'm a person that will call out a black woman. I will talk to my own first before I expect a black man to talk to us or get us in line. So um, the fact that he went so hard after a loss, after someone who um, has received a lot of unfair backlash. Yes, she does have a mouth on her, but I get tired of African-American black athletes being told you're too sh boastful, you're too, you, you do too much, you need to chill out. But then at the same time, she's a, co she's a college student, guys. And then saying, oh, since you want to act grown, like basically take this grown a whipping. Like, I think, I think it was done in poor taste um, on national television after such a high intense game with fans that are, you know, on both sides, like really intense about the game and about the rematch from last year um, with, with Caitlin and, and Angel going head to head again. To talk about a college student like that, I feel like it was it was definitely done in poor taste. But I, I definitely feel like he doesn't feel that way behind closed doors. I think he took that as an opportunity for clickbait and to to get his name out there. Cause I didn't know his name. I knew his face. I don't I I, I didn't even know who you were talking about, but I did know his face. Um but black women do a child, she's a child. You're, she I'm sure she's what, 2021. Regardless of what she's been doing in magazines, whatever, yeah, she's making millions of dollars. She's the highest paid female college athlete right now. She's still a college student and she's still in college and she deserves some grace to still be a young woman dealing with emotions. Yes, she talks big stuff. Nine times out of 10, she backs it up. Um, she had an, an amazing game, um, but that wasn't his time to like, you know, let me throw some more dirt on her. They, they've they been called dirty debutantes by the LA Times. That Yes, they've been called all kind of names. Um, being Black African-American basketball players and playing against other athletes. Um, it was done in poor taste, and especially from a Black man. I'll, I have more to say, but I'll, I'll land it there. Okay. All right, that's fair. That's fair. Let me get another lady, then I'll go to a gentleman. Uh, which one of the ladies want to go? All right, I'll just go ahead and pick somebody. Go ahead, Ruth. I already unmuted myself. All right. Um, can you hear me okay? Yes, ma'am. Great. Um, I don't know much about this, but I did hear the dirty debutante thing. I think that it's important that people educate themselves on racism because you... Like, if he's willing to say that about a white girl, like, that, go that hard, okay, I can get it. Um, she probably does have a lot of mouth. Uh, I don't know her. It's really hard to determine, like, who's right or who's wrong. But when you say some stuff about death threats, that stuff is not normal. That's not, that's not something to play with. So um, women in general don't have, like, this... They, they don't sense danger as much as men. So maybe if a man heard that, he's like, whatever. But we do walk around like, you know, somebody can hurt us and, you know, we have a little bit of that, but sometimes we don't know we're, we're in danger. So she might not be used to that kind of language or feeling that type of way. A man probably like, nobody could do nothing to me. Like, I'm, I'm not scared, but, you know, it's kind of like we expecting her to be a man and a woman at the same time. So, I mean, <clears throat> you could talk trash in sports. That's how it go. Um, you can't say, hey, we want your culture play in our sport but then keep all of that home like it doesn't work like that you got to take the good with the bad um and for everybody in general you want to watch us but you don't want to you know deal with us when we don't do what you say so and that this whole gender neutral i don't think he could be gender neutral and i don't think it's and, and when people say race what do you say race something like like taking race out of it like you can't take race out of it it's not possible you that that's not it's all about race you know what I mean? It's all about like the way they coming at her. They wouldn't come at their darling little, you know, other races. Nope. They did go at Caitlin Clark. At the same level? I don't know. So I, I can't. Yeah, they, they were actually talking about how why is it that Caitlin Clark deserves a five million dollar deal to play in the big three? That there's so many other players that are better than her, despite the fact that she's probably one of the most successful 
bas- uh, NCAA girls basketball players that we've seen over the last, like, maybe 10 years. And they went at her, too. They actually went at her last year when she took the L. Because they were they were they were dogging Caitlin Clark out when Flo when when uh, when Flo when when, when when Andrew Reese was talking shit to her, everybody was dogging her out, all because she was talking shit. This ain't just happened to her. This happened to Caitlin Clark last year. What did Caitlin Clark do? She took it on the chin, came back the following year and bust ass. Okay. So what? So what are you, you saying that he didn't go to you? You're saying that he wasn't just being provocative in his speech and saying that like basically, oh, you're crying about death threats and you're crying about people bullying you and whatnot. You feel that he sh- you feel like he was in the right for saying that? Well, um, to say that somebody get up there after an L and then start crying about death threats. First of all, every celebrity gets death threats. It's not something new. And half the time, the death threats aren't even serious. It's, oh, you need to die alone or some doofy shit like that. Everybody receives death threats. Like, But, but if you're new but if you're new to having celebrity over the past couple of years, you can't tell somebody how they're supposed to deal with it. I'm not saying that, but to sit here and try to... Yes, yes, actually, yes, she was. She was attacked last year. They were criticizing her because she was doing some type of sign towards people and Angel Reese did it back to her. And they were talking shit to Caitlin Clark. Yes, she was. That was all about the game, though. I mean, we're not really talking about Caitlin. We're talking about what Emmanuel said. I mean, Caitlin is an amazing player. Like, all respect due to her. She deserves all the props, all the recognition. She had an amazing game. She's an amazing athlete, period. But we're not here discussing Caitlin right now. We're talking about Angel Reese losing the game her speech after, and this man, an, a black man, whether a white man or a black man, getting up, a grown man in his late 30s or 40s, getting up on national television and basically talking down to her like she's a piece of trash well, because he didn't like that she got emotional after her L. At the end of the day, it was embarrassing for her. Serena's not going to get up there and do something like that. You have to understand why he said it because, again, he's keeping it sports-related. Everybody, she's trying to take it out of sports and say, oh, it's about this, this, that. No, you took an L. Take your L on the chin. That's all he was saying. Take your L on but the so, chin. So she's, not, so she's not allowed to get – if she's giving an interview, oh, no, and I don't know what the questions okay, were that were – this is what this is what I want to see. What was the questions that was asked of her in order for her to give that response? I didn't, I didn't see what the question was for her to take it personal. So you can't say – why is she taking it personal if she could have been asked, how does this feel for you losing? And then she could have been went, okay, like I understand the loss, but I also have been going through a lot this past year. It's been a hard year. Da, 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 da. And so she could have taken it personal based on the question in the post-game interview. You see what I'm saying? All he was saying, again, because th- th- we we're talking about his comments on her. All he was saying was that you're trying to make it about something else when in reality – Take your L on the chin. That's all he's saying. Everybody else, and and she did paint a a target on her back. She was the villain. She relished in it. There's nothing wrong with that. There's a lot of players that do that. Kaylin Clark got again. Kaylin Clark got it last year when when Andrew Reese and Flojo beat her in the in the uh, NCAA finals. She took a. They was dogging her ass out, but she took it on the chin like you supposed to. And then the following year, she came back and won. He's just saying the same thing to Angel. You sat there, you stood in it, you dog, you talked your shit, y'all danced in front of the camera, talked y'all shit. And now that it's your turn to take the L, you want to come out and make it something else other than basketball. It's basketball. You lost. All right, let me get a couple of more people in there. Miss Honey, what are your thoughts about it, man? <laughs> to be honest, um, I was kind of sidebarring my husband a little bit. I don't really follow women's sports too tough. Um, I follow more of, you know, the older women, what the NBA league, as far as the women like Candace Parker, right? WNBA. So bringing it home to college now, um, just based off of what the information is provided, right? We have this young lady who is, from what I understand, talks a lot of trash, right? Which is normal 
in basketball. People talk trash all the time. But what I don't want to happen or want to see happen is no one playing the victim here. And I don't know what her platform is or what her end goal is, her end game is as far as, you know, all that and the waterworks and, oh, she's being threatened and all this other stuff. I'm never for violence. However, I feel like if you dish it, you should be able to take it. Period. Like, maybe, okay, not to the sense of like, oh, you want to see that person hurt or whatever, but maybe all the other extra stuff as far as, you know, death threats. Yeah, that might be a little extreme. But um, as far as, what's his name? Um, that was talking. Uh, Emmanuel. Yeah. I've, I've never really seen him too tough. Like, I've seen him talk maybe a few times, but... Just based off of that little clip, um, him saying, you know, I agree with him to a certain extent as far as like, you know, you talking grown, then you should be able to handle what comes your way when when you you lose a game. Um, but some accountability has to be had. You know what I'm saying? She did a lot of trash talking. Anyone that trash talks and you play a game and you lose, that's it. You just take it. Take a, take a chin, whatever high, whatever the, the the quote is, you just take the L and you keep it moving. Um, and I don't think like it should be anything more than that. Like you played the game, you lost, and that was that. Um, all that other extra stuff, like threats and all this, you know, him saying all this other other stuff and all that. I don't agree with that because I'm never for violence. At the end of the day. Like, if you want to use an example of, okay, she might be a kid, right? Yeah, you might not have a same intellectual conversation with an 18-year-old at the age of 35 or 36. However, that doesn't matter in the eyes of the law. Because at the end of the day, when you're 18, you're an adult. So I'm going to talk to you like an adult. Whether you respond to me like an adult, that's on you. But I'm going to talk to you as such. So it doesn't matter about her age and, you know, yeah, they're going to be kids and they're going to trash talk. But if you can dish it, you should be able to take it. That's how I see it. Uh, but I would never come out and say, like, if someone's trash talking me in the game, I'm just like, all right, well, I trash talk back. But I'm not going to be, you know, take it to the next level. Like, yeah, I'm going to kill your whole family. And no, I think that's a little extreme. But. As far as, like, if there's trash talk being talked back to her and, and this and the third, then it is what it is. Like, you sat there and you spilled it. Like, mm -hmm. you be able to take it as well. Like, it is what it is. All right. It kind of sound like Miss Honey and Sweeney on the same page. I don't see nothing wrong there. Uh, Dari. Nah. Um, shout, out, uh, shout out to the man who spoke so profoundly on this matter. Angel Reese lost. She made the whole game about her personal issues, which was disingenuous to the fans who came to enjoy the sporting game of basketball. Now, I think Angel Reese is extremely um, emotionally unstable and lacks sportsmanship. And she lacks sportsmanship on a, on a level, of, you know, for her teammates and, and the other athletes who wear the uh, opposing uniforms. I mean, because no one, you know, no one cares about your trauma. And I'm not sorry for her. I, you know, I don't feel any remorse at all simply because this platform, this particular stage isn't a place for it. And you don't get to unload your baggage on the thousands of fans who came for the game of basketball. If you got issues with negative comments from opposing teams, you should address it uh, eternally with internally with the staff so they can respond appropriately and, and professionally. And if you got issues with negative comments from fans, then that's a part of the game. The more you grow and become great, you're going to get exposed to even more hatred and scrutiny. And, you know, when we lose uh, big games and face negative comments, it's, it's, it's better to respond by viewing it as an opportunity to grow instead of being discouraged by, you know, criticism. You know, we should all look at setbacks as a as a stepping stone toward future success. That's all I can say on that. I, Cause I I play I play ball, so 
I feel Can it. Can I just piggyback real quick after from you, Darwin? Actually, um, you made a valid point. You said you felt she was being disingenuous to her fans, just based off of bringing something personal. When these guys, Jalen Brunson and all these dudes, you know, Paul George, like when they have time to talk after post game about the game, stick it to that. You know what I'm saying? Bringing in personal issues. Now, like I said, it's like almost you trying to play a victim right now, you know, because you have this platform where you could just talk about the game. And like you said, the opportunity to grow from, okay, I'm not going to trash talk. I'm going to just play the game, enjoy the game, enjoy the game of basketball, you know what I'm saying, and the relationship with basketball. Like, don't bring all this other extra stuff. Use that for another, i.e. podcast or, like you said, take it to therapy, whatever the case may be. And these platforms that everyone has, like Stephen A and everyone else, that's their platform. So whatever they choose to talk about talk about on their platform, that's their right, their prerogative. You know what I'm saying? I don't think it was anything that he said too crazy. Like I said, I agree with him somewhat. You know, like, yes, it's a, it's a basketball game. Like, you talk smack, be able to take it. So oh, y'all. focus on the <laughs> I respect I respect everybody's point of view, but I kind of feel like now y'all turn in the corner to the whole athletes need to be athletes and not have opinions outside of what they do, which has been the same that other races have said about LeBron James going all the way back to like a Muhammad Ali because he got and had a political uh, point of view and he shared that. And I don't think it's anyone's place to to tell another human being what they do and how they how they use their celebrity if they want to do if they're making millions of dollars and they're an athlete like Angel Reese, Angel Reese and Caitlyn are two different types of women. Caitlyn is a silent killer. She's a she's an athlete that kind of stays quiet. She doesn't talk unless really talking to and she's also not making the money that an Angel Reese is making. Angel Reese is as big as she is. She's being called the Bayou Barbie because of her personality, because of her mouth, because she comes off as the villain, and because of the personality that she adds to the game of sports. So everyone can have their opinion on what they think people should and shouldn't say and when they should talk and when they shouldn't talk or when it should be about sports and when it should not go personal. But the reason why we have certain athlete, athletes going all the way back to history and making their mark in different areas is because they've decided to talk about things outside of whatever sport that they've played. Angel Reese has tons, thousands, hundreds of thousands of people looking up to her. She has a lot of young girls looking up to her. You go to Louisiana, you go to any other state. I've seen more people wearing LSU, more people wearing LSU gear off of Angel Reese, who's not even from Louisiana, versus a freaking Joe Barrow who not who's not from Louisiana who played for the football team who is just as big winning championships and has just as big big as a name you know play, playing in the NFL so I feel like we kind of I feel like it's kind of it's kind of open season now for athletes to say what they want to say and not have to be beaten and criticized for it. All right, let me get some other people in there. Go ahead, voice. I mean, I don't really, I don't follow sports at all. It's not my thing. These are um, Come on. some new names to me. Now, the black girl, I do know her because wasn't that the white girl got in her face and was like, ah, when they lost and then she did it back to her when they won or something like that. And then they made a big deal out of it. That's the only thing I know about that. Now, I thought that was normal to trash talk in anything you do because artists do it every day. Rappers do it to each other and in music. I mean, like, you know, so that's a normal thing. And also, like, being able to, like, you guys were talking about, okay, we'll stick to sports if we're at, like, the press conference or whatever like that. But if that's the case, like, then that's basically telling somebody to just shut up and just do what they do. They're not allowed to really talk about anything else except for what they're centered around. But that doesn't mean they just center around basketball because other people have other opinions about stuff. I don't think her bringing up 
like the fact maybe people were um, doing stuff that she's not used to, like Casey says. And some people are not able to deal with that. They don't know how to deal with people being negative to them nope. in comments. They don't know how to respond to people saying negative things to them. Nope. And then at that, if she is young like that, she's a college student, what you looking at? What, about 18 to 23 in that age range, maybe 25 at the oldest. So you're really like vulnerable at that age and very impressionable. And it's hard to take criticism sometimes. And sometimes when people say things, so it, it could be in that motion. I don't think there's anything wrong um, with her bringing it up during that time. I don't think she was a sore loser. Then again, I don't know the situation because I didn't see the game. Um, but I absolutely don't think it's a problem when someone is speaking on something like that, especially death threats. I mean, Sweetie was like, you, you is like, yo, go kill yourself and stuff. But like, how many people you say that to and then they actually really go do that? You know, like we've had people that actually really go do that. So this might be something more serious. So um, that's really just my opinion on it. I don't really know about the sports, you know, um, portion of that, but just on a, you know, level of that. That's all I think. Name a celebrity that. JR, has- I pulled yeah. over to talk. Can I say something? Yeah, let me let me let her speak real quick, Sweeney. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, she's good. First and foremost, uh, I've met and no Angel Reese. I went to Louisiana State University. Um, The reason, first of all, she was so emotional and telling her story that way is because she knew she was not coming back to LSU. She knew she was going to the WNBA and that she was making that announcement in less than 24 hours. That's one. So she was full of emotions anyway because this was the end of her college career. That's one. Two, before the, the game even started, there was an LA Times article calling the whole team of black little girls playing against UCLA, which is a team full of white girls, calling I'll them the milk cookie. cookies and uh, calling them um, dirty debutantes. They're dirty debutantes. Mm-hmm. Bruh, I don't know who this dude is, but the Alumni Association probably going after him next. And the fact of the matter is, y'all, it's, a, it's it, what's funny is. Men have a tendency to call women emotional when it's convenient, but when a woman actually gets emotional, she out of pocket. I don't, I don't, I don't understand that. So, Angel Reese is about to go to the WNBA. She take her L's just like she take her W's. They took L's all year, and she didn't cry. It wasn't about that. It was about what they did to try to sabotage their mentality the whole tournament. They been called her ghetto because of her eyelashes. They called her any, before they even knew the girl. As soon as she transferred, they were on her ass. So all of this extra that we're trying to overthink, how about she just said because she's getting ready to leave LSU, which everybody is because it's the best college on earth. And she said because of the stop, the sabotage and clear racism that has been going on in the news. And they added to it on top of that with this dude. So he next to get canceled. What was racist, what was racist about them calling them dirty debutantes? Because they called the other team milk and cookies. You put it together. What? What now? Nah, hold on. They called the other team milk and cookies. Yes. Milk and UCLA back- milk and cookies, and they dirty debutantes, and yeah. that they oh, yeah, play yeah, a certain yeah, type yeah. of way. And they, as he said, everything, but they were ghetto. But have you googled w, dirty debutante? Have you googled what that is? No, I just looked up what uh, looked up the news article. Yeah, nah, bro. It's been a fight <laughs> since they started. That's my college. But, I'm but, no, yeah. absolutely not. But is it beyond the realm of possibility that they did paint themselves as villains all year? They painted themselves as ballers all year. And that's, they that's, were the defending national champions. You can't. You can't. And you if can't the, the, our baseball team, team and listen, our baseball they was team, mad shit. our baseball team right now, LSU is doing the exact same thing. They won last year. They're acting the exact same. I'm not denying way. that. They, I'm not denying that. What I'm saying is, is don't you think that when you Come out here and you talk. Same thing happened to Deion Sanders. He came out talking mad cash shit. And, and I mean talking mad cash shit. Put a put a big ass target on his back. Now, granted, we can call it it's all in the name of, you know what I mean, the sport, but don't that kind of make you look like a villain after a while where people look at you like, oh, okay, that's how you're gonna talk. I I'm bet. not saying that she not a villain or they weren't the big the 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 the, nat, the former national champion is always gonna be the villain because that's every that's who everybody wanna beat. 
Hey, look, when look. you ride, when you're riding that high horse, that it, it is what it is. Because I'm a former national champ, I know how it feels. Everybody gunning for you, so it don't matter what you do or how you say it, they're gonna think you're being cocky. The point to my story is about her being emotional and about how this grown ass man talked about a barely out of college uh, young woman and her future and how she reacted to how she didn't take her L's. They, this is not the first time LSU has lost this season. J JR, but you she put knew this? that she was getting ready to leave LSU, and it was more than just what it was. Is more it was more to it. That's all I'm saying. And no, she doesn't have mental issues. The girl's completely sane. I've met her. She's a good kid. Mm -hmm. Can you play the video, uh, Jr? That's what we mad at. That's what we mad at. I just got off the plane, been waiting to give my Angel Reese Caitlin Clark thoughts. Do I'll not do call Angel Reese when I get classless and praise Caitlin Clark as a hero. Like no, no, no. Because if you call for attention, you can't hang up. And Caitlin Clark has called for attention both by her play, because she a baller, and she has called for attention by taunting the opponent. She did the same thing thing in the elite eight and then against south carolina just last game she was waving off uh offensive players as if she didn't even respect their ability to take a shot and you don't think people gonna take offense to that you can't call for attention and hang up do not think for one moment that angel reese was not waiting to go in we've seen the same thing happen Back in the day when Aaron Rodgers used to discount double check, any time a defender got a sack, they was going to discount double check right over him. Terrell Owens, let's go back a decade or two at Cowboy Stadium, ran into the middle of the star, playing the football, and then put his hands out. Come on now. Athletes taunt. Athletes compete. That's all Angel Reese was doing. Don't try to police women differently as a competitive sport. Let them girls compete. I'm with it. All right, hold tight. Hold, hold tight, swing. Let me go ahead and get uh, smooth in there real quick. Go ahead. Yeah, so I'll say she definitely um, painted herself as the villain, right? The team did. They embraced it. And sometimes that's just what athletes do. I don't see anything wrong with that to to embrace the villain role. But on the other coin, you have to understand what comes with that, right? And I understand that she is rather young. So I can see why she didn't realize what would have happened after that but she's 21 years old that's a that's a legal age there's not very much you can't do at 21 years old you're going to be held responsible as a 21 year old right that's that's just how life goes right so you're gonna to have to take the good with the bad right so i think that she'll develop from this is this is also an l for her but i think it's going to build her character I think she's going to be okay. I, I, like, it's just, she's going through something. And as a, as a woman, I can understand why she is emotional like that. Um, she's going to have, she just made poor judgment. She's a human being, right? I do agree with Darwin's um, sentiment where there's a time and a place for it. I do think she has 100% right to express herself. But at the podium, I don't think it's the place, right? Um, you, you keep it to the sports. You should be able to say what you want. But over there, you just kind of keep within the guidelines of the sport, right? It's understandable she was leaving and she was emotional, but you got to deal with that. You saw the actions, man, and, and I love it because when I watch the sports, it's what's making it exciting, right? She's made the game extremely exciting. So we can't say that we don't like what she was doing. It made everybody watch it, right? Whether you loved her or you loved to hate her, you watched more women's basketball, which was – Obviously suffering for a while, but they made it exciting between her and, and battling um, the other girl from Iowa. They had that. They did that. I don't see anything wrong with it. It's, it's part of competing. It's the sport. Um, we don't have a problem with it when the men do it. I don't think I don't think the women should ha have a problem doing it either. It's just being competitive. And sometimes the emotions are going to be flaring. That's just what it is. That's there's no problem with that. But as far as on that platform i think man you just got to chill sometimes because everybody's watching and everybody's looking for a reason right and we can't get away from the fact that this probably would not have happened if she weren't black right there's going to be people who just not going to like you just because of that i'm pretty sure most of us on the panel have dealt with that so that and then when people are making those types of attacks against your race um 
Some people might say because she's a female or whatever. They just didn't like her. It's a lot for a person to deal with emotionally, particularly women. We understand they're emotional and it's okay for them to be like that. We understand they're going to deal with things like that. I expect her to do a lot better after this, though. This is this is just a horrible experience from her, but she has a very bright future ahead of her and she's just going to have to calibrate. Right. There's a there's a balance. Right. You can be the villain on the court, but when you off there, you just kind of chill out. And it is what it is. She's just going to have to deal with it. But I think it's going to develop after this. And at the end of the day, man, <clears throat> no, no one cares how big you are, how great you are. Fans didn't come here for you to cry and unload your baggage. You got personal problems, get a therapist. We don't want to hear that shit when we're here to watch the game. I mean, it ain't an athlete playing today that got problems that can't be solved internally or in-house or even within the circle, you know, other people who hold your best interests. You know, take your loss, take your, take your baggage, and take your ass home, sleep it off, and then get up and, and go work on your game. You know, the same thing we tell men to do in a sport that was initially for men, we gonna tell females too. If you don't like it, the game ain't for you. Another, another thing about that, we just have to be very careful as black people how we represent ourselves, right? Because there are plenty of other races who don't interact with us a lot at all. So the perception that you give off when you're on the podium, when they're watching you, when you're on the grand stage, that's just what they think about all of us, right? And in this particular instance, it's going to turn a lot of people off. They're going to call us crybabies and, oh, there they go complaining again. So it's just one of them things, man. You. <laughs> I believe as a young person, when you're dealing with situations like that, you need to have people in your corner who can kind of advise you, guide you and how to, uh, to approach these type of med media events. Anytime you're out there and you're speaking in front of millions of people, you're presenting us. So we have to be responsible can when we, when we do that. All right, so when I like so when I was at UConn, right, we won a national championship too, and the girls had won three national championships prior to us winning. So when we won, the first thing they said to us was, "Finally, it's about time." Kind of like belittling our national championship, but it was all in good fun because they athletes, right? And we, you know, just having a good time with it. Um, so I know firsthand how cocky some of the girls basketball players can be. But again, they elite athletes at the top of their field. So it's to be expected to behave or, or think like that because you don't get to that spot in life without thinking you are better than what anybody else expects you to be. Part of that is the, the personality traits you need in order to be successful. It's going to have negative blowbacks. But I haven't really watched female uh, basketball. I haven't watched really any sports for, for a while. So when I'm basing this take off of it's just – this clip, a couple of pictures on Instagram, and some of the um the taglines I seen with content creators. So uh chaotic had a stream, like they said something like the nappy head holes take a loss. Right. And <clears throat> when I think about that, it's ironic to me that the men who's who usually champion like the, the anti-black you need to assimilate points of view we're having a field day running with that loss and and, and talking about that girl so based off of that I, I i i can't believe that the man actually like i don't know who that dude is right i seen somebody in the chat said um he carries water for, for another group of people and he usually has anti anti-black sentiment i'm not sure right i don't know i don't does. that could be anything chaotic say is serious bro no, I'm not talking about chaotic in this case. I'm saying inside the chat, somebody said that about the, the dude, Emmanuel, whatever. Right. So judge him. So I'm putting these two things together. When you have a, a certain group of men who make content specifically geared toward uh, attacking black females. And then you have people in the chat saying that the dude does that like that's that's part of his personality trait. I'm, I can't sit here and pretend like I don't see men that had that 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 POV. That's a that's a that's a very very unrealistic. That, that's not real about who Emmanuel Acho. He commentate he commentates on on sports. I y'all just seen me share a video of him actually big up in Angel Reese just last year. 
So we can't sit here and say that he rags on black women. That's just not true. And I Wait, just the, the dude you just showed the video of is the same person from the other video. Same dude. Okay, again, I I prefaced this statement with I only you know what I'm saying I didn't realize that that was the same person. Um, so it again. If he just kept it strictly to basketball, that's cool. When when a young woman talking about death threats and talking about they making AI corn of her and all type of other stuff, that's a valid concern. Like uh, across the board, imagine your daughter come and say, "Dad, uh, they making death threats about me because I excelled at something at AI corn." They ain't got nothing to do with basketball, bro. Man, that's got everything to do with a whole. Yeah, but change the reason didn't go to her dad. She came to us. She's addressing it publicly because it's something that's bothering you try to, her. You try to paint, you try to paint a parallel that was kind of in, in, but it oh, happened publicly point. though. So why she can't speak on it because it's already public knowledge. So if it's already <laughs> out there and it's public what knowledge, what the news articles are public knowledge. The the racist talk is public knowledge. The 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 uh, the commentary about her being horrible and ghetto is public knowledge. So she's not supposed to say anything in public about it. She has oh, to go to her private people. Instagram page. Just because the public don't mean she's got to go and buy into the negativity. That's what we trying oh, to tell man. you. They were associating Kaylin Clark with Matt the last. How, how, how many? How many people? Being emotionally how many people? intelligent and responding in a in a in a timely matter, in a professional matter, on at the right time, and right place. Sort of like what Trev said. It's a time and place for it. But y'all know that they were. Y'all know that they were. When is the time and place? Because Diddy still ain't say nothing about what he did. It's about uh, the time and place right now yeah, for Diddy to see something. Diddy. Right we not holding Diddy. We, are we holding Angel Reese to the same standards that we holding Diddy? Really? No, I'm not making that parallel. The reason I brought it in about what it could happen because I got girls right, and when I, I look at them, I think they're gonna be athletes. So I, I could see them cleanly in that position. That's why I made that parallel, not to make anybody else feel the way, but I literally. Genetically, it just seemed like they would probably be like six two, six three, and probably be extremely athletic, just based off of that. Me and Casey, our, our families is everybody played semi or D one basketball, football, uh, baseball. So when I look at, it, I look at it from that perspective. So that that's, that's that was the parallel, uh, Darwin. Trying what you call it. I'm speaking to my mindset as to how I'm coming up with the thought that I'm coming up with and the information I'm pulling from. Right, so. Uh, using the the chaotic thing and the other conservative, like extreme right wing conservative men that I know typically do content about that, I kind of feel it's hard to remove that that aspect of it from from my perspective right now, based off of what I know about, you know, what I'm saying the situation. So let so, me get um, this straight. Everybody on here, uh, I know it's some people who don't, but for the most part, y'all feel like this platform, this stage, is a place for you to to be political. To add your political views and your poli political concern concerns on. If yeah. somebody asks you a question and you want to answer, so I, I I got in trouble for this before, right? When they ask you questions, they want you to keep it extremely bland and say the typical uh, media trainer answers, right? Oh, they play good, da 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 da. da. But those be the most boring interviews. The people who usually make interviews that people actually want to watch do stuff where they show emotion, they tell you exactly how they actually feel, and then. And then we'll be talking about it for, for 10 to 15 years down the line. And sometimes things change based off of that. Like, so it's better to do it for the for the likes and entertainment and longevity of being able to be watched, you know. No, it's better to do it for the authenticity of her being able to be a human. Uh, Y'all know that last year they were associating Iowa and uh, Kaylin Clark to MAGA? Mm, like, they were, they, were, they were getting the same. Like, this was the... Uh, like y'all don't remember when I think it was when Atlanta was going up against uh the Patriots in the Super Bowl and they were there. I, I like think that. Sweeney for you is like you expecting everybody to react the same way. Oh, what, and what, everyone's not the same type of oh, athlete. Oh, like I already said, Caitlin is a very stoic young woman. Like she's very like not very emotional. She's very serious. She's a powerhouse. Like that is her personality. It's, it's so fair. the way she dealt with it, she might have a type of maturity about her in a way of looking at life that Angel Reese, like Trev was saying, that she may not be there yet. I don't have to. I don't have to take every single person and compare them and say, "Oh well, they talked about Caitlyn and Caitlyn didn't do that." that wasn't a that's like that's like comparing black men. Well, this black man don't. 
don't accept this, so why you don't accept it? Or this black man don't do that, so why you don't do it? Casey, like, every, all of us are different. Casey, that wasn't the reason why I brought that up. I brought that up because we're trying to make it as if she's uh, the only person that, that experiences these type of things when in reality... No they, one said that she's the only one. No, no one I'm, said that, Sweeney. No, when, but we're looking at him as if he's doing her wrong by calling her out and saying, hey, look, play ball. Even though we watched other examples and watch how everybody how everybody gets the same treatment across across sports. Everybody gets treated the same. Everybody does not get treated the same. I, I didn't hear That's her, not call her a, cur a cowardly dog or any of that extra stuff. Well, well, that she needs to take it. But, get but, it. If you watch, but if you listen to black media, that's exactly what we were doing to her. So yeah. exactly, when you go to the root and you go to uh, all these um, black blogs that were talking about Caitlin Clark last year, or if you talk about that Super Bowl, they were being like the Patriots live being literally being painted as MAGA, and like they, they were the white supremacists of the NF uh, of the NFL going up against Atlanta. Like we make it race all the so time. So why so why can't everything be wrong? I don't like I don't I'm not I'm trying to understand your point. Why can't Somebody calling Caitlyn MAGA. Out. Why can't that be wrong? Just like he's nobody talking about. Because what? Because nobody called it out. Nobody. We're not talking, but we're not. Why? That's not because the point she's of the white conversation and the other tonight. one is black. Because one that, is that white. That wasn't the conversation. The conversation is how he talked about Angel Reese's. So what was this game what interview? Was that like that's what we're talking about. What and you're trying to make it a broad conversation about all athletes. And we're not talking about all athletes. We're talking about how so he got on national TV. What was wrong with what he said? Besides, this, he, said exact, he said the exact same thing he said to Kaylin Clark last year. And all the fans that were upset about that, that video I just posted said, is a literal parallel of what he said this year to, to Angel Reese and what he said about Kaylin Clark last year and how people were criticizing Kaylin Clark and saying it's about basketball. Take it no, on. that wasn't. No, it wasn't. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't, can saw, you play I those videos back to back? Can you play those videos back to back? That was not. That was not the same to me. He said no. that she's not classless. Basically, basically calling the dogs off of Angel Reese, saying that she was not wrong in responding to um caitlin saying if you pick up the phone and you basically you want to talk that mess that's you can't true. hang up when it that's come back to you angel reese. that's he did not call caitlin all kind of names like he just called angel reese he didn't say oh you a grown woman so act like a grown woman you talk like a girl he went 20 times harder on angel reese than he did on caitlin no, he no. was more taking that's up for caitlin he was i mean he was more taking up for angel reese in the other conversation the uh, this new video He's trashing Angel Reese. It's not the same. It's not the same. You about to play those two videos or no? Nah? We gonna move on. You ain't gotta play it, Jr. It's all good. Cause we said no here. Like Angel Reese is no victim. She got the same treatment everybody else get. She's no victim. People they burnt LeBron James jersey. Come on now. Did she use the word victim? She never said I'm a victim. I, I, and I oh my god, I didn't deserve. To. No she victim. didn't say any of those things. She didn't no, say we like deserve me. to win the day and we got messed over and the refs is cheating on us. She wasn't a sore loser, Sweeney. She she, she played a in the game she, she and they lost. She was a sore. I said she wasn't a sore loser. She did not say that she, she got cheated loser. out of a game. She's she's very she sore. She she got cheated out of a game. She's a sore loser. And That's to keep, no, and to keep it loser shit. And to keep it one hundred. Whatever y'all say. And to keep it one hundred, Mark is I, right. Mark is right. Mark is right was correct the first time. He was absolutely correct when he said, "When someone gives death threats to your daughter, you'd expect her to go to her father and have him guide you through." And this is a prime example of why it is why it's important for women to be covered under male leadership and male protection. Because she poured out her baggage to the fans instead of her father, instead of That's her husband. Good. That's I assume point. she is not covered or protected, which strengthens my point and the points of many other men in this space who constantly get on get on these platforms and get on these in these streams and address the issue of how so many black women are out here moving without covering. It's a damn shame. And I think that's that's maybe the most important ingredients in this problem. But nobody wants to talk about you, that. I got a question. How do you equate that with she doesn't have guidance from a father? How do you get from somebody expressing their personal opinion about something that bothers them to the public, which the public keeps speaking on publicly? 
and she's not supposed to defend herself or say anything in retrospect to how she's feeling. How do you then equate that to she doesn't have protection from a man or her father? What, okay, what well, let me ask you, her when, you have, when you have an issue, when you have an issue, who do you go to? You go to your, your father and your husband? Hold on, first of all, are you married? Yes. Okay, so when you got an issue that you need help uh, getting through, pushing through, you go to your husband, right? I'll ask my husband if he knows. But, but how do you know he knows know, unless you go? How do you know if he knows unless you go to him? I ask him first. If he don't know, then okay, who then. I ask so you, you go. You go address your. You go take take it up with your husband. And when you weren't married, who did you go to then? You went to your father, right? Granted, your fa if your father was in the household, but if he yeah. wasn't, then that's a whole nother conversation that adds to the point. My mom as and well. dad are still married. They've been married for mother household. Years. That, excuse me. My mom and dad have been married for forty years. Okay, so whenever you had a problem and you weren't married, you went to your father, right? Yeah, sometimes, not all the time. So when, when 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 Marcus Wright led off with his statement about the daughter getting th death threats or negative comments, it come to the dad about the problem. Uh, you know, we know good and damn well a father and a husband is going to be more emotionally concerned and sensitive to her issues than the fans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that also stresses a point why it's important for a woman to be under male cover, because if you cover without a shadow of doubt. You are gonna take it on the chin until you get home with daddy, until you get home with hubby, and then everything gonna be good. Cause what that's what we do as men. We take care of our our our, our women. We take care of the women we love and the women we cover, which is why it's important for a woman to be under a man's cover. And if you ain't under a man's cover, how can you be protected? Society is gonna take, look at you as target practice. And we know women are are, are what, extremely. What, is, what exactly was her dad gonna do though? I, I could give you an example of what I would have done in that case. So one, um, I would have been working with her to prepare her for what she was going to deal with. So she could um, maintain feeling protected and not feeling like she needed to vent to the rest of the world in that scenario. Um, so the media training is, is one thing to be media trained. It's another thing to be emotionally trained. I think and I've said this many times. Uh, the man's role a lot of times in the house is to emotionally temper everyone. Right. You the kids be whining. You teach them how to kind of suck it up. Your wife is having a, 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 a you know, what I'm saying her her emotions is flailing from side to side. You kind of recenter her. Potentially, he could have recenter his daughter so she could have handled that with a different a level of poise. No, that's why I agreed with Trev's point, saying that she's going to learn from the interview and the backlash that she received on how she um, could have not gone so deep into crying and doing what she did and going into detail about it. But at mm -hmm. the end of the day, for me, I don't have a problem with her bringing it up, but she will gain some maturity like a Caitlyn or, you know, another athlete that's going to be separate the line um a little bit but i i just don't think the criticism from emmanuel was warranted but she can do better and i'm sure like trev said and um to your part marcus she will do better um <laughs> jr you muted i let me say that no spill man you guys just welcome to the people let's talk make sure we hit the like button also make sure you subscribe to the channel uh, let's go ahead and get to this next topic let's talk about support man talk about support what does support look like in a relationship i'm going to go ahead and play this clip and let's go ahead and get to it y'all good you do well being check roof you good I gotta check on you <laughs> just let me go first are we good right uh, yeah i'll let you go first for an ex put you out oh yeah so tell that story that's when i was first uh you know in my beginning stages of, you know really chasing my dream of comedy mm -hmm. um at the time i felt like um she didn't believe in my dream and my goals i used to want her to support me so much um I, you know i thought there was gonna be a woman i was gonna be with are we on yeah, that's it thanks page Sorry. He said you weren't there for him. This day is outside his grandma house on Thanksgiving of 2013. This is my car. Okay. My first Camaro. Well, what we got? This day is it in my car, but I'm unsupportive though. Here you go again. You would think my car belongs to him. 
you in my car. And what date? What date is that on there? Because he said you weren't there for this. Twenty four. Twenty four. Twenty four. Daisy. This day is again. Where you at? June twenty fourteen. You in my car. Now who bought the shoes and the outfit for him? I don't think I paid for that, but I did used to buy him some stuff, but I ain't paid for that. It's Daisy and his content. Where he at? In my car. Okay. <laughs> this my boy again. Where he at? In my car. Okay. This, this is July 2014. He said you didn't believe in his comedy or nothing. Where you at? This my car. <laughs> I mean, it's everywhere. My car. <laughs> Back when you was doing football before you even got into social media. That's Daisy in my car. Damn. <laughs> he, he, where you at? <laughs> in my car. Like, but I ain't did nothing though. Hey, you go praise the Lord in my car. You <laughs> 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 say I ain't did nothing. Now, now you sh you making content. <laughs> now you putting content on social media. Where you shooting your content at, Daisy? In my car. <laughs> Like all your car scenes, where they come from? My car. You wanted to go train at Panther Vehicle. Look at you. You was in my car. <laughs> and now you at the stadium. That's how you got there. That's how you got to put in that work. But I'm unsupportive. Look, look at in my car. <laughs> Making your skits. This December 2014, you in my car. Like all this, you in my car. Where you at? The car wash. In my car. <laughs> We done. We done. Y'all got to check out the whole interview with Desi Banks' ex, Naisha, okay? She has fucking had it with Desi. In it, my car. All right. We done. <laughs> all right, y'all. I mean. All right. Let's go ahead and get into it, man. That uh, brings us to the next topic. So we had Desi. Um, I did see that interview where he was saying that she didn't have no support. So apparently uh, his ex has gone on to Tasha K to do an interview where she said that, uh, what do you mean I didn't support you? A lot of times you were in my car. You were in my car. The comments were, uh, this is hilarious, good try though. Uh, Tasha K said she paid all his bills from 2014 to 2019 while he was in her car. Not sure if he was trolling or not. Paradise Paris says doesn't mean she supported him. Queen Sheba said, just be lying to be lying. Uh, somebody else said, I'm confused. Driving your cars means you supported his comedy dreams. And I'm going to just read one more. Using her car does not equal overall support for his career. I was waiting for a real receipt. She got to go back to the drawing board. So feel free. I'm going to go with Ruth first. Uh, feel free to give your opinion about if you think that was actual support. And what does support look like in a relationship? Because I'm a little bit confused right now just off of that. I'm like, is that support? Is that not support? Let's go ahead. Well, I thought it was funny. Um, she does have a gotcha moment. And, you know, yes, she did support him in some way, but it would be better to, like, emotionally support him. You have to encourage a man, you know, um, be there for him. You know, he has a fragile ego. He's trying to make it, you know, he might be doing all of that and feel like he has imposter syndrome the whole time. And then after he did the whole skit then you over here talking trash, like why you ain't doing nothing. So we don't know what's going on behind closed doors. If he brought out his receipts and all the recordings, how did you talk to him? How did you, did you support him? Were you cooking for him? Were you like, you want to be that full support, <clears throat> but you want, you, you're acting like, Oh. God damn it, Ruth. <laughs> oh man. You hear me? You're acting like no, no, I'm back. See. <laughs> I wish I had some support tonight, but my daughter not here. But anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, so so I'm a, I'm gonna make it quick. So there was there was there's times that I felt supported in, in a relationship, a long-term relationship that I had, but the person did not stay until the finish line. And therefore, after the relationship was over, they started seeing me win because partially because they wasn't there to discourage. They wasn't there to shut it down. And they just didn't stick in long enough. You know, you, you can't just be in the gym for a little bit. You got to be there the whole time, I guess. That's what he's trying to say. He was trying to finish with her, but she could not wait for him. Okay. Go ahead, Miss Honey. What are your thoughts about it, man? <laughs> Uh, I'm not really going to add too much because Ruth basically literally took the words out of my mouth. You know, you asked the question, what does support look like? And um, 
it's not just, oh, he's using my car, sis. Sorry, that's not going to cut it. Um, it's more than that, okay? Men love and want to be supported just the way they would want to support us, right? By showing up, um, checking in, like, babe, you good? Like, how can I make this a better experience for you as, as you get into this next chapter of your life as far as being a comedian, you know? Like, what does that, it's, it's having conversations. You don't know what's going on behind closed doors. And like um, Ruth said, we don't know what the receipts Desi may have, you know what I'm saying? But if he was to probably sit here and go into detail, like I wanted to feel supported emotionally. Uh, she probably lacked that, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not just being there physically, like showing up, going out on dates as, as a couple. It's more than that. Like you gotta, men want to be emotional with their woman too, especially if he loves this person and he wants to grow with this person. He wants the same that you want poured into you. He wants the same back. Don't think for a second that men don't want that. They do. They want that support, that love, that affection. Like, babe, like, check. Because it's hard out here, especially for our Black men. It's hard out here. And so they want to know that at the end of the day, they can go to their woman and, and receive that that love, that support. Like, babe, like, today was rough. You know, I didn't get that call back from that manager or whatever it is, you know, in that industry. Like, um, and, and I'm going through a tough time. That's, he's looking for that shoulder that, that to cry on or, you know, to that air to listen and maybe give some advice to let him know that it's going to be okay. Like, I'm in this with you for the long haul, not just until you make it. And, um, she couldn't stick around long enough to find that out. You know what I'm saying? And it's unfortunate, but um, that's what support looks like. It's not just I'm using your car every day. It's more than that. So. All right. I like that. Mr. Marcus White, what are your thoughts about it, sir? Um, yeah, no, I, I agree with the sentiment of Miss Honey, uh, Casey and Voice, that if you got a ride from a bus, you want to say the bus was supporting you just because you, you got rides places. Don't mean that person was, was on your side and hoping you win support could be as, as much as like rooting for you, believing in the dream, um, trying to facilitate you getting there. Now, maybe that was her point with the car, but the way she was throwing it in his face, I know people who are like that, who they, maybe they feel like them by doing service that they've done all they can for you and they'll still negative like he could have been going to the things you can see my car but you ain't gonna make it you ain't you you know what i'm saying why are you shooting these videos in my car all the time it's my car like the way she say my car make me think she's reminded him that it's her car too multiple multiple times and that's that's not supporting like honestly you you might be emasculating and and, and, and belittling him while allowing him to use whatever he was using that he needed I yeah, I don't I don't think she even understood what he meant when he said support, which is the reason she kept saying my car, which further leads me to believe she didn't actually support him because she don't even know what he was talking about to 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 just to refute it. Yeah, she basically proved this point by literally saying, Oh, my car, my car. Yeah, that's not what support looks like. She literally let her action show through that whole interview. Like, okay, yeah, you did not support him because that's not what support looks like. Not remotely close. All right. I'm going to go to Casey. I got a question for you. Do you believe that having unwavering support from your partner is essential for a successful and fulfilling marriage? Hmm. I think me and my husband would kind of feel differently, um, meaning on the same page, but differently with what is being said here. Number one, I don't think the whole car situation means that she's supporting him. That's first and foremost, right? I think that goes without saying. Um, it was funny, though, for Tasha K. I'm sure it got a lot of clicks and a lot of money that she's making for her interviews. But um, when it comes to, and I'm sure Voice can kind of tap into this, I come from a... Um, talent background. I was a, a professional dancer. I have a brother who um, has sung his entire life and has done a lot of things professionally. 
there are a lot of talented people in the world. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. We all know Dizzy now in 2024. He's extremely talented, as well as a lot of people, a lot of other people who have not popped and who've not made it and who've not hit it big and and like he has. Um, I believe it was one of the guys on the 85 South show or something like that. Am I saying that right, y'all? South show talked about how he had like eight million followers. No, no, no. Maybe been two million followers, and he was still sleeping on his mom's couch. And he had he looked like he was successful at that point, but he was not. And so, when you have a partner and you're building a life with somebody, how much do you support them in their dreams, and what, how are they balancing their dreams with actual real life, right? And also you tethering yourself to them in a marriage, a long-term commitment, long-term relationship with her being a woman and this, this being and Desi being a, a man in this situation with her having to follow him. Yeah. She probably felt, she could have felt like, you know, yes, he is talented. He's the most talented person I know in this world, but if it's decades going by and he's not making any money from social media or whatever, how long do you expect her to su support him? You know what I'm saying? Um, it, we don't know what he was doing outside of doing the, the the shows and stuff like that. Because a lot of people that I know that have talent, they will work and do focus and grind on their, you know what I'm saying? Work during the day and sing at night or work during the day, and dance at night or travel, work two and three jobs to keep their dream funded and keep their dream alive while they hustle until that can take over the reality and the, you know what I'm saying, to support their family and stuff like that. Cause after you get a certain age, like I said, you have to be realistic. So I don't, I don't know the story. I don't know the backstory. I don't think, I, I don't think we, none of us have seen the full interview of what she talked about and like her point of view in their relationship, but that could be, that could have been a problem you know what I'm saying? How long it took for Desi to pop. It it could have taken decades. And so how supportive do you expect a person to be? I don't know if they have kids. I don't know anything about him personally. So um, it could have been a difficult situation. And I think everybody is not built like that to go through that type of like real grind with a person and stand by them in their thoughts and their dreams. You know what I'm saying? So. I'm sure that's not an easy situation. You uh, seen the movie Acrimony? Y'all seen that movie before? Yes, yes. It's, it's probably like some yes. acrimony stuff. That's a that's a good that's a good that's a good parallel. Um, she gave up right when it was time for him to blow up. Right? Um, you know, some people can't. Yeah, but she, she did something course. different. She made it. She made marriage a requirement, like some of these heathens don't do. Right, knew her value, so she at least stood on that and tried to do it the right way. So I commend the girl in Acrimony for doing that. Mm. You know, that's you know, true. I, I think, and she and she she really did support him. That is a true. She did support him, even though she could have handled the end differently. She definitely gave her life, spent her family, her inheritance with her parents, money, her life worked while he didn't work. I mean, that I think that's true support, right? Uh, she, I, I don't know. Do. What, I think the dude even stepped out on her. Yeah, I think yeah he, was, he cheated on her as well too. And she yeah, he was, he was he was a complete loser yeah. for that. <laughs> I, when he did that, I was totally like, I mean, I like the dude at first, but when he's huh, that was before they got married. He was still in college. No, they was married already. No, they weren't. And then she ended up not being able to have kids because when she crashed that car into the thing to get him and that lady, she uh, pierced her pelvic. Bone and she no longer could have children by him. Either. Yeah, but I think they. I think I don't think he was married to her yet. No, they was married already. Really, it don't even matter though, man. Like you, you selling this woman a hope and dream that, on a level of you making her a fiance and sometime marry her, and you got to, you got her investing all of her time and energy, energy in this big plan that you're trying to uh, grow into a prototype so you can make millions of dollars. I think it's a it's a gut punch. To 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 move like that as a man, 
regardless if you married her boyfriend, just selling this woman a hope and dream. And I think a lot of men do that today, which kind of well, well, didn't he come through with his didn't he come through with his promise? Yeah, but you you came, but see, there's gave thing. her back got, all the money made, that she spent on him throughout the years you, for that to work. If you if he said I'm working on this battery that's gonna make us millions one day, trust the process. He made good on his promise. Yeah, she, but that, he made good on certain promises. It wasn't no. the promises across the board. It was he nitpicked the promises he wanted to make good on. Like obviously he didn't make good on his pro his promise of loyalty and uh, infidelity. Well, if they because everybody in the chat saying they weren't married before, but if he said I never cheat on you again, and they get married after that, and he never cheats on her again, didn't he make good on his promise in the marriage? Hold on, <laughs> assumptions. You're making a lot of assumptions. So I don't, I don't think that I don't think they were. I mean, she didn't say he cheated on her after they got married. Even if he didn't, he used up all her money, all of her money, then turned around and married the woman that he cheated on she her with, and she then the gave one. her everything. Dude she was a loser. No matter, no matter how much you try to twist it, bro, moving like that, you oh, moving man. like a loser. Completely. Right, let's, try to, let's try to steer it back in. Uh, yeah, let's, try to, let's try to bring it back. But I, I mean, I, how's he a loser? I just want to know that. How was he a loser? Okay, so so all of the women listening, listening right now, y'all listening to what he's he's asking. He's asking, how was he a loser by betraying this woman? What do y'all think? Did he betray her? Yeah. How? She confided in him for loyalty on a, on a level of relationship where they was going to be committed to each other and not go out and have sex with other people outside and of the went out, And he went out and got married to her, and that didn't happen anymore. So how was he a no, loser? No, but see, the thing is- I first you know, think he could have worked see, while he worked on his dream. He didn't so work. We, so what you're trying to do is you're trying to do is say he didn't do it anymore. It, it don't work like that. Just because you don't do it anymore, that means it wasn't the was. She didn't. She didn't break up with him and say, "I'll never get with you again." He cheated on her. He got caught. They got married. So if your woman cheat on you and you get caught, and I marry and, her, and she says she ain't gonna do it no more, you gonna marry her? But that's not the. That's not me talking. I'm well, not. I'm just. I'm just, I'm just flipping it. I'm married. just flipping it to see how you would respond. I would not marry her. But if I make the decision to marry her, how then am I gonna hold her accountable for some shit she did before the marriage? Do you would you feel betrayed if your woman cheated on no, you? No, not if I married her. If she your girlfriend, even if she if your girlfriend. I married her. If I what? married her, I cannot go on to be feel betrayed by her. I married her. What? No, we didn't. We not listen. We talking about the betrayal part. Part. Okay, fair. She felt betrayed before the marriage, right? She felt yeah. betrayed. Well, she well, betrayed yeah, she felt betrayed because wait, wait, wait. She, she, she felt betrayed fair. because he sold her. He sold her. He sold her a promise that he wasn't able to keep. What was the promise? He sold her a promise that he was going to be committed to her, and she was the only one. In what? In a relationship, man. Okay, he betrayed her, but then she married him. Now what? Okay, yeah. yeah. Now, now that he just burnt her out. We're all in not working. The, the nigga didn't work. He sat there and kept telling her, "This going work. This going work. This going work." Yeah. Work. work. All her money. All of her wow. money. She her lost money. the house. She had to go well, to she her lost family. the house that she was in. Her family the lost. Family her family had to buy the house back, back. Like, because the family had to buy it back. They didn't want to deal with her because she refused to leave him because it was like he's just sure. using you, using but you, using up your money. But what he promised, did he not deliver? No, he didn't. She did was done with it by that time. She had ran up all of her money. He had to go to outsources to try to make that make that work for himself after she ran out of money. Okay, at that point, she was done with it. She divorced him. She was done. She, she was she like, whatever. She ended up at the bottom of a lake. And next thing you know, but, he but I'm, but I'm saying, there's like there's like ways to do things, right? So like if I had a dream and me and my husband were doing bad, I wouldn't expect my husband to go sell drugs and sell his soul just so to fund my dream and i kind of feel like he put everything on taraji to make the dream happen where yeah she was supposed that, that part that part that's not that that's not what I'm a cool husband with. does trust me this is going to work that was his promise this battery is going to be the next greatest thing since sliced bread we're going to be millionaires one day he said that that was his promise I'm gonna Look, make nobody. Them. Nobody's I'm arguing. Going. Nobody's arguing you on, on that I, point. I, we agree I, with you. I'm saying that he didn't deliver. How did we? He not we listen. We agree on the point where 
We agree on no, the point. No, you said how is he a trash dude? Because you keep saying, Sweeney, I'm going to tell you how he didn't deliver. I'm going to get you right where you, because you keep saying it. You say, well, he did it. He didn't deliver. He didn't. Because he said, we are going to make millions from that. She didn't make millions from that because they ended up divorcing. He gave he her, her, he her money back. back that she spent oh, for she years. She million dollars on him. She, she cut her a check, though. She had spent a lot of money. She, she spent, spent it all. She spent 10 million. She spent, I think she she even added it up. It was only like one point something million dollars that she that's spent. A lot of, that's a lot of goddamn money. Okay. So, somebody. So even when you even if I go off of your argument, he said we were gonna make millions. He still delivered because he came and did what for her? Gave her millions. He didn't even he have gave her money back. She didn't, didn't make millions. She got the money that she made back. That ain't no fair trade. That's the fucking money that I just invested. I ain't getting nothing it. back from that. He didn't save no promise because it, it, I'm not married to you. So I'm not making the thousands. I'm sitting shit. there and getting back what I invested in you and you going to pay me my money back. No, I want my money back with interest. Like a loan shark. No, Give me but she, but she, 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 10 million. But she quit. She quit during the progress, so she can't get. The, she can't reap the benefit of, of the progress. Whenever she quit, she bowed out. She's supposed to be cooperative. She's supposed to be. She's supposed to allow her husband to use her. She's supposed to cooperate in a fashion where she become a help me, a supportive asset to him in a relationship, in any fashion, in any a aspect of his life, in any way she can. But I wasn't even referring to that. I agree with you on that, Sweeney. The thing that I didn't agree with it, it was the infidelity part and the issue. I think if you're going to be married to a woman, if you're going to make promises on any level, then you need to start showing that in your actions, whether it's emotionally, financially, your production, physically, sexually, all of that. You I mean you're going to go sleep with another woman? You got a chance of getting her pregnant, you know, uh, catching something and then bringing that back to the household, then what? Well, that's fair, but you got to understand that the promise was made after, like he made the promise after. Well, you focus on one promise, on one aspect, and that was that was the, that was the investment in the, in the, in the prototype. What what I'm saying is, you're ignoring the fact that after she he did cheat on her, most normal people would not stay with the person that cheated on them. She decided to marry him. He promised her one thing. He pr promised her a few things. One of which was the battery is going to be the thing that makes uh, makes our family rich. He delivered on that. He never cheated on her. That wasn't her claim. She didn't say, "Oh, not, listen." I think, I think we, I think we're saying the same thing. We just picking two promises that wasn't one was kept and one was broken, and we only oh, acknowledge. I, that's why I acknowledge the, prom the promise of the prototype. But I'm just saying that that ain't the only thing that a woman was a woman. In the woman in this situation, that wasn't the only thing that she was counting on between him and her in the relationship. We, she was counting on many other things that he didn't deliver on. But is that what he promised? Did he promise? Yes, her? you said it. Yeah, I'm going to deliver. Just because, listen, just because we don't verbally say that, hey, like I promise X, Y, Z, A, B, C, D, don't mean that our actions aren't, aren't communicating. Your, your actions you communicate something. You got to understand how women receive, how they that's receive things. Our actions can be communicating that, hey, look, I'm going to, I'm going to be doing all these things, and this is what I'm going to deliver on. But then I promise this. But that don't mean that you're not, you're not promise. showing. That. Go ahead, go ahead, because I don't want to keep Because you keep saying, you keep jumping over the fact that his promise to her was, I'm going to make this battery work. That was his promise. That was his promise. I acknowledge that. I thought okay. I even I even went, I, so I even, I, I'm the one know. who said that she cut. Okay, Sweeney, uh, Sweeney, you know, what is it that you're trying to get him to understand? I'm trying to get him to understand. He keeps trying to bring up the cheating part. The cheating happened before the marriage. She forgave him, decided to marry him. So he was no longer infidelity in the marriage. He didn't commit infidelity in the marriage. One thing that he, the thing that he promised her was this battery is going to work. Every time she blew a gasket about something that he did, he kept saying, I'm going to make this battery work. Just trust me. Trust me. I'm going to make the battery work. That was his whole entire life go. It was his life's work. I'm going to make this battery work. He delivered. She just didn't stay in long enough to see the, to, and matter of fact, she didn't stay in long enough to reap the benefits of it. And he still came in and gave her $10 million. She didn't give him 10 million. He gave her 10 million. I, I acknowledge that I acknowledge everything that played up after the point that they said I do at the altar and, and forward. I'm with you on that. Me personally, you know, the way I see things, I look at everything collectively as, as a whole. I've been I've been with my wife for 12 years. We only been married for a little bit under 10 years. But everything that happened before our marriage counts. It, it plays on it. Those are memories. This stuff, some of the stuff can be traumatic and shape how you behave in a relationship moving forward, especially when it comes to trust issues. And if she cheated or if I've cheated 
when we were just girlfriend and boyfriend and I happened to have to go do, I have to have, happen to have to go work on a, on a business project with another female, there are going to be some concerns that might rise in her that was traumatic, a traumatic from the experience that we had before we was married. Yeah, I haven't cheated during marriage, but if I cheated before that, you got to understand how that could also play on that. But I'm, I'm not saying I'm not disagreeing you or debunking anything. I'm with you on that. But I'm just saying that I think he I think he was a loser personally, in my opinion. I think he was a loser for just cheating in the beginning. But I, I do want to bring it back to the topic and unless somebody else want to comment on that. Yeah, I think because I was going to bring it right back around to I think the bottom line is, is that she just felt like she didn't get what she deserved after years of supporting him so hard and even though she did give up in the last moments because she just was so burnt out at that last moment i think it more so upset her because to turn around and see somebody else reap the benefits of then it's the same heifer that you cheated on me with hell no i want all that money and interest i'm not you know so i think that uh -huh. yeah, her mistake to walk away from the marriage and listen to her sisters too because she was listening to her sisters oh we don't like him no just leave him just leave him instead of just you know listening to herself and she did give him support the, the shorty that was talking earlier on the video talking about some her car her car her car she was getting on my nerve because just because you let somebody your partner drive your car does not mean you support him in those ways and in his endeavors and the things that he likes do you know his comedy jokes do you run through his skits with them? Do you practice it with them? Are you doing some of the skits with them? I've seen girlfriends of some of these comedians get in the skits with their guys and now they're comedians too when they weren't even comedians, but now they enjoy it because that's what their husbands do. That's showing support. I'm a singer. My husband knows all of my songs. He's the number one one at every show and every concert that I'm singing at, singing the words and singing the background. That is supporting. Listening to me, going up and showing up at sessions and things like that. That's support to somebody not just letting them hold your car because you're going to do that anyway if y'all partners if y'all partners and y'all live in the same house he got to go to the store and use the car like that ain't something that's support that's something that's tangible that if that car break down you take that car away from it what else are you going to give that man besides that car to support him so just because you allowed him to use your car in that instance for all of his skits that doesn't mean that you supported him with the work that he was putting in because you probably thought it was foolish silly stupid a waste uh -huh. of his time uh you ain't making no money from it and then as soon as it popped off for him then that's when you want to come out the shadows and now you want to go and do a, a, a interview on tasha k she made me sick you're gonna go and do an interview on tasha k the nosiest woman alive OK, because now you mad because you're not reaping the benefits of something somebody else had sown for themselves because you yeah. don't so into that that image that they were trying to create for themselves. So you missed out. That's too damn bad. And to and be you honest, know, girl, being on somewhere else, girl, for that shit break down because she keeps talking about that damn call, call, call. <laughs> that call going to break down on her ass because she keeps talking about that damn call. If she she could have used that platform, like you said, to actually, if she had receipts and if she was supporting him in that way, she could have said that too, but she didn't. All she left it to say was about this vehicle. So that can be led to assumption for everybody that clearly that's the only support that you show. Because if you really supported him, she could have listed, like you said, mm -hmm. I done ran scripts with him. I was, you know, there at his shows at the comedy club, whatever, whatever it was, but she did not. She it's the so same supportive. conversation. It's the same conversation with men when they say financially support a woman. Oh, I financially support you. I go to work every single day, so I shouldn't have to come home and clean and cook and take care of the kids. No, nigga, your job starts when you get home, too. You got two jobs, okay? You what? provide for this home, you provide mm -hmm. for this family, and you also take care of the duties that go on in this house. It ain't yes, a real suit. That's not support just because you're going to work and paying for something. If you lose that job, then what's about to happen here? We all about to be homeless in a second. That's what it looks like to me. I'm just Boy, saying. You funny tonight. You a singer and a comedian. <laughs> Listen, that, that 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 got me boiled in my blood because she just kept saying that, and I just hate that because I'm like such a supportive person. I support other artists on my station. Like that is my main thing. That's how you show support to somebody, not just something that's like physical or, or or something that's tangible that'll break or go away or never be seen again and you have to buy something new with that you know that's not something that you could give to somebody and they're going to remember if i showed up as something for somebody and they asked me to show up at a show for them and i showed up there and i was on time they're going to remember that 
That was support. They're not going to remember when I let them use my car back in 2013 because they had to make a store run. Like, they're going to forget that. That's not something that's rememberable, you know? So that's all I'm saying, y'all. I'm sorry. She boiled my blood with that one, honey. She did. Let me get smooth and uh, in country in there. Go ahead, smooth. <laughs> nah, man. Everybody made some uh, <laughs> some valid points here. I certainly agree that... Um, that support to me, like, okay, you talk about a car, right? The car, the car, the car, the car, the car, the car, right? But damn, you could have at least bought him a zone car. Like, why it still got to be your car at the end of the day? It's still your car. All you got to say is like, okay, my car, my car, my car. But you ain't even buy it for him. He still got to give it back to you at the end of the day. So that's that right there is crazy. Um. Y'all yeah, mentioned some good things. Like, I didn't see any pictures of her at any shows. I didn't see any pictures of her cooking a meal. I didn't see any pictures of her at doing anything supportive. Not a back rub, not a nothing. You didn't even buy it. What did you actually buy him? You let him use your car. I don't even see nothing you got for him. I didn't see uh, no pictures of y'all on holidays. You're doing nothing. You have nothing to show that you actually supported this man. The one thing that you did allow him to use, you probably took back in the end anyway. So that's that to me is trash. She obviously doesn't know what support looks like. And Marcus made a good point. I think that she probably did throw it in his face. Just her sentiment, just how she was delivering that message. I would totally imagine her just like really throwing that back in his face. Like, yeah, damn, you need my car again. Damn, you lazy bum. Blah, blah. I could see it. I could see her just behaving like that. Um, now, Casey also made a, an excellent point. Her doing all of this, we don't know how she got to that point, right? For one, she shouldn't be supporting you. I feel like an idiot waiting for support from a woman. That's ludicrous as far as financial, as far as needing her material things, right? That's that's outrageous. You're supposed to be providing, regardless of what, right? All of us on this panel, we all do this or whatever else that we do. We still find a way to provide, right? That's our job that's one of our primary functions as a man is to provide and when you start to allow a woman to provide for you to me it's ludicrous i could never ever ever see myself behaving like that so to me I, I have to question how she got like that was she always like that or did she get frustrated and like damn dog what you doing you know man we still got to eat like we, we're trying to live here i'm just pursuing you but can't you do this too and it's tough to that and sometimes you got to be all but no matter what, you got to make sure there's food and whatever it is to do, that has to be part of it. That has to be first. Whatever you do should be producing money at the time. Even if you're working up to greatness, that's that's cool. But what are y'all doing now? Right. What are you building towards your future? What if it doesn't work? Because for 95 percent of us, it will never work. That's the problem. Most people try to do this. Everybody tries to take some type of business venture for the most part, whether it's investing. A lot of people feel like they can do real estate. A lot of people feel like they could be comedians or ball players or whatever. And we usually fail miserably. Almost all of us fail. So that can't be our only plan. We can't put all of our eggs in that basket. We have to do something to put food on the table while that's happening. I can't see it any other way. So, yeah, uh, Bruiser, I'll say uh, <laughs> he was a loser in that fashion just because you're supposed to be providing. You're not taking care of your business as a man. You're supposed to make sure she's safe and secure in every way, regardless of what you got going on. I'll leave it there. And to touch on that, that woman in the video, I mean, I, I can't take a woman seriously who lends out her Prius occasionally for video production and cause of the support. You know, from her examples, it seems like all her support came from providing a car. That's probably behind in car notes. And the car notes probably being financed using the previous man's child support payments. Who knows? I mean, the woman sounded real ratchet and class. What do y'all call it? Not classy or whatever? Classless? It's just Yeah, you could kind of you could kind of tell by the nails. I think if she was a suit, I think she wasn't a suitable wife. And if she was a suitable wife, she would have made that a requirement and the relationship would have probably been much stronger, but she probably felt that she wasn't anyways. And the only thing that she can give a man at the moment was some gas money and some tires. So 
that speaks to that. I, I ain't gonna hold you. I'm gonna let somebody else get the get the mic. That was the Mr. Let Go special. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess you could say that. <laughs> if we can make the argument that um kind of tie it all in together, the whole discussion that Taraji and, and Akabony was supportive of her man, then we can actually make the same argument that this girl was also supportive of uh Desi financially. We can't say that one was supportive and the other one wasn't because it's all about the we we all pretty much put it as far as finances. She mentioned the car, but how what how much else did she probably support or pay for it during this period of time or while he was trying to figure out his uh trying to chase his dream? You know, he was already driving a car. So if we can make that argument, you saying how much more support could she could have given? No, I I'm think this, no. What I'm saying is, is that what else did she also support him in? Because I can make the argument that if he's already driving a car, that he's probably also she's probably also spending paying the bills, um, taking care of a lot of things that she wouldn't necessarily have to take care of. Had he probably been doing something other than trying to do his comedy. That's why I made that's why I made the point I made, Sweeney, talking about, you know, like what else was she doing and how long were they together and if they had kids and was he just only focusing on comedy for 10 years of their relationship or was he, you know, providing for in within the relationship as well? That's that was my questions too. I'm just being I'm being devil's advocate on it because I don't actually believe either one of them were supportive of their men. But I'm just making that argument that if we can say that Taraji P was supportive, then we can also make the same argument that this woman was also supportive financially if we're going to use finances as a mode of support because we don't like but to bring my argument in as the reason why i don't believe that she was supportive is because of the it's my car so i know she probably wasn't very supportive of his drink she probably was down talking it or telling him hey look you still spending time on that stupid dream you need to go and get your ass go get a go get a real job or something like that the same way that in the movie acrimony she wasn't supportive of his battery dream. She was telling him, get your ass up. The whole reason why she married him was because she wanted him to be a um an executive or something like that, because that's what he got his degree in. And she was like, Stop working on that stupid battery. That ain't gonna make that ain't gonna pay the bills around here. I need you to go do something else. And he was and he was hell bent on making sure that he made he realized his battery dream. The same way that Desi was probably trying to realize his comedy dream. And the thing is, is that. The problem is, is that when both of them bowed out and walked away, the guy wound up being successful. So, but Sweeney, but Sweeney, you can't just relinquish your husband duties to work on it. That's that's what everybody's saying. Like you can't just bow out and say, "I'll see you in ten years, whenever this pop." Like you can't, you can't what? marry somebody. It was twenty. Like if if I, all the all the talent, it was twenty years, Cookie. If I have a talent, which I have many talents that I do outside of go to work and take care of my children and be a wife and like be a daughter and everything else, I can't say, all right, y'all. I can't look at my husband and say, thank you for marrying me. Here's the kids. I and I'm about to go to the dance studio and do this and do that and go teach and do that. Like, I can't, I can't do that until I make millions and then be like, oh, I'll be ready to pick it up and be a wife after I pop hey, for 20 okay. years. The only thing about that is here's the problem with the whole thing. And I'm going to try to tie it all in together again. Taraji P. Henson should have never married him to begin with because she was marrying him for all the wrong reasons. The thing is, is that he was going to do that battery thing regardless whether she was there or not. That was I know, but, but you just said that she wasn't a supportive wife, though. So I'm taking it. They got married. They got married. So how was she not supportive? Regardless if she shouldn't have married him or not, because said that because they're the same, Desi's girl and her, right. they 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 shouldn't have got married. But you're saying because, because even she, though she married him, she still wasn't supportive if she took no, care of him for 20 years? Because she didn't support his dream. She was trashing his dream the entire time. I don't no, know. No, that was towards the end, Sweeney. That she was trashed, towards the end. She, she wasn't it. trashing his dream while she put the family house up. And was paying all the bills and going to oh, work. That, oh, there's some time God. lapses in that oh, movie. You gotta understand that the only like if you paid attention to, I don't want to get into it, but no, she did not support his dream 
as the battery creator. She wanted him to stop working on that battery and go do something else. That was the whole reason why she married him was because she thought he was going to go into another career. Oh, no, you're wrong, Sweeney. She was I, she was working and paying all the bills while he was trying to go to school what? and all that stuff. Man. No, he's already he had already graduated. Well, he had already graduated school. The only reason why she even supported him going to school was because she wanted him to get a job at a firm. It was never about that battery. That was his life's work. She never supported his dream. She just wanted him. She was like, oh, I support you going to school as long as you go out and get this Let job. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this, Winnie. Did you feel like this man had ample enough time to do what he had to do and she made it easy for him to do I it? Think, I think he would have taken the same amount of time regardless. I'm, took, I'm not. That's not what I'm asking. I'm asking you. If he no, what, if did he, he have? You know how you know how some you know how some relationship work, right? dynamics. A woman wants you to go ahead and hey, look, I need you to produce, produce right now, right now. Okay. You don't think that he had favor in this relationship, being able to to take as much time as he wanted when he needed to go work on that thing he was doing, and she was there paying the bills and holding him down. Then again, then that we can't say that the other girl wasn't supportive then. Well, we can't, we can't, we can't say that given the, the details we have. We have limited details. The movie Acrimony, we was able to see both sides. Well, he ain't I, able to say, see. I would say that I would say that if that's the case, then it took him about the amount of time it would take for something like that to pop off. You can argue that. You can argue that that it, was. It, take, it takes. It probably would take him twenty years to perfect the battery that's going to change the world. It would have took him longer because he didn't have the funds to do or, it. Or that too. And, and it would have took him way longer than twenty years. He probably would have never gotten it done because he did not have the funds to do it. She well, had the funds to support him in his dream to make that come true. Without her funds, he would have still been in that basement today in that movie. Trying to fix that battery. I got I got a question for the ladies. How long would you support somebody's dream before you say, look, that's enough. Either get a job or I'm leaving. My husband would never not work and work on and, and do that. I feel like there's a there's a way that you could still be in your role as a husband and still work on your I'll never get both. First of all, you know Reese. My husband is the most intelligent, smartest hardworking, most ambitious. I've seen him be a college student, play baseball and have a co-op and a freaking internship. Like he will, he's, that's, I married right. I, I choose people that I, I chose my husband that, and I choose friends that have um, the, the same vision and think about life and their responsibilities the same, right? Like, I mean, he supported me doing other things outside of working when we were trying to like establish ourselves. So I feel like you don't you don't have to completely like it. I, I won't I won't even say that. I won't say that you don't have to completely lock in on a certain dream because ever different dreams and different passions require different things. But I will say, like Sweeney said, if you're gonna get married to somebody, if you're gonna get married to somebody. At least they didn't have children. That's one good thing that they didn't have to, to scrape up. Um, but I don't think you can put a time on working on a dream because some things can take a lifetime. They say most millionaires aren't millionaires and billionaires till they're mid 40s. So if you marry somebody that's building a Amazon or a Microsoft or whatever, it just depends on you know what how established they are. Are they are they funded completely? Do they have investors? Are you guys staying afloat from the wife? Are you staying afloat from the family or from savings? Like it can be different we're, circumstances. We're all in agreement that it takes time. I think the better yeah. question is for the men as as fathers to daughters, would you bless off on your your daughter to marry a man who's not showing that he can lead and provide for a family? That's the better question. If you if you knew that that's a good question. If y'all knew that. Your husband's dream would take 20 years, but at the end of that 20 years, and he was completely locked in, he couldn't do nothing else. There was billions of dollars on the other end of that. Would you support it? But see, that but that, that means they got the knowledge ahead. Or you have to have faith. I'm I'm but I mean, yeah, if they had to obviously if they if they had the knowledge yeah. ahead of time. That's unrealistic, Sweeney. Well, you know uh, it. Actually, 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 it's not because everybody said that he was gonna make it. Everybody knew he was gonna make it. Fellas, fellas, here's a here's a better, here's an even better cool question. Double down. Fellas, how many on how many of y'all on the fan uh, on this panel 
is okay with getting married, marrying a woman, knowing you can't lead and provide. I don't think anybody would say that they would be okay. With that. And that's the Trev point, or whoever whoever made the point okay. saying he shouldn't even, he shouldn't even got married to uh married a woman, or she shouldn't even marry him, knowing that he ain't he ain't he not even on pace or even. I said that. Yeah. Like I think Cookie was trying to provide it at any moment. So that that's where the the it's different. He didn't. It's, he had a skill set that he was working on, and he had a dream he was working on. So him going to school, he could have transitioned and at any time became a CEO or or you know worked in a C suite management level position because he went and got the the information for it. I think I would still bless bless them off on that marriage. I'm not gonna lie. I, I, he I probably, was a felon. Huh? He would have. He, he, that's a different, and that's a difference between. That's the difference it. between his job. He would have. He could have got a job any moment. He was hell bent on making that battery work. He was. That's, a, he was a felon. That. He couldn't get a job. Remember? Yeah. Go ahead, oh, yeah, you're right. He was a felon. You're right. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. How was that out until after they were married? Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah, the felony. That's right. He couldn't get it. I'm saying like there's so many gaps. And we didn't even need in the fact that in the fact that he was a felon and that that wasn't even necessary to make the right judgment. The judgment could have been made. The judgment on whether he would have been a suitable husband could have been made without even knowing he was a felon and couldn't get a job. If he no, hid the not, felony from it, then yeah, I, I couldn't he pass hit, off on it. He hit, he hit the felony from it. I think he was a felon before they got married. Because what else could you? Yeah, but even though he, even if yeah, he, that's a raw deal. That's what. So, so I'm saying. So we can say that. Job and he didn't get. I think he did try to get a job, and he didn't get the job because he was a felon. I think that might have been Cookie. Am I right? Exactly. So I'm not finna. Yeah, he exactly he didn't happened. get the job because he was a felon. So he finally had to tell her after they were married that, <laughs> hey, can I tell you something real quick? Well, I don't I don't advocate or promote any man, um, sleeping on the couch and and, and letting a woman. I think Trey said that letting but a woman yeah. take hold it down yeah. and take okay. care of the bills and take. Uh -huh. I'm gonna give a real quick synopsis. They dated. Yeah, that was dated that battery. He gave. He gave tons. He of had to battery. go to the battery though. It, he went to some Fortune 500 companies with his degree and his his high GPA, and three people turned him down because he was a felon. So the battery was actually his last option. He was going to be working yeah, somewhere as an engineer and do the battery on the side. This is all after they got married, but then he went and she was like, How did three different companies tell you no? You were the top of the class, blah blah blah. And he sat on the couch, like, as Well, when I was 16, blah 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 blah. And she was like, Wait a minute, so I paid for the rest of your college for you to tell me in the end that you couldn't get no job, my boy. Like, come on, he was a loser. Yeah, that's, that's I, I dirty. Agree with, I, I agree with Bruce on that. He was That's dirty. You got to tell her and give her that I, option. If she I still want to be with you after that, tell that you, you can't, you can't just tell people that she supported bullshit. something else she did. They did they did actually mortgage the house so he can build a prototype to it better. Yeah, they did a lot. I think he had a miscalculation. She, she paid for the rest of his college and he couldn't even get a job after he finished the degree. He miscalculated, I mean, I he he miscalculated his, his career. Because if you know you got if you know you got a felon on your record, especially in today's society, being in IT, working in engineer, at some point you're gonna need security plus, A plus, uh, network plus, or even a security clearance, depending on the demographics of where you're working at. And if you got a felony, that's a miscalculation. Because I don't give a damn if you get a doctor's degree in engineering. If you got a felony, you can't get a clearance. So it's a miscalculation. And, and, and even career. after still learning that information, she did not she did not leave him. So she I guess not. that she was very supportive and she that she really did love him for 20 years that she supported really? that dream. So whether or not she left in the end, yeah, she did feel entitled at the end because it's like, damn, I went through all of that. And then the last moment when I decided to change my mind and be like, nah, I can't do this no more. Now you want to be rich. And then you go give it to the heifer that you you slept on me with. And then, oh, no, nah, she was upset. All right. I think they're not saying that the issue is him being a felon. The issue is him hiding the felony, right? Because he didn't disclose. So I know people are like you gonna let him uh say, like, bro, it it ain't about him being a felon. It's him 
pretending not to be. So he let her continue to pay for school, knowing that this was going to be an issue at some point when they, they could have probably spent that time trying to get his expungement or something. It ain't with, it's not bash felons night. Nobody doing that. That that's not what they doing. I just want to be clear. About that. He knew that it was going to be an issue that he couldn't get a job. I thought he probably believed he was going to be able to get a job too. It's just, you know, it's kind of fucked up when you go after a job and then you find out that that's the thing that get in your way. Yeah. I mean, all in all, he did yeah. say he was under age and that he thought that it wouldn't be show up on his record. I'm going to say that he did because I remember the movie. I don't even remember. Really like so it was a juvenile offense. Yeah. Uh, but I only remember it because I watched it with my sisters and I was like, this movie is making me grind my teeth. But anyway, um, they were both wrong, I think. Uh Cookie or, sorry, are we talking about the or the or the actual topic? Because I know we done. No, no, no. I was talking about the movie. I was about to move towards the topic. Okay. Though. Um, can you put it back on the scrolly thing? I can't. Man, see. He, about, he about to change the topic. You tripping? I'm gonna do it real quick, real quick. It's real quick. Oh, what does the support look like in a relationship? Well, I feel like support. <clears throat> depending on what kind of relationship it is, because I believe in all types of relationships, not just romantic. So um, support in a relationship should be like customized um, to what the person needs. Oh, my bad, y'all. I'm sorry. Hold on. Voila, magic. And okay, so yeah, it should be customized to what the person needs. Um, I'm on Sundays usually and people say I talk about myself a lot, but I had two parents, so I like to talk about them. Um, small things and big things. And my dad had, my, my dad owned a, um, a construction company. My mom didn't work. But um, when he would go out sometimes, or she'd bring us out there to to do some lightweight. No, nah, it wasn't lightweight. It was some. We would mix some in. But we would be out there. She we go. She bring food sometimes. Just when my dad was out working on the car, she would just sit down and talk to him. Things like that because you know my parents weren't regular people. My dad retired from the military and really didn't. He was an entrepreneur. So. Uh, he he, we I really didn't hey, see him go to, talking to me, talking about me. Yeah, he, I didn't really just see my dad go to work every day, you know. So I, actually, everybody I went to high school with thought my dad was a drug dealer. I was like, that's racist. But anyway, um, so I guess support would be customized to whatever it is that that person needs. Because when my mother started singing, my bad dad bought and built her a studio. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's it's just give and take um, and just believing in what the other person is doing, not just monetarily or like with stuff, but actually showing them that, hey, you can do this. And, you know, even giving them the little stepping ladder and helping them with those phases. And I feel like the girl with the whole car thing, I'm like, ma'am, it's a car and it's not even a nice car. It's a Prius. I saw the video and it, and the way she was saying it just, it, yeah, it screamed, um, illiterate. It screamed. She's angry. Um, it screamed. She's jealous that he, um, made it after, I guess he was with her. I don't know. Um, there was just so many things wrong with that video and, it, and it's everything that's wrong with, uh, our community as far as black women being labeled <clears throat> these kinds of people, if that makes sense. It, it, it grinds my gears because these are the kind of women that go viral on the internet. And then it makes um, um, all of us seem like we, we that's, that's our thought process. So that's all I had to say about that. Do you uh, think she had described this? Oh, I'm sorry, Jeff. No, go ahead, Mark. I'm saying, do you think she would describe this story as a man using her until he got on and then leaving her? Absolutely. 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 She wants she wanted him. She's definitely one of them. And and I didn't want to be the black woman bashing the, the other black woman, but she since she brought it up, absolutely. 
she how many though? How many of those scenarios? Anybody mad in the that? comments? They probably <laughs> one of them too. So whatever, you know. But is it bashing though? Just the truth. I don't know. It is. Yeah. They be in the comments tearing me apart on Sunday, and I just be laughing like y'all don't know me. I do I need to do? I need to come truth. on Sundays and, and be the be the equalizer over there. I be telling the truth. You might not want me to come on Sunday. Sundays, I be giving heat to everybody over there. Yeah, you be trolling. I'll be worried about you, Dor. <laughs> what what type of woman y'all think? Do you think quiet? Do you think necessarily that go lay down? Miss my dog, y'all. Lay down. Do you think that um someone that will even go on Tasha K is a is a quality person? Bro, you are not Ooh, a shots fire. <laughs> That was the first thing I was like, Tasha K. Are we still messing with this lady that's like a billion dollars in debt and owes so many celebrities money because all she does is lie? Like, you I mean, can't Wendy Williams. That's what I call her. I'm no, she, she got money, y'all, y'all, y'all don't, y'all don't know. She got money. They found the money that she yeah. was supposed to pay Cardi B. She was hiding. Really? She, so cool. she, 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 yeah, she, bigger, she, she, she been building bigger. for years. Not bad. Yeah, she's getting yeah. bigger. <laughs> she's definitely bigger. Don't get it twisted. But she's, I think she's way worse than Wendy Williams ever could be, though. Yeah, Wendy was nosy, but this lady is just pure, she's just messy. like, you don't care. She's just she's nasty. so messy. I got to get to the chat shot so we get to this main uh, chat. Marcus, you can ask whatever question yeah. you want to ask on this next topic. Y'all, we got them questions, man. Uncle Pops, Fat Dollar says these athletes and rappers are the absolute worst example of black folks. Why do y'all value these people's opinions? General Trish, two dollars says, testing one, two, testing one, two, super chat, check. Mm -hmm. In the basement, Fat Dollar says, at voice, support me by giving me my credit whenever you use the word heifer. <laughs> Kenna P, Fat Dollar says, even the panel, loving the energy, country cookie, send me a heart. You want you to do that little heart thing you do? There you go. Uh, Kenna P, two dollars says, voice, why you have a recipe on your tit tit? A, re a recipe is the Fendi print. I got on Fendi. Stop playing with me. Stop playing with me. He's talking about above. He's talking you about the caramel cake. Too much of tattoo. Oh, oh my tattoos. Oh, that's what he was talking about? Oh, um. It's I see right. three eggs, two sugars. <laughs> uh, Kenneth P again, two dollars. Let's go, Casey. Tell him why you got the good, good. Oh, now nah, ain't she married? Kenneth P, five dollars says, uh, Bruiser, I was a felon. Now I have a financial license. Licenses and 28 years of tech. I had a vision, so was a woman to exclude me. I don't know. Oh. Do you have a wife? She might have excluded you. <laughs> Get a fee, two dollars says cookie. You just came from a day party. It was kind of a party, it was a track meet. Uh, Kenneth P again, two dollars says brother Trev using that tea on that beard. Uh, tea just for the skin, and uh, king on top, but sure, man, is for the beard. And a fee. Well, I want to thank everybody that has contributed to the platform thus far. Uh, let's go ahead and click someone hit that like button. Also, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Roof, you there. For my life. Okay. All right, we're gonna see if we can get some uh some, some troubleshooting over there. I'm gonna try to see if we can send it your way. <laughs> we're gonna have a conference call at oh, I'm good now, I think. No. Nah. I don't know what you got going on. It's like you uh in a subway or something. I don't know. It's <sighs> And it's gonna take a that's a that's a special project right there. We might have to escalate that ticket on up, man. That's gonna be a complicated one. All right, here we go, y'all. Let's get into this main topic. A woman's loyalty is tested when her man has nothing. A man's loyalty is tested when he has everything. Came across this topic, man. Uh, as you guys know, chance. Uh, Chicago's very young. Uh, him and his wife are splitting. Uh, we've seen a lot of celebrities that are splitting, but this is one that some people are surprised and some people are not surprised. But let me play the footage that everybody is speculating may have been the cause. This is just observation. This hasn't been stated or said, but let's just go ahead and play this clip.
And this is the, the statement that they both posted on their pages. We can't see that, bro. You can't see it? Nah. <laughs> Ain't nobody see it? I can see it. I can and read it. After a period of separation, the two of us have arrived at this, the decision to part ways. We came to this decision amicably, amicably and with gratitude for the time we spent together. God has blessed us with two beautiful daughters who will continue, who we will continue to raise together. We kindly ask for privacy and respect as we navigate this transition. Thank you, Chance and Kirsten. So that brings me to this question. A woman's loyalty is tested when her man has nothing. A man's loyalty is tested when he has everything. Wants to go ahead and tackle this one first, man. What are you guys' thoughts about uh, seeing that video? Would you say that that's something that's grounds for a divorce? Or do you think it's just a conversation? This is just hypothetically, right? Because we don't know. I'm going to go start with you first, Smooth. And then um, let's mm. get into the topic of one vote <laughs> being tested. I hope, I hope, I hope that that's not really what it was. Because, I mean, I mean, come on. Come on. He was. All right. So I'm from the Caribbean culture. That's like what they call whining, right? And it. It appears to be sexual. I'm not saying it's appropriate for a married man, but um, I, I don't think that it's as deep. It looked like he was at Carnival or whatever. You know what I mean? And I understand, but like, come on. It's, it's not that deep. I hope that wasn't it. I hope it was like some some other deeper issues in that because I, I don't think that was like the greatest deal. It's not something that a married man should be doing, but to throw away your family because of it, you know, that's a different story. And especially when you have children, it's like, come on, man, what are we doing? Like, do you really want to just break up a home just because of some something like that? Um, men. And then there's a lot of people who believe that men don't show their loyalty through fidelity. Right. That's that's another topic, I guess, for another day. But. That right there, it's not like she called him in something or, you know, he got somebody else pregnant or something. I, I really don't see that as a big deal to me. That doesn't look like enough for grounds for divorce as a man. I'll say that like that. I don't think it was that deep. Now, when you do make it to the top or you become extremely successful, um, I'd say that you're going to be tested. Right. There's going to be many many more women who are interested in you just because of the look just because of uh the opportunities you have and what they feel like they can get out of you whether it be uh, attention fellows whether it be monetary what right or would just like to be around celebrities they just like that energy that they, so it is what it is you, you're gonna have so you be tested of course right because people who didn't care about they like well yeah we did have a different opinion for alicia because she's a woman i'm sorry yeah it's very different and i'll stand on that it's very different it's very different that's just what it is and yeah y'all can take it how you want it it's not ex i'm not expecting my wife to do anything like that that's that's outrageous no and i, I do feel differently about it absolutely absolutely y'all could y'all could hate it if you want to but yeah i, I will absolutely i will stand absolutely on stand on that that it's hypocrite <laughs> Is somebody echoing me? Yeah, it's def it's different. Yeah, it's def oh, <laughs> Roof that shit on she got caught on over there. I'm bad, <laughs> and judgmental, just like yeah. I said. Yeah. You don't know big deal when the guy does it, but when the woman does it, oh no. Oh, gotcha. Absolutely correct. And I'm standing on it. Absolutely correct. It, it is nah, I'll double stand it on it with you. Pun intended. <laughs> oh, we, we was just, we hey, look, look, look y'all could y'all could take it how you want. It's very different. No, that is not. Yeah, yeah, no. It would be grounds for divorce if a woman did it. Sorry, yeah, because yeah, that's what it is. It's not expected oh, that a wife would behave like that. <laughs> Sweetie, you beg to differ. Come on, you man. You beg to differ. We can't sit over here and have these type of double standards, bro. We was just yes, we can. Talk. Well, we guess what, bro? Back. Guess you know what you know what though, Sweeney. Life is full of double standards. Men and women, there are plenty of double standards. Men and women are not the same. That so is what that is. That's the reason why she divorced him. We're gonna criticize her for doing it. No, she can well, do what she want to do if that's how she feel about it. I just, I'm wrong, just giving bro? my opinion. I think it's not a big deal. And no, not for, no. I don't think it's grounds for divorce. No, I don't think so. But she could do what she want to do. I hope it was for something. 
do I think it was? The timing of it is very that peculiar, right? That could have been, I think that could have been the straw that broke the camel's back. Uh, because you know what is the, the thing that's worse about it than anything else is the embarrassment. Maybe she feels very embarrassed, right? Her family could be like, oh my God, look at your husband. Look, look, that, that type of thing. Some women can't take that. And if that's how she felt, then, you know, go ahead and do it. Do but think, I, I don't know. Do, do you I think, think what? Do you think it would have been grounds for divorce for what Kiki, uh, Kiki Palmer danced with Usher? Yes, because I told you there's a double standard here. Yes, and yes. No matter how you rephrase it, my answer is not going to change, and I'm going to stand on it. Ten toes, too. So, yes, it's very different. Like it or not, hate it or love it, it's very different. It's not, man. <laughs> there's no yes, it is. Not. Yes, it is. No, and yes, not. it is. <laughs> That man putting his dick to that woman's ass is not is no different than her putting that ass. So, so you feel like that was ground? So, Sweeney, you feel like that was grounds for divorce? I'm not, That's I'm what not saying. saying I'm not saying it is grounds for divorce, but all I'm saying is if if, if if she was to say I'm divorcing Chance the Rapper for dancing on out there dirty whining with this woman, the same mm -hmm. way that. Daryl, whatever the hell his name was, was like, hey, look, I can't fuck with this chick. She out here dirty whining with Usher. I would say, hey, look, both of them justified. If that's your argument that if one is just is grounds for leaving somebody, then the other one also has to be grounds for leaving somebody. Like, they're both doing the exact same thing. Sweeney, do you believe in double standards? No. Yeah. I believe. I that's believe. No, no, no. That's, that's the issue. No, the no isn't the answer. It's the answer in your question. I believe that we have different standards for one another. It's not actually a double standard. So the same way that women have certain standards for men and men have standards for women, it's not really a double standard. We just have different standards. But if a woman said her standard is, I don't want a man to dance out there on women, then I wouldn't see that and be like, oh, well, men can do it and you can't. No, that's her standard. Like, I wouldn't see, look at that and be like, no, nah, man, how you gonna leave that man over dancing with some women? And then we, and then turn around and say, hey, Hey, bro, you justified for leaving your girl for out for out there dirty whining with men. I don't think that's a that's a. But like, for you don't got to say it, man. Trevor said it then. What? <laughs> hey, hey, look, hey, look, this is the reason why. <laughs> the reason why we all. Yeah. But that's exactly Marcus. Would you would you would you explain why it's okay, or why it's different? There's no explaining it. <laughs> nah, he about to get it in. Go ahead. <laughs> so, there's this thing called uh, how men and women show appreciation and love to, e to each other. Using your eloquent point earlier, Sweeney, in regards to how men experience and have different standards in which they preside on, we would not expect a woman whining on a man, say like a stripper, to have the same effect as a man grinding his dick in front of your woman's face. We all agree that those are two different, very different things. One is an entrance. The other is an exit. You can leave any place you want, but you don't want to let any, anybody in. You say what? <laughs> hey, sometimes, look, a broken clock be right twice a day. That's one of the things they ask be right about. You want to know why y'all tripping? You want to know why y'all tripping? Because the reality is, is that women aren't rocking with it. And they the ones that set the standard. We can't set that standard. If they say, I'm going to leave you because you do X, Y, Z, there ain't shit you can do about it. You can't sit there and try to convince that woman, hey, you need to change your standards on that. She's going to say, I'm not rocking with it. And the women at large, if you look at all the women on this planet, they all saying the same thing. Nah, bro, you ain't about to be out there dirty whining on no bitch and sit there and think I'm just going to sit there and accept it. <laughs> They telling you. So if the women say they're not rocking they, with it, they're not gonna leave for that. They if they say they're gonna leave, I believe that's big. Oh no, I I, I damn sure wouldn't bro. leave my husband for that. I think that's that's stupid. I do agree with that for Trev. I would not leave. I don't think that, that she left her. I don't think she left Chance. That's, that's not the reason why they don't But happen. I do agree with Sweeney. Like, I don't I don't think my husband would leave me for that either. I would do that being a celebrity, being on like that's just crazy being at Carnival. I would as a wife, I would do that. But at the same time, my husband wouldn't divorce me over that. So, so be a Casey, I'm going to ask you a question. I know you're going to tell the truth. 
You know, I know your okay. husband real well. Yeah. If, if we went to a club, all of us, yeah. and yeah. a dancer danced on him, right? Yeah. Would you have as much of a problem as a man walking up to you and putting his thing near your face and dancing and gyrating? Would I have a problem? Like my what? response to both? Yeah, yeah. Which one do you think? Wait, would be wait no, that doesn't make that doesn't make sense, Marcus. Which, because if a stripper is dancing oh, on my, my husband, he's obviously paid for a lot of dance or receiving it. You saying a dude just walked past me and right, a, a male <laughs> stripper, a, a male stripper walking up to you and grinding <laughs> on you and doing all that. Which one is worse? <laughs> Which one is worse? Yeah, we both in the strip club. Well, I was about to yeah. say, so, not so in the strip club though, like okay, 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 yeah, you in the strip club with your man, and a, and a male stripper comes and starts. <laughs> it's a I wouldn't, co I wouldn't, co be, I wouldn't be in a male strip club with her. Well, yeah, I was about to <laughs> exactly. Say that. exactly. Hey, that is my point. hey, hey, you need to say no. Oh, you're, oh, you're you point point your point. No, get it. Because that's a little sus. Because my husband ain't hanging out in no male. Strip okay, club, okay. but, but y'all could go to a female strip club, right? Yeah, but yeah. I probably all agree with you. It's on me too. Jeez. It's a double I'm standard. Double standard, exactly, exactly. No, but it's exactly. not. But, but I but you have Sweeney, to dance, like, dance on I'm me not, too. But you can't. Re, Sweeney's trying to explain the standard depending on the relationship. Like it wouldn't be. Oh yeah, my husband could do it, and I'm, or he can't do it, and I'm gonna divorce him. Versus like the opposite. I I see what Sweeney's saying. Like I don't. It would. It I. It depends on the couple, but it should. If the whole Kiki Palmer situation and the Chance the Rapper situation, like if Kiki's doing that in her relationship, especially as a performer, as an entertainer, her. Her, what y'all saying? Oh, the dude should have divorced. It'll be okay if he divorced her for that. I and I agree with Sweeney. He would not divorce her for that. Like being in her position, in her role, what she does, and same as Alicia Keys. Like Alicia, that's what Alicia Keys been doing for twenty years. Like why would our why would Swiss Beats get mad at her for it? He was cheering her on. Like he's okay with that. So some people are okay with their husbands and wives like being flirtatious or in the midst of a performance like doing certain things like that's not it's not a it's not a double standard for a lot of couples is what i'm saying that's all i was pointing out is that it's not necessarily do women technically have different standards than us are women less likely to do it than men are fair i grant that argument what I'm saying is, is that if she was to say the reason why I divorced him was because he was out there gyrating with a woman, we can't look at her and say, hey, that's fucked up, man. You know that's what men do. And we just sat there and looked at the Daryl dude. I can't remember the nigga name. It's like, hey, man, your girl out there, she got to dance with Usher? Hell no. Nah, let that hoe go. Like, we can't say tell her different and then tell him different. My standards will be the same. Like, yes, hey, we can. If that's what yes, you want to can. Do, if that's how you no, want to go, you can't. You can't do that. Yes, you can. It's because it's you, not. Y'all just it's, it's accepted exactly the fact that there's a double it, standard. Rather, but I do understand why you're saying it because it's always been, and I think we're just looking at society, just period, how we were raised up. It's not acceptable for young women to be promiscuous. It's not acceptable for young women to be flirtatious or in a way um, inappropriate with men, especially if you are with a, a partner, you have a husband. It wouldn't be considered the fact for you to go out and be twerking on men or at any parties and doing any of that. Now, a Usher concert, first of all, nigga, if Usher come up to you and start singing, you definitely standing there and getting sang to by Usher. It's Usher. Come on now. He is a singer. That is a part of his job. It's a part of his job to come up and to perform, to penalize somebody for getting a performance, say a song sang to them by a singer. Wait, 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 time out. Wait, voice. Did you just say me? Did you just say me? not get up and let Usher serenade you, bro. Yeah, he Pause. First off, pause. And that's that's a big no. No diddy. No diddy. Yeah, no diddy. Yeah, no. Not only will we have a problem with it, you will have a problem with it too. 
If you exactly. sat there and watched Usher serenade exactly. your man, you will go home with a whole lot of issues, questions, comments, and concerns. That's that's all not the same. The same. Everybody's relationship. So if, if B, if B, okay, if Kelly Rowland, if Reese, me and Reese went to a concert and Kelly Rowland came over and she wanted to serenade Reese, baby, I'm going to stand there and I'm going to say, you better enjoy this. This is Kelly Rowland. That's just me. I would not have a problem with it. I would enjoy watching it. I'd be like, damn, a lot of dudes want to be inspired right would you, now. Would you, like, let, would, you let, would you let him go on the stage with uh, Janet Jackson? Yeah, I would. Did you see the performance before we? Before yeah, we, I have. I saw, have. Oh, when she was rough. <laughs> yes. I love it when she got on them on the plank and it went. It's, inter, it's entertainment. It's entertainment. It's She's entertainment. an entertainer. You think? I do. I think that Janet Jackson want my man. No, she don't want my man. I'm the only one who want my man. She don't want. Oh, him. You're terrible. I think I'm like I think it's a different like <laughs> like me. Me and my husband been together for 16 years. We've been married for 11. Uh, 17 years been married for 11. So it's like, I don't know. I My husband comes home every night. His phone's me. right there. He, I mean, I, I the simple things that like all this little stuff, this little stuff don't. It, it doesn't matter. Would, would you let August Alcina sing the Reese on, on stage? No. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Hold, hold on. I, think it's different, though. I got a question though. Would your husband Come let on now. your husband let Marcus, Usher give you a lap dance? August likes men. Stop. Would your husband let Usher give you a lap dance on stage? Usher didn't give Kiki Palmer I'll a lap Usher, dance. No, take, take Kiki Palmer. Like if I wanted to mention Usher, I think like, he he probably would. Cap. I got to stick up for my brother. Hell no. Call Reese right now. Call Reese He'll be right like, now. I'll call him. I'm, I'm calling. Hey, call him up right now. Hey, hey call Marcus, Reese right now. now. Pull up the receipt. All right, I'm, I'm going to say no. I never met him, but I've <laughs> like, I think Ruth wanted to say something. Did you say Trev? Go ahead, Ruth. I, said, I, think, I think it's different because if it's a celebrity, then it's kind of like they're, you already kind of accept them. But if it's a random girl that's like dancing on her, like things can happen from there. So, yes, I did say y'all are hypocrites and judgmental. Thank you so much, Trev, for proving my point today because it wasn't even 20 seconds before you contradicted yourself and you're glad to have that double standard. But um, you guys give me off what Marcus people... Stop. Huh? Marcus, do you got him on the phone? Hold on, hold on. Call my husband because he's on the road right now. Casey, you want me to ask yeah. him this question or you want me to ask him quietly? You, you got, got him? him? Okay. All right. So, Reese, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. You you live right now. Can y'all hear him? Reese, yeah, say something. I, I hear a little bit so. Yeah, I'm here. Okay. If uh, Usher wanted to bring Casey up on stage and and do like a strip tease on her and grind on her, would you accept that? No. Thank you. <laughs> you said. Thank you. I <laughs> thank you. <laughs> He said, no, hell no. Thank you. Girl. Thank you. Thank they girl. They too scared. Oh, my God. Like, just go home. Don't go to the concert. Hey, no. I can see the trap in real market right now. I can see the argument, bro. Y'all won. I can see it. I love you, bro. Marcus <laughs> added strip. He added strip. Don't do that. He definitely <laughs> added some hot sauce. He added Come on, country. Like, we're not going to play. We did not. That was not a part of the question. Okay. Ask the same question. We said the Alicia Keys situation. If Janet Jackson would have brought Reese up on stage and did a, a little strip tease dance or whatever, would you be tripping about that? That's my point. That was my whole point. I can see, bro. I can see the argument. All right. Hey, look. I can see. Hey, that shit. <laughs> uh, go ahead, Cookie. Oh, well, um, going back to the question, I first of all, I, I know double standards exist. Don't get them. Whether, whether they're uh, acknowledged or not is on the person. But double standards do exist. I grew up in a double standard household. There was female, I have brothers that did, they did certain stuff. We did certain stuff. Sometimes the, the roles got crossed because my dad just wanted us to be able to take care of ourselves. But as far as the man's loyalty being tested, 
I don't. I hate to be a son, and I don't want to be this female. Now, I, does anybody know when that video was taken? Was that taken during the separation? That that video. No, that was. Ago. That was like that been about a year ago. Oh, yeah. but does when anybody you, know how long have they been separated? Two. I don't know how long they've been separated. I didn't know they were separated, but apparently they've been separated for a little bit. Okay, so my point is, um, I don't think that was the straw that broke the camel's back. And I hate to be this person, but I kind of was looking at the whole situation and like her, her aesthetic changed. It wasn't just Chance's money that changed during their relationship. Her aesthetic changed a lot, if you know what I mean. I don't like to shame people. What you mean in a good way or a bad way? In a bad way. Like, she got chunky. I thought I saw some yeah. pictures of down when I looked at the page. Today. No, man. Huh? Not like she was. I, I haven't been following her, so I don't know. How she, I'm not saying it's 100% the reason, but if you're having issues with fidelity... And if you got this million dollar person where well, you could probably maybe hire a nanny and you there's things that he can do for you for you to look a certain type of way. And in you wonder why they be, at, they be bad ones. I I've I've been to the club before. They be yeah. And the ones and then you mm. you and you wonder why he got a girl bent over at the beach that's got the waist of a Barbie. Like it's just like for me, I don't victim blame. I'm not saying she a victim either. But it just seems like to me that there's something deeper than him hunching um, a chick going on. You know what I mean? So that's that's what I'm going to say. But as far as women's loyalty being tested when her man has nothing, she I, I'm assuming she was loyal to Chance when, before he got um Famous, but she also looked a certain way when she was before chance. When she before she could eat whatever she wanted, and so that go both ways for me. Yeah, everybody got to keep it up. So that's how I feel about it. If you can eat noodles with him when he ain't got nothing in that apartment, noodles, he'll be happy with that. That shows that man loyalty right there that you don't really care about finances or going out to top expensive restaurants. If he don't have it at that time, you're fine with that. Being in the struggle with them. That's like being there from the beginning. I think men like that when they don't have anything particularly or not, don't say anything, but they don't have as much as they would like to have. And you stick around for that time being for them and you help them like develop what they like and what they need for themselves. I think they appreciate that, you know, yeah. women show their loyalty when the man, you know, I think the man shows their loyalty once they become up there because they have all these options now because women are going to come rushing their way. You know, when they have a lot of things, that's what attracts the women, the cars, the nice clothes, all that stuff. He's handsome, you know, so he's going to have options at that point. And now his eye is wandering because he's like, oh, I got all these options. I ain't got to stick with you, you know, but, so but, I think I mean, some- Chance been Chance for a long time now. We're not we're it ain't like Chance blew up. And then immediately left his gal. That's not what happened. Mm-mm. Like, I want to be realistic with it. You know what I mean? They were together. They got two kids. He married her immediately. He moved her in a high... Like, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a huge Chance the Rapper fan. So, and I follow them on Instagram. So, my thing about it is, as you... Like I said, I feel like when they had nothing, they had nothing. Like, but... It's the same my dad used to say, like, don't let some don't let somebody else's money change you. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. just because chance the one with the money don't mean that she didn't change either. That's all I'm trying to say. And I don't think that video has anything to do with them breaking up. I just think, you know, maybe they grew I mean, apart. I, mean, I think somebody associated those two events together because that 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 video came out, I think, shortly after they actually got married. And they were talking about it, but I don't know. Been I would, doing stuff like that. That ain't new, then. But I would, I, would, I would think that shit. Honestly, they broke up after he fell off. Cause Chance ain't been 
relevant in damn near three years now. Chance ain't been chancing for a minute. Ever since he dropped that album talking about his wife, he ain't <laughs> he ain't been hitting on nothing. He must have said no to Diddy. <laughs> that part. Yeah, man, it's certainly it's certainly not. I'm with Trevor. It's certainly not the way a husband is to behave. But this is an artist of the of the entertainment industry. You know, scenes like this tip is typical, especially in this genre of music. You know, it tends to have provocative and trashy scenes. You know, they come off as if the people in the video promote fornication or whole culture. But I haven't seen any other genres of music promote, you know, this kind of behavior. I mean, y'all have correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> But the way our people, you know, the way our people do it, man, it's just crazy, which is unfortunate. So when you when you marry somebody in the industry, you have to be mindful of some of the scenes and some of the scripts, some of these actors and role uh, takes take up as roles, you know, and that the artists. I, I mean, I don't. I, I get y'all painting all these scenarios and asking about Usher and all this stuff. It's just. <laughs> But I believe I believe they they've been married for five years, so I think she accepted that. I think she accepted. I think they've been married long enough for him her to be able to accept him being in scenes like this. But unfortunately, a, a lot of couples aren't able to stay married. You know, I don't believe this scene was a deal breaker. Like I think Courtney said that. I don't even. I, I, would, I would argue. I don't even think this was consistent behavior. Yeah. Like this hasn't. We don't see Diddy like, chance the rapper. Yeah, you don't. I don't. I don't think that. I think there's something else that's yeah. not disclosed to the public. And if we sit long enough, we'll be able to. The details will come out. Well, but I'll, loyalty. But 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 if if I wanted to speak to loyalty, the thing about loyalty. Yes, loyalty is tested in many ways, um, but it depends on the situation. You know, when a man has nothing, I. I don't expect women these days to be loyal to him. I'm gonna just speak a hundred. When he ain't got shit, I don't expect women to be loyal. To him. Not, not at least not in these days. Maybe back in back in the day, but not today. You know. But if they do, that's great. It's rare to find. And if we find her, you know, when we establish when we establish loyalty with her, whenever we got everything, and then if we fall, if let's say we fall off and we lose it all. Yeah, I, I believe I most definitely believe women will be tested to be able to endure, you know, the setbacks, you know, of him losing it all and try to stay loyal and stay grounded. But when a man has it all, most definitely agree with that, that there's going to be some options that's going to come available for him. He's going to have to resist some temptation, you know, and remain faithful um, and stay true to his values and commitment. But in these days, loyalty is rare. It's very rare. And all I can say to the fellas is to stay, you know, stay grounded in the word and shield yourself from influences outside of your household. Well, I was just reading. Uh, hold, on, hold on, hold on. Let me pull these pictures up real quick. So this is her. Yeah, she, she, yeah. That's the old her, right? Now, nah, these are the most recent pictures. Oh, well, she still. She and still like this is in her stories. Oh, so she she did get back in shape. Well, like he said, it must be something else. So they, I, they, I, I want to answer the question too. I ain't get a chance. To, a woman's loyalty is so. I said this before when we was talking about um, prerequisites for getting relationships. When I was saying, when I when I, I when I thought I was going to the league, if I didn't get a girlfriend before I made it to the NBA, then I would have stayed single the, the entire rest of the time. Because it would have been no way for me to tell that she was loyal to me or if she was just trying to be around to get a bag. And that's not something I'm willing to deal with. Um, it, it, I think one of the, the points when they was talking about. Um, yeah, I, no, I'm, I'm going to leave it there. I, yeah, I, I just I think that that statement is 100 percent true. And. Even if I was in a situation where I didn't want to be with the girl that I was with since I was young, I think the loyalty would have made me stay in that relationship regardless because she was there from the beginning is the kind of way I view it. So you so, think you owe her? Yeah, 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 yeah. 
I, w- I would have stayed in that relationship. Even if you were miserable? Even if I was miserable, I would have. So you make the sacrifice? I would have. Now, I wouldn't be up here talking like, yeah, I'm happy and stuff. I'd just be quietly in the relationship, <laughs> but I would have stayed in the relationship. What do you think? Uh, maybe you th- what kind of, can you give me a scenario, an example of of how how can you paint a picture of a scenario of a relationship where you was with her from the beginning and then all of a sudden you don't want to be with her but you stayed in like what what could actually contribute to making you no longer want to be in a relationship with her is it like weight so yeah so um access to to types of women right so when you say you get a girlfriend in a small community right and she probably the best looking girl in that community and you vibe with her. And then you go to another level, like say you're at college, you expose to a whole lot more people. And then there are people you may be way more attracted to that have even better personalities and y'all, y'all hit it off. I still would not leave based off of trying to maintain the loyalty to the first person. And then as you progress through, I'm, you was talking about this before with stages of life and uh, different, different spots. It, it's some really incredible women out here. It's some extremely, I'm talking about, you look at them, you'd be like, what in the, like, you should be paid to look like this. And some of them be excellent people. You know what I'm saying? So the, the people you get presented with start to really like test your, your test everything. And even still, if she would have got fat and I wasn't attracted to her anymore, I still would have stayed in that relationship in spite of all those things. Cause that's kind of the way I would have viewed that loyalty. I completely understand what you're saying. And um, um I'm the same way. If I level up, um, I'm gonna stay with mine. In fact, I mean, I'm gonna do what most most of these guys are probably not doing. And I think that we I, I wholeheartedly believe every man should be leveling his woman up too. If you leveling up, your woman should be coming with you and cause she she's supporting you the whole way. She got your back. She holding you down. She having your kids. She's watching your dirty draws and shit. So if you level up, level up her. If you're gonna level up your image, level up your finance, everything about you, she, she should be on the same accord. And I think I want to say DC Young Fly tried to do that, but I think he went about it the wrong way with the cosmetic surgery. Instead of just putting her in in a gym with a uh uh, fitness trainer, which I think he could have afforded, and I think they did have the time to do it. And I think uh, just trying to trying to skip and trying to be fast. You know, we live in a society where we got a microwave microwave culture of mentality. If everybody want to get things going quick, and nobody want to get get out there and do the works. So my condolences goes out to his wife. But I I know I can I can understand how that you know. What? That seemed like it. He took a. They took a risk on it, and it killed. And, and I think it ended up having to do something with her, um, being unalived. She died during surgery. I think she was getting a BBL or, or a, a, a breast job during surgery. And it and it's kind of unfair to that person. After, it, she, after, she died after surgery. Yeah, it was after complications. Complications from the surgery, right? Mm-hmm. So a heart a heart condition or something, right? I'm not. I'm not. It sure. was a, It was a full mommy makeover. So whatever happened, mm-hmm. it just was too much for a body. A full mommy body. makeover mm-hmm. is like the arms, breast, stomach, butt, 360 lipo. It's, it's like everything. They fix your whole body. So she was getting a whole shebang. Yeah, it was a mommy that's makeover. A lot of, that's a lot everything. of everything. A lot of blood loss at one time, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Most people who can't afford it, they will go at different occasions through their life. But I yeah, think it's even more dangerous to go try to get it all done in one one sit. Mm-hmm. Well, what, I feel like <laughs> loyalty. I'm sorry, Bruce. What example do you have of a man that starts leveling up and this woman doesn't level up with him? Naturally, it's only so many. Le- like when you, it's well, it's it's layers to life and people. It, because like, what example do we have that actually proves that that's how a lot of it, that most of, that's how most of these men are operating? Because every time we see a dude get rich, his woman is just looks just as good as he does. Like I've haven't seen every time. I've seen I've seen so many times where brothers are leveling up, getting exactly. a bag, and a woman looking like shit. They carrying about they carrying around 200, 200 pounds of weight on them. And these dudes is all all of their eyes are looking at to the new options that they got available instead of Ooh. using that, huh? Who? I mean, you don't know them. But I'm saying these are people that that, that oh, I've been exposed. Yeah. To. Uh, Bruce, but are, but you asked me a question. I'm just telling. You, I mean, okay. no, 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 Darwin. I got an example. Most most niggas in the hood say 
uh, I can tell who your first baby mama is. You ever heard that saying? Like the first baby mama be the one when you was Ro, Ro, Rojo, you know what I'm talking about, don't you? I know exactly what you're talking about. We right? get that, but listen, that's, I, that's listen, an example. I'll give you an example, but I can't also, bro. So I, I would be remiss if I didn't if I didn't say that I know, you know what I'm saying? Whenever a certain whenever you get to a certain stage in your life, or if you get in a relationship too early or before you get to your potential or to the level that you're trying to seek after and get at. And you'll see that the type of caliber of women are going to be different. And I also will, for an example, I, I think I don't think this is close to what I was uh, experienced in person, but it's somewhat paint a picture for you. Let's take Steph Curry and his wife. Steph Curry leveled up on a way where he used his God-given talent and shooting ability to be the best shooter in the, in the world, in history. And I think that uh, a lot of the light that was shined on him created a shadow over her. And she wasn't able to be brought up to his level. And it kind of probably made her feel like, you know what I'm saying? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm just Steph Curry's wife, but I'm not. What's her name? Aisha Curry. I think she wanted to be Aisha Curry instead of Steph Curry's wife. You know, so, so, yeah. some, there's a lot of occasions like that versus, you know, the, the other uh, so, side to that would be LeBron James and Savannah. Savannah just staying in her place and playing her roles as, as a wife. But, so how didn't Steph Curry level her up though? I think I think he I think he helped her get um on the TV. I think she got like a cooking channel or some shit like that. Or, or, yeah, or he, he helped her with that. I think he part. helped her. I think he helped her get her name out there, and, and he did. He, I mean, I, me personally, I believe he was leveling her up. I think she just I think she just had an unrealistic expectation of being on the same level of fame as him when she didn't do nearly as much work as him. You know what I'm saying? By okay. far, it was it was complete contrast. But I, I but I, but I, but I can't sit here and be ignorant to the fact that, you know, some in some occasions in relationships, there is a disparity between the growth, depending on who's who's actually going after the bag and actually leveling up, versus somebody just sitting there and watching your dirty draws. You know what I'm saying? I actually know men that have. I mean, it hasn't happened to me. Let me disclaimer. <laughs> I actually know men that use or date women or certain types of women just to gain access to better looking women, to get access to more better looking women and get in these rooms with these different looking women. So I get what Bruce is talking about. There's, there's loyalty is not something that you can buy and it's not decided by money or having nothing or having it all unless you're that kind of a person i think it's like a two-sided coin either you have a loyal individual or you don't and i think that if you have a loyal individual nothing can really sway that money or having nothing can sway that if you're a horrible person you know, or a non-loyal person, I won't just say horrible, then you're just not, you're, you're a non-loyal person. So there's just, I feel like there's two kind of people in the world. There's loyal people and there's non-loyal people. And it's just as simple as that. And you just have to be remiss and, and really figure out who it is that you have on your team. At, I kind of, I kind of feel like we just made an argument it completely debunks, you know, what everybody just agreed to on this topic. I mean, as you can see, a woman, a woman, when a man has it all, these women are walking away. So I would say even the women are tested when a man has everything. Like, can That's you just I be said, down? Don't, can you don't, just... so, my dad used to tell me, don't let somebody, people let the other people's money change them. Right. Like, like, I think, I think it's a, I think it's a test for women to be able to stay in a place in a woman's place. And just and play your role, and when a man has got the and when a man has got the steering wheel and driving them to success, it's hard. I think t these days, specifically with modern women who feel like they want to be equal to a man, it's hard for them to just play the traditional or play the role and just sit back and let the man, you know, take the steering wheel and drive drive the family to success. And on the flip side, you see a lot of women being loyal to these niggas that ain't worth shit. 
These niggas are so, sitting on the couch eating eating rent, cool ranch Doritos and, and, and shit like that and, and dipping them in French onion dip. I wouldn't even dip it in French onion dip. Why the fuck is you dipping it in French onion dip? What, what's up with queso dip, bro? But anyways, man. So, speaking of dip and fat. Darwin, hold on. Real quick. I just got to ask about this one point real quick because I, I, I got a little confused. No, because Darwin, he said that, um, you know, when it, women have a problem when the dude is in the driver's seat, right, and uh, staying in a woman's place. Right. And let him do his thing. But it kind of is contrary to what you were saying a little earlier, where you're saying that you wouldn't go anywhere without leveling up the woman. So I with, know, level, I kinda, with leveling, though, comes obeying and, and obedience. You can't. It, you it, can't it is. It is a contradiction because and that's why I stated I said, I think we just debunked what we actually believe in with this topic if we if we look at the scenarios with the Tom Brady and the, and the Giselle Bunch and the and the and the, and the Steph Curry and the, uh and a lot of these women who are walking out of the lives of these multi-million multi-billionaires um who actually you know created generational wealth and not willing to be able to just stand by and just play your role like the Savannah James but me yeah, but she, that, she I was chilling I don't yeah. know I don't know there's a whole lot of life left behind after basketball for them and most of the time, we notice that these women divorce their husbands after they retire. It's not before the retirement. So we don't know what Savannah James might do once he's sitting at home all day. Man, the creator well, well, of Amazon well, Amazon that's got true, that's true, Sweeney. That is Tom true. Brady got divorced because he didn't want to retire. But that's, uh, he was a he was an outlier out of. But most of the time, these women divorce their men after the retirement. Jeff Bezos didn't retire. Wasn't wasn't that on social media? He can't retire. Social media. He left his ass. Wasn't there a woman from the WNBA player? A WNBA player today said most women and men leave their um, professional basketball player athletes once they retire. She was actually that was on social media today. Didn't Janet Jackson 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 marry a dude, and after a certain amount of uh, years in the premarital agreement? She lived out the premarital agreement and got her hundred mil or some shit like that. That's why I Did say, see that on social media. You got a loyal in it or you don't. Y'all just have to figure out who. No, I'm saying like I think I think it said uh if you, in the premarital agreement if you if you stay with me for at least five years and get and you give me give two me kids, kid. yeah. you get a hundred million. And then right after the five year mark, she got the two kids and she and she immediately divorced. So Taraji P Henson ass should have sat her ass down to let that man make that fucking battery and shut the fuck up. Yeah, she, well, yeah, I, all of us believe that because they married. They should have just, they should have honored their marriage. Yeah, she should have been hustling and flow to Raji. Damn. And bad. they actually, <laughs> like Marcus said, they actually could have fixed it at the end, to be honest. Like, it, once everything started falling into place, once she realized her sisters talked her into doom and gloom, she really, they could have fixed it, but at that point, I guess he was like, he wanted the other think, chick I to think be to the time it was already, he was already with on that. Man. Yeah, we get he yeah, by that time, he was already with the other woman. By the time they realized yeah, she, came home with, she came home with the check and the, and the uh, deed to the mama's house, and they were like, oh, girl, I can't believe, yeah, we, we, we screwed the pooch on that one. That's when she showed up to his house in the lingerie, and the other girl came out like, oh, this is my fiance. So like yeah, they had already. But he wasn't married yet, so he still could have fixed it. Oh uh, yeah, let's get Ruth in there. Let's go to Rojo. Go ahead, Ruth. Um yeah, um Darren, sometimes um the woman is not two hundred pounds. Like a man could just get a promotion at a regular job. He can go from regular worker to manager. The wrong man, he'll just get a big head. He starts barking at everybody. He just think he's better than everybody. I'm not talking about a lot every man. I'm talking about men with bad character. So a lot of times, like, the woman just get tired of him just, he just think he running the show and he's really not doing as, you know, she just get tired of his ego. She gets tired of his, the way he talking to her and all of that. That's why I say be careful how you talk to women because you might think, you're like, she, she going to do whatever I say. She going to do whatever I say until that day she doesn't. And you kind of set yourself up. So, yeah, I, I do believe that loyalty is um, is, a, is a big thing and it is it's, it's it's about basically it's about basically um you just you know just playing your role i get that as a woman and basically 
I forgot what I was gonna say. I'm sorry. <laughs> Long night. <laughs> I just I, I just don't understand why women are divorcing men. Me personally, I don't even understand why a woman would divorce a man when she's supposed to be cooperative and submissive. I think any I think most of the divorces, if any divorces, should be uh majority of men divorcing women for not being cooperative and submissive. But it's but a lot of times men are selfish though, during during um they they are selfish and uh, I, I agree it's a good amount of them just divorcing off of social media and just trying to get the money tr using the legal system to their benefit just being silly women but a, a lot of so times, let me ask you this Ru. when they're there what for a long time they're they're really they're they stay with the nba player but they're sick of all the stuff he's been doing it seemed so, like a past until it's not anymore so so with, so with most of the divorces that are initiated by okay the divorces that are initiated by men for the most part. What are the reasons why men are these men are divorcing women? We 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 I think we can I think we can all agree on what why women are doing it. Why do you think men men are filing for divorce? The majority, what is the majority? She's probably a nightmare. She's probably Who? a nightmare. Because she's a nightmare? Yeah, she probably has a horrible attitude, doesn't support him, and she's just not she's she's probably a detriment to him. But a lot of men don't. I don't know the I don't know the stats on it, but I would assume it probably be just probably probably her probably her busting it open for another man probably. <laughs> Sweeney know the stats, so I'm just waiting on him no, to come men, in and be like, no. Nope. If, if a man doesn't find out she if, if it's not public, a lot of men take the woman back after cheating. So. Huh? Yeah, that's true. Where do you get that information from? Because I ain't never read that. I, that's what y'all be talking about. Yeah, if a, a man doesn't. See, was off the top of your head. Doesn't no, the, a man does not automatically divorce his wife for cheating. Can y'all agree with that? A lot of men don't normally. Do no, that. I don't. I don't. I don't agree with that. I think there is some stats that ask why do men divorce. I don't know. I think infidelity is at the top of the list, just like for women. Man, every man I know run into the court if he gets. Yeah. A lot of yeah. Most, his yeah. Wife, she, every man I've every man I have came in contact with has has divorced his wife for infidelity. Was it the leave. was it the only time that she cheated? Is it the first time or is it like a continuous? Um, a lot of times it's the first time. Yeah, we view it so differently. And when I was talking about yeah. staying in a relationship miserable, I was talking about stuff like she gained weight. I'm not attracted to her no more. Stuff like that. Not she. Fucked another nigga like it's just over. Like, hey, I wouldn't say. <laughs> I don't even know how. I don't even know how a man can forgive a woman for like. Are you forgiving her for? The, I think I don't think a man is forgiving her for allowing another man to come into her. I think I think the stats would be different uh, across races. I do because I, I don't even think a woman is really asking for forgiveness. I think black men versus other races are going to be different. Uh, so. They I don't think I don't think women are asking Wait, men. Stashed, hey, forgive me for cheating. I think women women are asking men, forgive me for allowing me to get oh. caught or allowing allowing you to get to see that I I was cheating. I think that's what a forgiveness. I don't think they mean it. I don't think they genu I don't think a woman genuinely means, hey, forgive me for uh, laying down and submitting to another man. No, and what what is they in, in the words in, in the words of the real M White? It's it slipped out. A couple times during during the intercourse, forgive me for that. It, like you didn't you you didn't you didn't mean to not do it. You wanted to do it. Yeah, if you're it asking for forgiveness for getting caught, not forget it, forgiveness for the 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 act. I don't know women yeah, that forgive for cheating. Honestly, the they... reasons why uh, women get divorced. Thirty six percent said they grew apart. Thirty percent said arguments. Twenty five percent said lack of uh, respect. 24% of, wait, these numbers seem kind of weird, but. Yeah, because you passed 100 already. Right. Well, I'm just going off of the numbers that they provided. And they do it 1,000%. <laughs> I'm just they going do off of what they said. Boxes, I, I, especially the top five reasons were grew apart arguments, lack of respect, unfaithfulness, and domestic violence in that order. For men, it was, in this order, grew apart arguments, Unfaithfulness, lack of respect, different interests. So, like the number three reason why men divorce was unfaithfulness, and the number three, number four reason why women divorce was unfaithfulness, and then there was some other shit. 
that before that. Yeah, but man, like any man, any man, man for, for, woman, for the same reasons. For cheating is a is a is a sucker. All right, let me get Rojo in there. Go ahead, Rojo. True. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hello? Now we can you get. Hey, uh, um, boys. Real quick, the reason why all those numbers equaled over 100% was because they were able to choose. I'm sorry, I just wanted to explain this real quick. It was because they choose more than one choice. So that's why I said like 26. <laughs> oh, shit. They was able to make more than one choice. Oh, as to the My bad, y'all. I just wanted to explain that because I just read it right here. I was like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Okay, I think we're good now, Rojo. Keep bashing women, man. <laughs> All right, so uh, earlier y'all, or a minute ago, y'all was talking about the Kiki Palmer and the uh, chance comparison or whatever, and double standards. Uh, Voice, you were making a point as far as Kiki or whatever. The difference with her was she was there to enjoy a show, not put on a show. Once Usher started performing for her, because you were saying, you know, uh, of course y'all gonna y'all as men gonna let somebody sing to y'all this, that, and the other. That's that's the difference with men and women. We would allow a woman to sing for us. But we're not going to turn around and sashay like she did and make the show about her. You know what I'm saying? So, Sweeney, that goes to you, too, because you were saying, like, he should be able to, uh, or old, old boy girl should be able to divorce him for the same reason that old boy didn't want Kiki no more. They Chance was there to mutually have a good time at, at Carnival or whatever it's called. You know what I'm saying? He was just there. He ain't performing. He ain't being performed for. He there just to have a good time. I'm sure his wife knew he was going. And there is double standards. Like a girl dancing on a dude is a lot different than that girl. You know, a dude having a girl dance on him is a lot different than your girl dancing on another dude. It's a major difference, Sweeney. If y'all say so. But yeah, that's all Sweetie, I want. You say. just agreed to it after a little while ago. You about to I, I know, retract just, again? <laughs> if y'all say so. Oh yeah, hold on. Say you know, he said it's a difference between a man dancing on a woman and a woman dancing on a man. Are you asking me? Yeah. Anybody? Can anybody explain what the difference you is? About, you talking about that manner that Chance was doing it? Yeah. No. So if the black if the black girl was married. What's the difference on her end versus Chance being married? That that girl that was dancing, she was throwing it at him. She, yeah, he she was catching. She was throwing it at him, so that it's the same level of significance as far as hey, look, hey, that's un, that's un, that's unbecoming of a, a spouse. She was throwing it at him. Man, they got a sound effect already. Hi so everyone, my mic go off. Can y'all hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Can I ask you a question, Bruiser? Who's who's speaking? Oh, my name is Venus. Oh, go ahead, Venus. Why did you say you don't think women should ever divorce men? Why'd you say that? Oh, somebody got triggered. Well, the, I said it in a way that aligns with submission and cooperation. Cooperation. It's just it's a contradiction between submitting to a husband and being cooperative and it just don't sit right with divorcing in these days people are divorcing for um what they call it irre irreconcilable differences if, if i'm not mistaken i don't and i don't and I, I i tend to think it's on a fine i think sweeney said it was sexual immorality but i almost feel like finances is number is finances the number one cause well for divorce. I was reading. Now they didn't say that. They Depending said, on what survey, there are some surveys. Yeah, that yeah. So, say that. so yeah. So yeah. So in that, like, and it, just to get more context, to it, I just don't understand. You know, I feel like as a wife, if you're gonna be submissive and cooperative to a husband, then you should be holding it down. You should be there for him no matter what. And I think that's what so our. Girl, he cheats he, on you. Times. Put his hands on you. He cheats on you. He disrespects yeah. you. Uh, he brings home diseases or children. So according to you, no matter what, right, a woman should just never divorce a man, according to you. Backing yourself into a corner, Bruce. No, no, I, I, that's what I'm saying. I, I personally feel like it's just a contradiction. I, I feel like if you're going to submit to a, a man, then you should be down with him forever. That's a covenant between you, you, your husband, and God. 
and nobody can tear that away. Now, if he's hitting you, then obviously we got to we gotta get some more details on that. Okay, why is he hitting you? Are you out there fucking on a boat or some shit? Whoa, you know whoa. Or you, or, hold on. Oh, I'm passing out. Yeah, I'm whoa. passing hold out. On, hold on real quick. Yeah. Are you out, there, on the, are you out she, there in the streets? What is she doing to cause him to put wait. his filthy... Wait. I'm trying to give you context and you cutting me off, but you can't hear what I'm trying to say. There is no context. So for put why is he putting his hands on you? Okay, so so what okay, so what if he's hitting what if she's hitting him? Then that would be considered a fight. That would be considered domestic. Okay, so that's, that's why I said y'all, so so what y'all like to do is y'all like to start with all of the, the, the ending results, but y'all don't y'all don't talk about the details leading up to the you behavior. did not say her slapping him. You just said, Well, what is she all I'm, I'm the one I'm not the one who enjoying herself. That's what you just said. I'm not yeah, the you one just who walked in. She deserves to be slapped in her face. You sound like you from the 1800s. Hold on, wait, hold on. First of all, you can't put words in my mouth. I never said that. You deserve to be slapped in her face. <laughs> they, those were my words. I'm I, if I wanted to say that, Darwin, you sounding yeah. like Kevin Gates right now, bro. You no, I like know what I'm Gates. saying is we don't know the details leading up to for him to respond with her in a negative manner or in a way that it, it causes him to put a right and a left across her head. You got to give me more details so we can figure out why it is that this woman. The only detail right. is that she put her hands on him first. That would be the only thing to warrant any human being on this earth to put their hands on somebody because it's called self defense. Other than that, what she says to you and you don't like it, it don't give you the right to slap her across her face. Okay, because so who who said anything about who's or because you got home at four fifty nine and you want her to have that meatloaf out the oven at four fifty nine because you get home at five o'clock. Oh, meatloaf. You don't mean to. Have that she deserved to get her ass kicked. That's what you're saying. In cooperance and, and, and obedience, like she's a child to you. She is your partner, not your child. He, did, he didn't say he didn't say that though. He didn't even yeah, I didn't let him get his scenario out first. He and and he that might have been his only scenario. Y'all just gotta let him get it out first. And, and, if he, and now, this, if he this, say something else, this is a prime example why some men it rear back. And slap the hell out of it whenever you go running your mouth off like that. And so, oh, according to you, and that's how they ended up dead <laughs> off of arsenic poisoning because I done put something in that meal that you whoa, ate when you whoa, got whoa, home whoa. at five o'clock after four fifty nine. I took it out the oven. <laughs> All right, time out. We gotta get the, we gotta get this straight. Wait, 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 wait. I, we can't gloss over that. So. All right, oh Darwin. Did you say? Did you? I just got to be off because I was trying to hold it down for you. Did you say that if if a chick um, run her mouth, it's acceptable to do it? Also, he sure did. And this is why I want to stand on that. I said, I said, yes, I he did. Why some men, yeah, rear back and slap the living taste out of their mouth for uh -huh. coming out and barking like a hyena. I could, yeah. I can, I can see why some men would do that. I, I didn't say I would do that, and I didn't say I didn't. No, no. Well, that's that's how everybody probably everybody was thinking. That's why I wanted you to at least clarify it. So. Nobody would get the wrong idea of what you're saying because they just really got the wrong idea about there the other is no idea right idea. He just said the same thing in a different way. First, yeah. it was if a woman, if a husband is putting his hands on his wife, well, we gotta look into why. Then she she raised her voice. Then it was, I can understand why some men would slap a woman. He's saying the same thing. He supports hitting women and a woman should stay there. So let me ask you. I don't, I don't. Can you clean it up? Because by the way, I don't, I don't, I, listen, one thing—that's no, what, what it is. I, I, what, one thing about me, I'm a very go ahead, sweetie. I ain't gonna cut you off. Right. Are we? Are we? Are we? Do we have an understanding that words can lead to actual physical violence? Yeah, and do we understand that physical violence could lead to your woman leaving you? But according to Bruiser, she no, no, should no, no, stay. No, 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 You're taking it too far. You're taking it too far. No, I'm not. I'm taking it exactly where I started. Oh, do we understand? Because I asked a specific question. Do we understand that words can lead to violence? Of course we understand that. All right. Because we did. You know what I mean? Because for example. Do we understand violence can lead to divorce? Do we understand yes, that? Yes. So that was the point. I don't think that goes without saying. Well, so, that was his, his whole point was you should still not leave. I don't think he said that. That's exactly what he said. No, that's not what he said. No, he said, I, I no it is what he said. No, no, he did not say that. He yes, said, he did say it. He did not. He said I would have to ask further questions as to what led up to the violence. And then it was because 
a woman should not leave under any it contradicts submission and cooperation no matter what she should stay that's what he said i said let me give it more context and i started i started detailing the, the list of statistics that cause divorce and i said i can understand our sexual immorality you know that's the word that's the scripture but i said from my understanding and i asked sweeney because he always bring up stats that perhaps maybe the number one cause of divorce is his finances finances and i think i stated before that irreconcilable difference whatever that may be that could be mm -hmm. anything but i was saying basically is saying that submission is unwavering you know when you submit to your husband it, it, okay it, so do you guys hear it no matter what he's yeah going, but you can't you, you can't beat somebody into submission like it's still saying the same thing y'all so I, I, I know you are trying not to hear it he's we saying the same thing like no 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 but something so, like, this is i laughed and joked with it and you know it is what it is but like like domestic violence and all that kind of stuff. Like I don't, I don't play with that. I wasn't raised in that type of household. I'm not around that, and I don't, I don't diminish women or men who may experience that or may have grown up in that. Like we gotta, we gotta be careful and be responsible. You know, people are watching this. This could be their first time watching the show. They don't know that Bruiser, that Darwin, that you, you know, troll sometimes. So. And, you know, people, this could be their first time watching this. So they don't know what to take serious and what not to take serious are like, they're really, it's, it's a whole panel of people up here laughing about domestic violence and women or men leaving marriages because of domestic violence. And, oh, what did they do? If you feel like you got to break somebody down to size, whether it's a man or a woman, you should not be with them. You need to divorce them. You shouldn't have been married to them. The first sign you see of it, you need to remove yourself or y'all need to go get help together. If you don't see a sign of any change, you need to move on with your life and move on to safety because that person may be mentally um, lacking in different ways or are hormonally off. It could be postpartum. If a woman going upside your head, men, that woman or man needs help. That is serious and people end up very hurt um from situations that when people do not take them seriously because they think oh it's going to get better if they're not getting help they'll just get better on their own and that's not something that's just going to get better on its own whether it's your parents let me, let me or whether you're in that situation let me set the record straight first of all i, I appreciate you saying that but i don't need a lecture on, on important. i'm not lecturing you i'm talking to the audience i'm not lecturing you okay all right well all right well i thought you were talking to me but anyways I don't, I'm not promoting or condoning or av advocating for men putting their hands on women. The only thing, my only response to the thing about her talking about being abused or physically abused, I said a lot of times whenever we talk about divorce and the reasons for the women walking away from their marriages, we tend to always focus on the end result. And we never talk about the details leading up to any of the offenses that took place during their situations that could possibly lead to divorce. So I'm saying, you say, oh, he beat me. Okay, why did he hit you? We don't never want to talk about why. Oh, he cheated on me. Why did he cheat on me? He, uh, he, he was bad with finance or he was gambling. Or he, whatever he did, why? You know, what, what caused it to happen? Because in, in a lot of these cases, these women saying that they were hit, you will find out that they were the ones who hit the man first. And the man got tired of this shit and, and snapped back on her and, and knocked the, the fucking tooth to the floor. So then when it came to women sleeping with another man, how come you didn't have the same energy about, well, let's find out why. You were pretty clear on the relationship would be over, right? Well, he was also clear that see, that was... See, the thing was, is... He talk for himself, though. But see, the thing about having sexual intercourse with a man, I didn't need to find out why. Oh, but already, you need to find already, out why somebody knocked the shit out of a woman, though. Yeah, you need to find out because oh, okay. intercourse and, and, and somebody hitting somebody is totally two different scenarios. Yeah. Intercourse is a man is a man coming into your womb and you submitting to him and him dominating you. You're giving him consent. Oh, Fighting is a whole nother different thing. Nobody has consent. There's there's details need to be led up to what triggered it or what 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 where was the aggravation coming from? When you having sex with somebody, that's a form of of submission. You're submitting to another man. Bruce. When a woman right, submits to another man, there's no way that a man can allow this woman back. You just submit it to this man. Back in the days, this is how men married their women. This is this was a form of marriage. 
going into her tent and laying with her was a form of how men would take women up to be their wives. Bruce. So when you go submit to another man, I don't need to know details on that. There ain't, I would, and my, my whole context behind that was forgiving a woman for doing that. I'm saying a woman is not asking for forgiveness for, for allowing a man to dominate her. She wanted that every inch of it. But a man wanted it. Forgiveness. She wanted that. She's, a, she's asking for but forgiveness man, for being, she's heard, asking for forgiveness for being discovered. I heard not you. But the act. question is if you're implying that a woman should not divorce, then he wants forgiveness for abusing her, right? Hold on, say like that. It's still, about, it's still about forgiving someone for violating you, whichever way it went, right? If you're implying that women shouldn't just automatically leave because a man put his hands on her, then he would be looking for forgiveness, right? I, I mean, it depends. On, yeah, if he's asking her forgiveness and then she decided to forgive him, then good. But my whole thing about the abuse or any of the other things that took place that caused the, the, the marriage to fail, regardless, I mean... Or if he cheated or had a baby, morality, whatever. I'm saying that we needed some details behind it. Right, what so... We, I, don't, we don't need details behind why. Um, can I ask a question? I, I think, Darwin, are you saying that... No matter what, cheating is wrong because you think it's deplorable. I've heard you say that before. And you also believe domestic violence is deplorable. And you're trying to find the root issue that caused those things. So maybe we can get those things fixed as part of the discussion without condoning any of the things that occurred. I think it's intentional. And I'm not going to say I'm a, a, a devout Christian or anything, but I do read the word. But I think it's intentional that sexual morality was the only grounds for a divorce. Anything else should be able to be worked through. There should be some type of conversation where you can sit down and try to figure out how to get through it. And that's whenever you start looking at the details of what led up to the offense. Okay, this man is hitting me. Why is he hitting me? Because I fucking, or, or, excuse my language, because I won't cook or I keep coming late or I'm texting Joey down the street or I put my hands on this dude or I'm from Louisiana and I took my menstrual soft and, and put it in the spaghetti and now this dude is, like, you know, you know, it, it, it can be anything. So, but it's not Marcus. anything when she goes and sleeps with another man. You just don't want to hear heard that, Marcus. All right. You, you, you don't want to hear about your underachievements right? in that area. And that's why that you right? to you that, right? you know, that's why you choose not don't to hear about that. Let, let me get this correct. Did you state that there was underachievements? In the man. There's obviously a reason why she had cheated on you because you said there's no reason that I don't need to know the reason to that. Well, why not? Because there's are you, a a, are you saying that a woman is justified to cheat because her man is underachieving? But he's not. He's justified to cheat, and we're supposed to forgive you, is what you no, said. No, no. I'm asking you based on a statement you made previously. Are you justifying the fact that this woman can cheat when her man starts? You're start justifying the fact you can slap her because you don't like the way that she talks. Okay, so now you don't want to answer the question. You kind of did though. No, no, yeah, doing the same thing. Yes, because it's the same no, thing. Made I feel like men and women about, cheat. She for made the a same statement reason. about infidelity. I feel like and men and women cheat. For the exact same infidelity reason. for the man not showing up whenever right, he you said it's an explanation on why you would hit a woman, and that's justifying being violent towards her because you don't like what she says. So if you're not allowing her to justify a reason why she is cheating on you, then why would you allow a justification on why you would slap her across the face because you don't like what she said to you? He said that she all, won't I never cook. Said, I never, I never she won't it. cook or she won't clean. That's not reasons to. I never, I else. never, you, listen, the only thing I said about the, the abuse thing is the details behind why you were getting hit. I didn't say whether it was justified or not. That is a justification when you say, what if no, it she was hit what if it because he's lacking brain justified. cells and any integrity. That's why she getting hit because he wasn't, his daddy didn't teach him to keep his hands off a woman and also didn't choose him to, to pick women correctly and marry a woman that would be submissive. So he, he was basically in a boxing ring in the house every day trying to beat submission into somebody that he doesn't own. But see, that's, now, that's the I, issue. I think, I think when you say beat submission into somebody, you're creating a narrative of how he got his woman to submit and not taking into account that maybe he married her and she was showing other qualities of femininity that justify him to see that she was able to submit rather than putting his hands on her. So you're creating their own narrative by saying this man beat her into submission. I never said anything. You said that. when you said not cooking and cleaning. So those are two things that you're not submitting to the role of a wife 
I don't think that I don't agree with none of the words that you're saying, Darwin, at all. I'm going you don't off have to agree. All, all the first, no, my whole, no, I wasn't the submission. What I'm saying is, if somebody wants to cook or clean, based on the way they're not work. doing something you want them to do, so that's what I'm saying. You, you said they wouldn't cook based and on clean. the confines of the word justifying divorce, and me saying, okay, look, if a woman is to be cooperative and submit to a man, I don't understand how at this rate, I think women file, I think the statistics that women initiate 70% of the divorces. I don't understand how women are at this rate initiating divorce when they're supposed to be submissive in their marriages. It's just don't, I'm just saying it's a contradiction to me. That's all I'm saying. Bruce, the only problem with what you're saying is that I get, I get your sentiment. You're basically using the, the actual reasons that we know for people to get divorced. And you're like, there's no reason for that. But when you start tying in abuse and then saying that oh well you know he might go upside her head because she's not some she's not being a the, the right kind of wife that's where you're rubbing the women wrong at you know what i mean that but I, but I also i also stated he could she could have hit him did i not well no that would be a i don't think any of the women would disagree with that it's when you start tying all the other stuff in there where they like hold on wait but, a I, but I never even tried to do that i just said there was details i never tried to tie it in they tried to walk me into giving details and i just i just you know i've never been Ooh, in a relationship wow. where hold on i've never been in a relationship where I, I hit a woman so i would have to try to assume that okay what are the reasons why a man would hit a woman and then so it would what? come off at like, and then it would come off as if I'm trying to justify him hitting her, which I'm not. I'm just trying to figure out what is reason. The only thing I can think of is if she's hitting him, and like I stated before, and he read back and said, "I'm tired of you hitting me," and hit her back. But then they try to take me back. They they try to villainize what I'm saying and by trying to twist my words and adding words that I didn't even say. Yeah, but then you uh, also, nobody added anything. Do we also with add the you? words that kind of make it sound? That's why I get what you're trying to argue. But the words that you're using, if, if you go back and rewatch it, the words, the things that you're actually saying, it's kind of bad, bro. The now, things I, that I was saying was things that they had stated. I was just repeating what they said and and, and just playing Davis advocate and for entertainment, just answering the question based off of the statements that they were saying. But I never even said in those things. Even Travis say that. I didn't say like, a lot of the shit that they were saying. I didn't even say that. The words didn't even come out of my mouth. You didn't say I can say this. I, I'll say this. There, there was definitely... um. A lot of words that was thrown into his mouth that he didn't say. But I can what say word? where you lost the... I, well, hold on. I'm not done. I can say where you lost the women. Um, when you said, that's why I could see how... And then you, you did the join right here. Right there, that was that. That was like, it was like, okay. So, I'm not saying... I, I, I'm, I, I'm not saying that you meant it like that. But I could easily see how um, women, particularly any woman who may have experienced any type of you know situation like that I'm, I'm you know you gotta be careful with the words you use on here TV. but any woman who's who's been through that type of of you know yeah yeah that and that's the reason why i try right? to give you so, context yeah so by saying so if, if a woman hit you hitting a man and he's tired of her hitting him and he and he's gonna use every other means of trying to resolve the issue and that's not working and he loses it with me personally, I never, I never hit my wife, and I never hit a woman. I see what you did. It was genius. You was bringing light that men experience domestic violence, and a lot of times we don't talk about the domestic violence that men experience. So, in order for us to engage in this conversation, you said, "Why is he getting hit?" So you could talk about how men get abused in domestic the violence. Details. That's what I said. What I are don't the know details? Who you think is calling for that, Marcus? No, that was cute though. Thank that you, Mark. <laughs> that's why I said the details are important because you yeah. you'd be surprised at how a lot of these DV cases is is yeah. ends up with a man locked up for responding to being hit after being hit countless times. I'm not saying that there there's not cases where men are just constantly abusing women, yeah. but I'm most, saying that most the men details don't even report matter. it. Yeah, it's 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 about who called the cops first. <laughs> And they can't even accept that. Even if you clear it up, that's the damn shame. Because I'm still stuck on when she raised her voice. Y'all stuck because y'all in your feelings, no, no, no. man. She raised her voice and then you even. Because I did not think it. I think, I think the silence is a means you of said, conviction. You probably I can was see out of line. Why? So why are you talking over me? You wanted an answer, right? The reason. 
Go ahead. We're not going to hear your clarification because as soon as she even raised her voice through a damn digital screen, the first thing out of your mouth was, I could see why a man would cock back and slap a woman. That's what you first said. All, okay, so why is she raising her voice? It doesn't matter. Why are you talking about matter. hitting her? Previously before, you said, well, there's got to be a reason on why he hit her. You, you, didn't you, initially, you did not initially you out of say your femininity, in your you're being very masculine, you raising her. your voice. So she should get slapped. You didn't initially say that. I, I said I can understand you why said a man. But it's a reason why he hit her. That's what I said. What? That. He probably wouldn't do it, but he'd be agitated to the level of like, damn, won't, bitch, won't you just shut the not Not saying you the B word, but I'm just saying, won't you just shut the hell up? Man, I, I think. Why like, some men respond that way? Man, I, think Bruce, I think Bruce is trolling. That's why people end up in ERs. Man, I think you're trolling on this one, man. I, I've never put my hands on a woman. I can never see myself putting my hands on a woman. Bruce I don't think he's trolling. A lot of men think like him. They're just not stupid enough to say it out loud. I don't think Bruiser means exactly what y'all trying to paint him out to mean. I think he's just mixing, mixing up y'all, missing what he's trying to say. He's basically saying find, he more willing to find out what's going on behind the curtain because oftentimes what happens is, and, and, and I can agree with this, is that when people say, oh, we got a divorce. Oh, well, he was hitting me. And and that's the only thing that happened, but nobody ever discusses the reasons that may have occurred. Like she was hitting him too, or she was abusive to him, or she did, you know what I mean, X, Y, Z that led to, you know what I mean, them putting hands on each other or what have you. So it's he's basically saying that it's not always as black and white as far as the reasons why people said that they divorced. And listen, I'm not I really, I really think Darwin speaks very well. And I think it's so funny that Sweeney, Marcus, and Trey feel that they had to come in and clarify what he was trying to say. But well, sometimes at the same you got, time, you know, sometimes I, I you don't read know the Darwin room, personally. I don't know him personally, but I he be don't, trolling and saying shock value he has ill will. Yeah, I don't, he be trolling I don't sometimes. think that he right, do you disagree is with an me? evil man. I don't think that as well. That's why I bowed out the conversation. Yeah, no, Casey, the, re the reason I even brought that up is because, I mean, I saw just reading the room and, and you know, comments and everything else. I'm like, okay, uh, people are going to receive that a certain way, right? When I heard it, I'm like, damn, I don't think he really means it like that. You know what I mean? Because the way he t articulates himself is how he does, and that's fine. However, I understood how people will receive it especially women and even more if a woman who may have experienced that and i didn't want the message to be conveyed in that manner when i don't feel like he really meant it that way. it was a, a direct representation i appreciate, of his I appreciate process. That. And, that, and, that, and that goes to show you how men work together. i appreciate we, that we understand each other on a level to where we can come in and be like okay this is this is what he meant he may not have been able to articulate it that way but this is what we're getting and we're trying to convey to you that these are, this is the context behind it. It really don't mean these these harmful things to you. But I will add this: I had I had a I had a consultation with a guy, and he allowed me to use his story before. He had a uh, uh, a case of abuse where his wife walked out on him because he had he had beat her up. You know, it was just only one time, but you know, for a while I didn't I didn't ask him why he beat her up. But then I thought, like, okay, this is important. This is the reason why you divorced because. We had spoke for an hour after he stated that, and I couldn't put my finger on why he hit the woman. And then I found out. Well, I, I actually asked him, "Okay, why did you hit, why did you beat her down like so badly?" And he said, "Well, I found out my ten year old daughter was not mine." Now I'm not saying that he was justified for hitting her, but I can understand the pain he felt and how he could. If you're not emotionally intelligent enough to control yourself, at that moment of hearing that and finding that information, you could lose it. Not saying it's justified, but I'm saying it isn't just he put his hands on her. It's it was the details that mattered because I don't see it as I don't see it as the women are trying to paint it on this panel tonight that oh he's just abusing me. Hey baby, no, I don't, I don't see it like that. I see okay, there's a series of events that led up to. You getting your jaw smashed? It's, it's gonna it's gonna look graphic, man. I'm, I'm not oh sure you yeah. about this. Uh, I'll just make sure we kind of see where it's up. going. <laughs> see where it's going. I'll just see God where damn, it's going. <laughs> <laughs> you could just let me just clean that up right there and just say <laughs> the of the divorce wasn't just abuse; it was infidelity. Baby made out of uh, baby made on him and. 
all of that was encompassed in the divorce. You had to try to keep going. Because I know you was going to say what you said and have my back. I knew you was going to come in and have my back. No, I shouldn't have to do that. <laughs> all right, look. So, That's why all right, so look, Dick, 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 That's this... why all the women recognized immediately what you all were doing. You always try to come in and cover up a, a man's stupid mistake instead of holding him accountable like I thought men do. But what did y'all do? Make excuses for him. For his bullshit. Have you ever watched your have your home that's girl not ever, okay? Have your home girl ever put hands on a dude after she found out he cheated? I'm not on answering him? no dumbass question about nobody putting hands on nobody. He right. just so, said it's, just, it's we, not justifiable that he hit that woman because he found out that the baby wasn't his. But he also just said you're trying to justify why you cheated on him. So you can't. You just like a walk in contradiction today because it doesn't make sense. If you can't justify it in one section, then you can't justify it in another. There's no excuse. Nobody should be putting their hands on anybody. Nobody should be doing any of that. Or you just together. I asked him initially how his feelings on domestic violence before I even spoke and infidelity. And I confirmed that he said he was against both of those things. The, the majority of the night, he people calling the men losers and weak for moments of infidelity. That's what I'm saying. It came off the wrong way because I knew I didn't know exactly what he was trying to get at. I kind of was reaching, but I I know that he don't agree with domestic violence. I oh, definitely I, not one hundred percent against it. And I was oh. in the military. That was I was a sergeant in the military, and we trained soldiers on that every week. It was zero tolerance for it. Zero tolerance. It don't even matter if she hits you. When we when she hits you, run away. That's what we train our soldiers. Walk away. Leave the house. Get out of there fast. Zero tolerance. Yeah, he never said it was right. Not once do we say it was right. Hey, I go yeah, again. Venus. It's, it's it's not it's not about uh, covering for Darwin, right? It's it's more like I don't want women on the panel or any women watching to feel that uncomfortable to think that he would or any of us would actually support DV on any capacity. Because me, um, I'm not super familiar with Darwin, but from he's never given me anything that would make me feel like he actually would support that. And I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't allow it anyway. If I felt like that's what he was actually doing, I would stop that immediately. That's why I wanted the clarity, and I asked for clarity because I didn't think that's what that was. If he was to stand on that, then yeah, we we probably would just been going back and forth about that. But I, I, my whole purpose was that I don't want women to ever feel like they can come to any place and then made to be feel uncomfortable, right? I don't support it. I don't think it's fair, and it's a serious matter. Right. And I don't think that any woman should have to deal with that. I know people personally who have dealt with that and I've seen what it does to women. And it's it's terrible and it's something that should not be tolerated. And I'll say this. I don't if, if the first time it happens, I think a woman should get the hell out of there. You know, and that's where our opinions differ. I, th I think that she should get the hell out of there because it's not a, it's not a good situation to be in. And I've seen what it does, what it does to women. And I, I don't think that any woman should want to do that. We all have wives sisters mothers daughters and we don't want to see any of our women go through that that's okay hey venus check the back chat real quick please and i'm aware that there's a lot of men out there that don't know how to control themselves they don't know how to control their anger and you know if you say if you listen to sometimes when we talk on king talk we have some guys some of the guys on here that i think all of the guys on here for the, for the most part, come on King Talk, and we talk about ways that yeah. men can control their anger, you know, and be more emotionally intelligent in situations whenever they find themselves uh, in a quarrel with a woman in the household. It's, it's one of the most, it's one of the places that a man, men never want to find themselves in. And we always talk about ways that they can mitigate, you know, mitigate, uh, you know, use, use, use various ways to to decrease any chances of it getting to that line. And we also talk to women on how they can carry themselves in a way where they can be more feminine and less masculine, where they can decrease the chances of a man losing it himself. Because we gotta understand this is it's an influence going both ways. It's, it's an argument, both of y'all are in disagreement. And it's usually when a woman is being more combative. I've never seen it. And and all of the, all of the DV cases I've studied, I've never seen, seen it where the, where the woman is being hit for being in her femininity and being in, in, in a cooperative manner and being in a, in a feminine state, it's always when she get out of a, her femininity 
and she's starting to quarrel. Quarrel. You with should him. stop talking. You should really stop talking. No, about I'm. Them. I'm just no, saying. You should. You should. You should just stop talking about this for real. No, I'm just saying we got to be able to have this conversation without being triggering. You do. You. You. you we all human on, beings. But the the longer you talk, you start doing the same thing again. So now it's. No, what anyone who got hands put on her is because she wasn't being feminine. Like, I don't know if you're hearing yourself, but you should probably stop. No, I'm saying there's many things that can contribute to the the the, uh, the quarrel, period. Not him hitting you. I'm just talking about y'all getting into an argument, period. Not I'm not even talking about him laying hands on you. I'm talking about just getting in an argument and a disagreement. I haven't even talking, I'm not even talking about being hit. I'm talking about there's there's a series of there's a way you can behave in a relationship and there's a way you can there's a way you can behave in a relationship where you cause an argument to be more uh, a higher chance of happening uh, based I'm on just, being out of your femininity. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, I'm going to just say this. I mean, it's I mean, each situation is different. You know, we don't know. I don't have no stats or anything like that, but I it, it may be some truth in certain situation with you saying that. But then it's some other instances where people are just off edge. You know, whether it be man or woman, and they just wilding out, and they just a loose cannon. You know, they might have been a loose cannon when they was young, and then once they turn eighteen, they are not self aware enough to be able to seek the help that they need, and so they just out here just wilding. So, um, I don't, I don't think we can really specify until we hear each individual story. So that's true. I think we should just probably just kind of leave it, leave that where it is. Um, the only thing that I could really say is people need to be a little bit more self-aware of themselves and to vet properly, to have deeper discussions, to understand how uh, certain things in relationships can can trigger people. And you won't really know the triggers unless you have a deeper discussion with them to figure out what they've been through already. And you can kind of get an idea. It's still not 100% guaranteed, but just try to communicate on the front end. Just try to do the right thing. Uh, no matter if man or woman, and just kind of hope for the best at that point. If you're doing the right thing nine times out of 10, that's still not 100% guarantee. You may be able to see some results, but every now and then you got somebody just to lose cannon, and then you got to handle it from there. So um, we're not promoting any DV whatsoever. Um, taking something from what he said, I can't understand where he wants to go a little bit deeper. Um, as far as like, asking how do we get to places and, and it's not just with DV, it's even with divorce, it's either with uh, um, like abusing children, um, just any situation, like people really never get to the root of the problems, you know, they just focus on like the, the outcome. So I, I, I do think that there's a little bit of discussion there, but each situation is different. I don't think we can really predict it. I mean, like right is right, wrong is wrong. I just, I just don't. I've never put my hands on a woman. I, I don't plan on. Um, like it is some discussion that we have with the men as far as like protecting ourselves. Like, what's the best way that we can protect ourselves without um, doing a lot of damage on the back end? So, I was just raised not to hit a woman, and I just, I just can't ever see myself striking a woman. But I don't put myself in situations where I've been around. I've never had a woman put her hands on me. So I don't, I, it could just be the way I vet. It could just be me recognizing and paying attention to things. But I just think that you just got to do the best you can do because it ain't no guarantees as far as what you're going to wind up getting yourself into or what you may experience. But just try to, just try to stay on high alert, man. It's really a, like a real sensitive subject and kind of hard to really debunk it because every situation is different. J JR, we had a conversation about this on another channel, right? And they were saying that um, sometimes abuse happens. My stance on that was most of the time, unless somebody has a mental disorder, it's a progression into that. And we should be able to identify things that could lead to that progression and avoid them completely so you never find yourself in those situations. So... Um, can I say something? We're uh, just to be clear, because I don't know what the chat is understanding, but we're not saying these men are promoting but domestic violence or that they are. Our issue was what Bruiser was saying specifically, and how he was what it appears to be to us trying to justify reasons for 
why sometimes that could happen to somebody. So this is not, we're trying to make them in abusers. That's not what's going on. Um, and to your point, Marcus, there are, um, they have trainings for people who went through domestic violence and they, there are signs like when men or even a, a spouse, whoever isolates you, the, one of the first things try to take, try to remove you from everybody around you. Mm -hmm. That's like one of the clearest signs that, yeah, it's about to progress into something else. So, so let, me, let, me just say, let me just say one thing, and I'm not going to put my, shoot myself in the foot this time. <laughs> so people think that I did. So it, it, I don't like to use the word justification or justify in the terms of way I was trying to point, put, pour out my context on the topic. Well, what I will try to do is think of a man, think of a, a young boy walking to a store and he's still some, some Debbie cakes or, you know, some chips and pop. Yes. It's still in his wrong. We could leave it at that or we can look at the details. The problem not, for me was I asked you about cheating. I'm going to land my plane. I'm going to land my plane. I'm gonna, I know I'm your plane, but I I'm gave you a chance. I'm going to land my plane. You, your your ticket it. was invalid. It was invalid. You, you didn't make it. You didn't make the flight. So what? Think of the think of the boy. You said you was on my plane, and I just said your ticket was invalid. You didn't make the flight. I know so, where you're going. You said this already. Okay, well, I, I got to say it. For the, I got to say it for the sake of uh, replay and, and, and video clip or whatever. So, so the boy, the details, the reason why the details matter, because then you would find that the boy was either homeless, he was in poverty, he was hungry, and he didn't have a meal to eat. So what he did, he went in there and he took a, a couple of Debbie cakes and some chips, and he, and he took it back home for him and his little brother to eat. And his mother is out on the streets doing drugs, his father not there. And he just had to figure out a way to, to, to eat that night. But yeah, we can leave it at, we can leave it at, oh, you shouldn't steal, and just leave it at that. Yeah, it's wrong. And I'm not trying to justify it, but I'm saying the details will give you an understanding of why this actually happened. So when it came to a woman's infidelity or a woman raising her voice, you don't care about the details. And that's my issue with you. The details matter about the for the I, things I that the you want them to matter when it comes for. To sexual immorality. Why not? Maybe she because has I, issues. I already had, you already you can already understand the details. Oh, so yeah, immorality. right. When it's something offensive to there, the man, two people the details don't consent. matter. There's there's right. two, there are two two people consensually committing infidelity. Uh huh. There's two. But, there's but two according to you, there are reasons for things, right? Human behavior, uh, sh a lot of times triggered by something right especially when somebody does something out of the norm would you agree to that okay continue so then there's never a case where you need to understand the reason why a woman may have stepped out on her husband no i already understand it oh, okay what about if a man step out on his wife do you think there needs to be a reason or do you think there's nothing that needs to be said you asking me a question yeah yeah, well, I, mean, I think she should understand it. <laughs> Yo, this is ridiculous. It's okay. the same thing. I understand why. I understand oh, why a woman would step out. She just, wanted to have. Oh, she she wanted, what I'm asking is, do that does does words have to be explained, or can she just move straight to that's some bullshit? I'm out. Just like yeah, for yeah. yes. If if I sit there and say, hey, look, I'm gonna marry you. I'm gonna make you my wife. These are my vows. This is my. This is our covenant under God, and I break it. Yes, she can move on. Oh, I, my, my, my question was when I first came, why did he say women should never divorce? But now he's saying something else. So okay. Yeah, well, but then not, I, I, Sweeney, go ahead. You never, y'all never gave him a chance to actually fully get a thought out before y'all jumped on him, so he couldn't. That's fully why I got Sweeney there. No, that's oh. not true. That's not true at all. He did, did but no, excuse me, excuse me. He gave an answer. So much so, I had a follow up question. So then I said, So if he abuses, brings a baby, does he any reason at all? So he did give an answer. He's literally talking. You got to let him finish the thought. No, yeah. he finished it. And then I had a follow up question. Here you are again. Why are you like, Is this your child? Why do you, why do you keep stepping you in that? trying to? No, why do you keep stepping in trying to talk for him? He's a grown man. Are you aware that you just did that like five minutes ago while he was literally? explaining something and then you say oh i get your point and you just jump i so, understood his point this time because he's been making the same point i didn't do that when i first came here yes, you did 
And no, I, I didn't. Like times to let him finish his thought. No, you didn't. You're a liar now. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. But but it's interesting that you keep stepping in and talk for him. Why? Why do you keep doing that? Why, why can I not? I'm talking to Bruiser, not you. I didn't ask you because you didn't say the thing, but you keep trying to defend the thing. Why? You gave me the floor, so I mean. No, but why do you keep trying to defend him? I don't think there's a problem with that. I don't know why we're arguing over the why we're having a meta conversation about it rather than just having a conversation. Well, a conversation. because I wanted to talk to him about what came out of his mouth, but you keep jumping in, so that's why we're having a meta conversation now. Well, he let me have the floor to answer the question because obviously he can't get his. You know what I mean? So I was like just trying to create a reference of understanding. I'm not trying to fight a quarrel or fight with y'all. I'm just trying to get it. We trying to help Bruiser out get a more because obviously he's having a hard time getting it through to y'all. And actually, Jr. is also explained this. He said sometimes when one person says something, it doesn't come off the same way, and then it takes other people to maybe if somebody else is able to explain it you'll get a better understanding. So that's all I'm trying to do. I'm not trying to be his savior. I'm just trying to help you understand because maybe coming from him is not getting through. That's the only thing because right now y'all are just fighting and that's not good for the audience. That's not good for the panel. That's not good for anyone. Mm. That is what submission looks like. I mean, uh, cooperation. But uh, yeah, appreciate that. Because the because one thing you gotta understand, man, I'm 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 fair, I would say I'm fairly new to the space. The Peeve Network is probably like ushered me into content creation, like birth bruiser for real. So the guy to my left and right, they got more experience than me in the space. And they're able to articulate themselves in a way that I can, I haven't maybe embraced yet. So I'm I would say I'm still learning. You know, but I, I know a lot, but that's that don't mean that I know everything. So these guys are able to 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 speak to y'all in a way, the way y'all can maybe understand it from a different perspective. Not no shade to myself or my intellect. It's just every man on this panel, and that's the reason why we have different men on the panel. We're not an echo chamber. We have different characteristics and different personalities, and 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 some ideologies are different. But you know what I'm saying? So I, I lean on Sweeney on things and Sweeney lean on me on things. The same vice versa with uh, Trey and Smooth in the realm and, and JR. We lean on each other. You know, we're kings. That's why we have king talk. So you need three other men to make your point for you as a king? And see, this is the problem. This is why men can't have a circle. Yeah, I'm not going for it. I'm sorry. Because You understand because what you were saying very well and you kept doubling down and you're full of shit. That's that. I see how the disrespect is. You see the disrespect? I never disrespected her once. And this is her hitting me first. So I should get slapped now, right? It's a metaphor. See, now you said slap. You said you should. Now you put those words out. I didn't say that. I just Why'd you say anything about a hit? Why'd you say that? You should. I told you to stop talking. I tried to help you, but you keep on First, doing one it. One thing. One thing about you got to understand that this is a space for us to communicate and talk on a panel. So saying that somebody should stop talking doesn't it, re, it really about doesn't. that issue uh, earlier. I was like, you probably should stop talking about this because every time no, you talk about no, it, you kind of make no. it worse. It's one thing, because one thing, y'all hyenas ain't gonna do is come on here and tell men that they need to stop talking. You're right. When we, when we when we when we we've been quiet for a long time, and we finally starting to see the BS. And starting to stand up for masculinity and, and started to stand up on principle. And now y'all want us to stop talking. But just because you get in your feelings, you can't understand us. We should no, stop I talking. I understand we're them. I don't understand you right now. That's what I don't understand. It's not them. It's you. Okay, well, I'm Things sorry. You are I'm, saying. I'm, I'm sorry. And, that, and that's the reason why I lean on my brothers to my left and right. And now that, now that I lean on my brothers to my left and right, you want to discount that. So there's no way to give you no understanding. Because y'all don't share a brain. I understand where they stand because they're not the ones saying the things that you're saying. You stand somewhere else. Well, if he said, never mind. I'm not saying nothing different. They they all they all had my back on the things I'm saying. I've, I've said they made it. They made it rephrase it in a way that's more. What did you say? Tact. I think we had a conversation about tact and being candid. They had. I, I probably was more candid with my statements. And, and they were more tacked with theirs. So you can understand it because you get in your feelings a lot. So they have to butter it up for you, so to speak. I really just listen to like exactly what the things that people say and just accept them like exactly what they say. You so, haven't accepted nothing we said yet. 
it's just why do you keep saying we is you're the only one saying a problematic stuff about women okay what did i say problematic about women we already went over it when the girl raised her voice it was well i can understand why somebody would cock back and then we gave her. you more then we gave you further context so you understand that you would that she may have interpreted the wrong way and you still you still leaving with the notion that i've got a i got a, a negative stance on women is, is that correct me if i'm wrong i don't know if you have a negative stance on women but i think your view of uh how things can get physical you might need to revisit that particular thought process no okay well fair enough I mean, no I, th I think i think i gave a clear understanding of uh, how I think it's fair to say that words do lead to physical fights. I've seen, we watched live uh, when uh, Will Smith went up there and slapped the shit out of Chris Rock. He ain't do shit but say words. And he got the shit smacked out of him. I've seen women hit their men just because he called her the B word or called out her name. I've seen women... We just talked about acrimony and in the entire beginning of the movie, she was putting hands on him and running a car through her, through his, through his thing, trying to kill him. Yeah, that makes sense. We, I understood that part. Again, the other parts that y'all are like looking over, like even when he gave his examples, he was like, maybe she didn't cook that day. Maybe she didn't clean. Like they're, they're, they're problematic parts but we could like move faster it is what it is I get to these super chats man i know we a little bit over time Boy, now 99 kaylin north if your father give you to a man that had a project for 15 years that he was working on but he would make millions 100 million and every and every single year you stay after it it's a guarantee five percent extra on your return would you do it of the 100 million appreciate that kaylin north Time Five Dollars says Carnival is not about that. Carnival is just about having fun. That ish is not unusual. It must be a cultural thing. Going on, Sean with the one ninety nine. Sean again. One ninety nine says they left the relationship premature. If you invest in stocks and pull out before it gets to its top dollar, do you get the full benefits? No. Stay. You got a. Uh, Big old two dollars says that video is three or four years old. KP two dollars says Alicia was a side piece. Kiki had no respect. Bigger than eleven ten dollars says Sweeney, you lying because if you and your wife went to the strip club and let go, came up to your wife and started. <laughs> Are we going? Like, what are you going to say? <laughs> I had to whoop that nigga ass. And then I'm hey, says, "Hey, a bruiser got a point." I ball emojis. But the women triggered. He never said that. And James 999 says, look at how they're trying to put words in his mouth. Y'all ain't ish. The man literally said you have to find out their root cause of an action. He's not promoting or advocating violence. Truth and reality undefeated 199 says, asking why isn't justification? It's information. Caitlin North 199 says, being ejected. Venus and voice won the debate. Uh, Genius again, 499 says ADV only one time is wow, but I feel like the woman on the panel or bruise an apology for trying to paint him in such a negative light. And lastly, Maniac Genius 199 says isolation technique. Good point, Venus. Thank you, everybody that's contributed to the platform thus far. I um, want to thank Venus for coming up and Rojo. Did you two have any final thoughts? Rojo, I know you've been pretty quiet. Make sure you be safe out there, brother. Anything you wanted to add? No, nah, I'm good, uh, my man. Okay. Uh, thanks for having me. No uh, doubt. I, I just want to say, um, men, I think because women view that whole DV thing in a different way, um, maybe just needs to be a, a bit more careful with the way you word things sometimes. It may not mean it the way it comes out, but just maybe be more mindful of that. But yeah, my intention was not to come here. I don't think anybody here is an abuser. I want to make that clear. That wasn't my intention. I'm not trying to make anybody look that way. I was just literally responding to what was being said, but I would never do that. Um, but yeah, thank you for having me. Everybody have a good night.
Love Venus. Uh, what is it? Voice of Venus. And and let me also say, I see a lot of comments saying the women on the panel, the women on the panel. I clearly said a while ago that I don't know Bruiser personally, or I'm I'm sorry to keep calling you Bruiser. That's what I remember you about, but Darwin personally, but I know he's a father, a husband, and I have three brothers. I'm a daddy's girl. I don't play with painting any black man with a broad brush of not knowing um, all the facts, especially not on a, a public platform. I don't play with that with black men or women. So let's make that clear. So when y'all say the women, the women, the women, you cannot speak for all of us. And I appreciate Venus um, saying what she just said as well. I don't know her personally either. So, and I remain quiet to let Sweeney Darwin and Venus have that conversation. Um, like I feel the the rest, Trev and Marcus, and then how we sat still and quiet like we needed to. So I enjoyed tonight, though. Tonight was fun. It was fun. Glad you enjoyed it. Glad to have you too, Casey. I know every night that you come and sprinkle your presence, but it's definitely appreciated. I say thank you for saying that, Casey. Casey, you gonna talk about this L you took? <laughs> yeah, Casey, you gonna. I texted Reese and I told Reese that we did not use the word strip, and you added that in there, and he was like, "Oh, yeah, Marcus did say strip. Don't play me. You know, you know him, but I know him too." Yeah. So yeah, when you yeah, tried, when you used the, the Janet Jackson that. example, that was a strip. That that's why I used the oh, word. You the said yeah. when Reese let you go up and and um. Like a Kiki Palmer or a Alicia Keys and Usher situation, and then when you got on the phone with him, you said, "Can Usher give Casey a strip tease?" That is not what Kiki Palmer or Alicia <laughs> Keys experienced. They did not experience that. No, no. When 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 <laughs> asked you, did you see Janet Jackson grinding on him and stripping on him? You was well, like, she, yeah, she, yeah. She just was. She was. She was touching on him though. She she, she was groping on. Him. Yeah. So uh, the point is, y'all try to kill me and give me all the dirty looks in the, in the look, book about the double standard, and then everybody accepted the fact that there are double standards. I just wanted to bring that to everyone's attention. You gotta accept that I conceded to it, man. I accept. <laughs> it wasn't just you, sweetie. Everybody, all the women was looking at me dirty when I said that double standard stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true though because if you think about the double standard, if you think about the very first conversation we had about the whole uh, support thing, there's a lot of men that support their wives' dreams, and she ain't contribute a dime to the house. It's all him contributing to her in support of her dream, and she goes on to you know what I mean to do a whole lot. Like for example, there was a I can't remember who it is, but it was a woman who I think she sells like purses or something like that, or like a makeup set or something. But her husband was a, a sergeant for the police force for 20 years. And he supported her and let her, you know what I mean, work on her dream that entire time. And then she, when she finally broke through and got rich, she retired him. And was like, mm. baby, you never got to work yeah. another day in your life. So men do pour that type of stuff into women. But if when you ask all the women, there's a time limit on it unless they know he's going to be a billionaire at the end. You you talking about? I I think she's a great woman too. My daughters watch her um her child content. Yeah, she's a, I can't remember her name. My wife watches her. I can't remember her name, but I remember she was. I can't remember. I can't even remember what she did. I don't know if it was like makeup, a makeup line, or she got on for like a subway commercial or something. Yeah, like I can't yeah. remember what she does, but yeah, she she got like one of the most earthly, homely. Uh, your favorite aunt, the mother down the street vibes that I ever. I, what is her name though? Samantha, not Samantha. Can she Tabitha? Know? Tabitha. Yeah. Tabitha. Oh, Tabitha. when you described her personality, that's the first person I thought about. Yeah. yeah. What's yeah. her name? Tabitha. Tabitha. Tabitha Brown. Tabitha. Tabitha Brown. That's her name. What is she? Mm -hmm. Yeah, she has seasonings. She has a line at Target. Does she yeah. have a podcast too? I know she got a, ch oh a kids show. Uh, she like teach you how oh, to I've read. I've never seen the kids show. Yeah, you, oh, you put the babies that. on it. She like teach, women, teach women how to be wives or something like that. Are you know, they, they that's the way she operate, actually, darling. Like in her story, I don't think she specifically goes and does that, but she just mm -hmm. always handle everything with class. Like 
a woman to come to her and say, you're not attractive enough to have your husband, she'll pray for him. She, she'll be like, you know what, baby? Yeah. However you feel about me is how you feel about me. I just want you to know I love you and God love you. And for you to feel that way about me, it's okay. And I just wish you the best. And I wish and you that, would make your own. I don't know how much. That's how I wanted Angel Reese to respond, you know. Mm-hmm. That would have made me, that, that would have made her one of my my I would I would have been like a fan of hers if she would have, you know, did it like that. Do, that. Do you you think the women in her age group would have been happy with that? Yeah, but it, it ain't about her yeah. making them happy. It's about, you know, making I think her fans and I think God, most importantly, God, you know, would have been happy with the way she responded if she would responded that way. Is she yeah. let's let's the, the core demographic of friend, fans because so all right we like you know how we talk about the the boss the boss chick image nowadays right i think she can kind of like be the jay-z of females for them and they kind of i'm maybe i'm not uh explaining this correctly but the way we loved ai for him being counterculture and standing on stuff in a way that we want to see it stood on for who we were as a people or the hip-hop culture I think she could be that for young for the women who look up to her in that same way, if that makes sense. But if you think about it, though, while AI was successful, he never reached his full potential as far as like he was never able to reach like a LeBron James level because LeBron James knew how to play the game. You know what I mean? Whereas AI, he he went against the grain a lot. So while he may have had AI, AI is a tough example to use because he still got a massive fucking fan base, like ridiculously massive. But that's why, though. But that is literally what like his fan base is nowhere compared to like Jordan's or LeBron's who played the game and they like for Angel Reese. So like to, if you look at Angel Reese, while that fan base is great, if she would have took it on a chin, she might it might have opened her up to being literally the face of the WNBA at some point to where everybody supports. Mm-hmm. Not just she would have changed, changed that. She would have changed. Yeah, that. you can I pigeon. I don't can, think it's too late. You can pigeonhole yourself. Yeah, I don't think it's too late either, Trev. I don't. I. Yes. She, but we, y'all are definitely saying the right thing. Can black athletes or black celebrities pigeonhole themselves or block off future success, future endorsement deals by the way they carry themselves, their mouth, X, Y, and Z? Yes, yes, they can. Yes, they can. Yes, they can. Um, but at the same time. I'm I'm I hope for her and because I want to see us all win it and succeed. Shaq is very close with her. And I hope that he is leaning in on the mentoring aspect of her long term. I think he is. I mean, he's literally he's literally staying so close to her um that it's crazy. I I think I think she is gonna mature and I think she is gonna learn. Um off the court, how to handle herself in a way that the world opens up to her long term. I want to say, I want to say, she got a lot of black women, young black women that yeah, uh, sure. are influenced by her and inspired by her. And I feel like if she would have took the route, sort of like the tab- no and white and white though and white, like a lot yeah, of yeah, that's what I'm saying. I've seen a I lot of white would. women switch and say that their kids are going to LSU because of Angel, despite her mouth. So if she learns how to channel that. Yeah, that's um, and that's what I'm yeah, saying. I, yeah, think do. Yeah. I think if she do, if she do, uh, give off that what what is that woman Tabitha or Brown? Right. Or whatever, right. I think if she do pull a page out of her book, and, and if she did at that point, it would have triggered something in those women that that inspired that are influenced by her to unlock something else okay, in the she side won't of the be, Angel Reese won't be a Tabitha Brown, but I'll give you a better example of somebody that she can eventually have the swag. But then also have the grace, Angela Bassett. Angela Bassett gives off strength, seriousness. Don't play with me. I know I'm the top tier of my game, but she also always has class. Um, she always has grace about her. She speaks very carefully and thoughtfully um, because she knows how big her influence is. So I'll say, like, down the line, a couple decades, in her lane and what she does of basketball and endorsements and all that world, I think uh, Angela Bassett would be, you know, because Angela still has swag. Tabitha is the down the street, like, the down the street 
on T. That we don't want. We still want her to have that athlete swag to her, you know. Y'all know who's gonna set the yeah, world. Look on at fire. look at how Shakari look at how Shakari Richardson is doing. A lot of people are forgetting that already, right? We can't forget how fickle society is. She's one good PR stunt away from being right where she need to be. Right? That's it. it like it's, she, it's very early. She hasn't even started her professional career yet. I mean, as far as like being in the WNBA where she's really gonna be. And that's that's a different ball game. I promise you. Give it like six months and they're gonna be all over she matured a lot in like two years part, i was she just really shakari richardson because the only thing what she's actually missing is the olympics that's what she needs like, yeah it's like simone biles did right now, right now she's still behind the scenes don't nobody ain't nobody really talking about it because the last time was the olympics but once she gets in the olympics and she performs this year <laughs> she gonna she gonna she gonna get her stride again because she out there she booking it she balling. Yeah, no, she, she, she's she's hey, getting it in. I got a, a stat that I had put up, too. I forgot to get the results for, but it was uh, – you guys hear me okay? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was how often has your loyalty been tested and you've engaged inappropriately? Uh, it was 313 votes. Um, 42% said a few times. 18% says a lot. And forty one percent says never. So damn, that's a lot of people that that loyalty done been never. Yeah, <laughs> damn. Again, the question is how often has your loyalty been tested and you've engaged inappropriately? Forty two percent says a few times. Eighteen percent says a lot. Forty one percent says never. Damn, that's a lot of people. That's a chat. Y'all bad as hell, man. Just keep living. All I exist. Y'all ain't shit. It's kind of deep right there, man. Hey, that explain. Hey, look, that oh. explains the chat oh. is the nut shit. Oh. <laughs> no Diddy. <laughs> man, be careful with Diddy, man. They say he going around threatening TikTokers and stuff. Man, Diddy out the country. That dude, if, if he no, caught, no, he was just caught on the bike and. Right around in LA. What was Stevie J? <laughs> oh, yeah, you saying that shit? Go come out here talking. Hold on, about he it. was riding on the bike with Stevie J? No, nah, he Stevie J came out trying to oh. trying to go at Fifty Cent about uh about calling him an Uncle Tom or some shit like that. He was like, come on, bro. Sometimes you, there's certain shit you just can't. Stand. I don't care how black you don't just certain shit you just don't get behind people on pause. No diddy. Okay, how black the motherfucker is. <laughs> if you want to hear a crazy take? I think I would rather be AI than Jordan. If I could have, um, Unless, as you don't know, Venus shaking oh. hair intellect is different. Congo English twenty dollars is great show panel. Casey twenty dark, real Trev Jr. Much appreciated. Then Kaylin North again on the says AI had problems off the court, cough, gambling, and drinking. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think I think AI was really noticeable for his handles. You know, he he revolutionized the game in that way. But a lot of the other things were for the wrong reasons. Like you know, the, the braids, the tattoos, and all that stuff. No shade to people who wear braids and stuff. But but, but I, I really think Jordan, Darwin. That's why I said I'd rather be AI for them reasons right there. So the negative reasons? I don't think they're negative reasons. I think they extremely positive reasons. Those ones, not the drinking and the gambling. Jordan, Jordan did his thing with with those things too. So when I'm thinking about AI, right, it is something for being able to represent who you are in, in spite of it being illegal and still or or being against the grain and, and still standing in that. Jordan had things too, but he had to he had to whitewash it because he had a morality clause. In his in his uh Nike deal and the other deals, so he couldn't have had a child out of wedlock. And I'm not promoting that. I'm just saying the image that um that Jordan had, it was constraining, and AI operated in a free space, kind of like Rodman, right? Like Rodman AI. I admire the ability to to be yourself and still, you know what I'm saying? Just it's kind of like he DBA. driving straight through a fork and yeah, he driving straight through the fork in the road. And I, I don't feel Jordan as powerful as he was could. And I 
maybe not AI for, for certain, but I think history, because right now when you look back on it, everybody agreed Jordan the greatest, but it's a lot of whispering about why LeBron mm -hmm. is a better man. Like LeBron is. But you got to understand, though, the, why Ali is better a better whisper. Part of what made Jordan, part of the, Jordan being who he is, is actually what got him what he has today. He was like, they don't let anybody buy an entire NBA franchise. Mm -hmm. You got to play the game to be able to do something like that. And AI, who retired in 2010, Jordan bought an NBA franchise in 2010. Mm -hmm. like, you gotta out, he wouldn't have been able to get into that boys club to be able to even. Yeah. So, he wouldn't. But does AI care? Didn't he just get like fifty million from Adidas Reebok. once he hit fifty? Reebok, it was Reebok. Yeah. But, but here go my thing. No, I don't care about that. My thing. It's, it's like an annuity. I always struggle with this. How much of yourself are you willing to sell? Oh no, the million dollar franchise. Yeah, yeah, my fault. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, yeah, yeah. That's crazy. That's crazy. So, just, so uh, Marcus, it's funny. It's funny. Marcus. You just you just, yeah, you just right. brought that up. You need to have this conversation with Reese about the COVID shot and athletes getting paid to promote it from Moderna. Yeah, from Moderna and all that. And you never heard nothing else after all of that. But that's a whole another conversation. Y'all have that on the side. Well, they, they were kind of. We was up to like one o'clock in the morning talking about that. They were kind of forced to because it's a part of it was a part of the rules. Like they ain't had no choice but to like if you want to play ball you got to take the shot so i mean like, they had a choice it just wasn't yeah uh, the contrary was gonna let it was lose they're gonna take food off their own table yeah they like either play ball I think jordan i think jordan was a, also the nba they wanted him to be the face of the nba even if he even when he was losing in the playoffs countless years back to back they still wanted they wanted him to be the uh they made him the face of the NBA, and, and he had everything to take from his AI. legacy at all costs. Like right now, this one dude, there's an Instagram Instagrammer that's blowing up. For some, I, he found the old tapes where Jordan couldn't really go left. I think I think if you look it up, it's called "We Done with the 90s. Yeah, that was yeah, yeah, I be seeing it, dude. I be seeing it. Was bullshit. Yeah. I, I even com I commented on that post. I said, "Wait, what is it?" He was basically he said it. that Jordan couldn't go left, but I'm like, my argument to that was. But you couldn't stop him from going right. If I can beat you with the same move over and over and over again, and you can't stop it, I don't give a shit that I can't go left. You can't stop me from going right. Jordan, same used to, thing with AI. Jordan they changed the he rules. He can not go left. Do and do it, and they couldn't stop it. Like my like them making that video and ignoring the fact that yeah, he couldn't go left, but he got six championships, five MVPs. Six finals MVPs, 10 scoring titles, uh, a defensive player of the year. So who gives us on the best team? But but Sweeney, they changed the rules to help Jordan and they changed the rules to hurt AI. They made his move illegal specifically for him. You talking about they, the don't, even, they don't even call fouls. Yeah, for him carrying. Well, was carrying. Yeah, they was calling and carrying. Hey, but you noticed in the league now these niggas is carrying again. Oh my god, like they crazy don't have a real day. No, yeah, Tim Harden. Yeah, you're right, Mark. James Harden, Wallen. Yeah, but I think I think LeBron. I think LeBron is uh, underrated, man. And I think everybody gonna give us him. His, I hate it when Kobe passed. Everybody tried to give him his flowers then, but Kobe was a guy too. That it might it might be when he retire. Yeah, whenever I hate whenever that. I, see that. I hate that. Nah. Well, who do y'all think gonna come up behind him? Because I I like, used to say it's gonna be Kevin Durant. Pause. Kevin Durant. Pause. Man, y'all are <laughs> on one tonight. <laughs> I'll be real with y'all. My dude. brain don't even work that fast, and y'all be coming behind it with pause, and I'm like, I can't even keep up. Yeah, I, but I, I think I, I think I, LeBron. I, 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 I think the NBA cooked, bro. I think Anthony Edwards is gonna probably be the next thing. If John Morant can stay and stay out of trouble, he might, but. John Morant. If Anthony Edwards keep growing, bro, he got a lot of potential. I used to, I used to think that uh, Zion was gonna come in, but I don't, I just don't yeah, trust. Zion. He was supposed to. Nah. You, you see what I'm saying? Anthony Edwards is Jordan's son. Like, <laughs> I'm gonna tell you right now. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. <laughs> if Anthony Edwards is and and, uh, and John Morant don't 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 continue to grow, the league is gonna belong to Luka Doncic. It's gonna be a white man's league again. What about Wimby? 
No, I don't. I don't think so. Cause I don't. Well, Luca. 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 He has. I don't think he's gonna string together any championships. Don't nobody like him. The, and the only other player in the NBA, like I ain't the the Denver Nuggets is literally walking over teams right now, and that dude don't even want to play. Like Joker don't even want to play, and they just walking over teams right now. But I don't, man, bro. I think the league cook, bro. <laughs> They, they viewership has been going down. It, I, I don't think there is a. I don't think it might is. be more WNBA uh, viewership once. <laughs> once Ames, I'm waiting on my times to grow up so I can get them right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have the real Marcus White have to train them because I know they're gonna be at least six, eight, six, nine. Oh yeah, I, I'm, I'm gonna they, send them yeah. up over there, over there to Marcus White. I'm like, hey, look, man, get these boys right. How old your sons is? Uh, the, um, my oldest is about to be two on Saturday. And, oh yeah, they, they come train with my son. And I got an eight month, an eight month old. Yeah, they can go train. They come train with my son. I'm trying to have. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna give it more and more year. I'm gonna give my wife time to really get over postpartum and the issues she having. You know, snapping back. And I'm gonna give her. I'm gonna try to give her. I'm trying to get us a daughter, and then I'm gonna be done. Yeah, be patient with her though. I, like yeah, I, I am being patient. I'm not pushing her. I'm saying, look, if we keep leveling up our finances, then we can have more kids. But the I, moment we kind of like start. Doing this right here? Mm -hmm. No. Y'all know, know league. Y'all need to watch. Y'all gonna change your life, brother. Yeah, and that's 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 what I want. I want to be able to. I want to be able to have that token daughter to be able to. I want to create. I'm. I'm not. I'm just saying, not create. I'm sorry. I don't want to come off as. I know a lot of women get in their feelings, but I want to have a daughter to wear. No, I believe in creation. Okay. <laughs> y'all yeah. need, need to watch though, fellas. I'm talking to y'all. Huh? Y'all know what y'all know a, a sports league y'all need to keep uh watch though. John ain't finished his thought about what you talk about the trend in their NBA league, bro. <laughs> LFL. Oh, hey, bro. Watch, bro. They still got oh, that. I heard it. Oh, they got it for basketball too now, Slinny. Hey, have, no way they got it for oh. basketball. Yes, they do. Yeah, they do. I seen the girl Tara MCL. She was thicker than a snicker. Oh God, no. <laughs> leg wiggling ass. Danny, how you gonna just ignore me tomorrow? I'm talking to the fellas. Like seriously, <laughs> you ain't watching a bunch of women hit each other in lines, right? Come on. Now. No, I'm not. But I'm still here. So <laughs> you cut hey. off. You cut off Darwin saying his. Yeah, I wanted. I wanted. I wanted to raise my daughter up to be a. Uh, a pillar for women, you know, to be able to try to, you know, re-embrace the standard, you know, and 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 try to try to um, push women and uh, specifically black women in a direction to where they can be more suitable to be wise and stuff. Like that. Hey, do you, do you ever do you ever think about um your kids will watch this stuff eventually, right? I want to make sure I never say nothing on the platform that I wouldn't feel like was advice to my kids, my boys and my girl, my boy and my girls. But they watch it and be like, all right, I see what he's saying. Like, if I'm not here, like my father passed. So I, I know if I pass, they're going to really like if he, if I would have had something like this, I'd be rewatching this stuff every single day. Like, because you really get to see your parents. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that, and I'm glad you said that because I was watching Anton Daniels on uh I don't know if I can say that name on his network, but <laughs> shout out to my man Zantine. But uh, I was watching him on uh, Harley Initiated earlier. Him and uh, coach, some other coach and um, some other guy, I forgot what his name is. And they were talking about masculinity and stuff. And it kind of made me feel like, okay, I feel some conviction in myself. Because a lot lately, what my content and my understanding of where I come from, on my perspectives, it come from trial and error and a lot of experience and it's just talking in the circle of man that I want to aspire to be like, but I really wasn't really fully embracing the word of God for real. And that's like, maybe it's time to repent and ask God to, to guide me in the word and start standing and using a lot of those principles and standards and to infiltrate how I push my content out. Hmm. Because I think, I think we won't have to catch ourselves as much if we actually come from some type of standard that's back that's substantial and is backed by history and that's you know 
That's valid. And we won't have to worry about our kids looking back and like, dang, dad, what you say that for? Oh, that's he just talk, he just preaching the word, but he just rephrase it in, you know, in his own way. You know what I'm saying? So I think it's important for now. I think it's important for me to kind of like embrace some type of standard and push that into my words. And that's probably going to increase my my traffic and my following and, and just make me appear more acceptable to an audience because I'm coming from some type of background versus just, oh, I'm a married man and I'm a veteran and I'm successful. And I'm like, oh, I know this. And I'm, or I'm an image consultant or whatever. So I, I don't know if you're religious, uh, Marcus White. You said you got two wives or some shit. So must be, must be, man. Oh. <laughs> I don't know what this guy is. <laughs> oh, shit. This nigga is hell. <laughs> JR, why are we still live? <laughs> he, he's funny. As, he's so funny. <laughs> But I think I think I, I think I think listening to listening to Anton, listen to 